Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you all are doing good today. Uh, we're having our stream on a Saturday uh, because some of our panelists were unable to join on a Thursday. So apologies for that change in our schedule. Uh, yeah, so another stream on the topic of Hinduism today. Um, this time we are going to go deep dive into the caste system um, and how it's linked to the karma. And inshallah, we are hoping that the Hindus will join us as well and try to clarify things from their perspective because um, they're very eager to come on our streams, you know, and ask questions about Islam. Alhamdulillah, you know, we can answer about Islam, no problem. But come and defend your own religion, you know. You guys then instead of, you know, making claims and allegations that you're misrepresenting your religion, so please come and represent your own religion, you know. Assalamualaikum Looks like you moved to a different country or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he has. <laughs> how are you doing, Sister Swati? You right? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> Let's see how uh, till the end of the stream also I maintain the same cool, calm and happiness. <laughs> you always calm, by the way. And Brother Sam is always cool, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, Sam, what's happening uh, on your side of the world? Uh, I'm doing I'm I'm doing streams on Christianity in the unholy name of Father, Son, Ghost. This is the title. <laughs> unholy in the unholy okay. name. Okay. Yeah, it's been like uh, three streams. Alhamdulillah, it's going pretty well. Mashallah. So, it just to counter Adam Seeker. Not to counter anybody else, but uh, he's the only target for me. Oh, I'm just calling him out for uh, the one uh, brother Mansoor has debunked him, the oh, yeah, uh, Arabic yeah. specialist. <laughs> Assalamualaikum, <laughs> Ismail. Assalamualaikum, Waalaikum Assalam, Waalaikum Assalam, Waalaikum Assalam, Waalaikum Assalam, Ismail. Um, we just started the stream, so. Alhamdulillah, we're going to do uh, a stream on Hinduism. I'm sure the people are wondering what's Ismail doing at the stream. <laughs> Ismail is, mashallah, he is not he's someone who is acquainted with the the Asian society, um, and he knows a bit about uh, the discriminations in the society as well. So, inshallah, he'll be sharing his view from the view of uh, someone living in the West and encountering this, um, maybe not directly, but indirectly through associations, through interactions and so on. So yeah, inshallah, today we are going to look at the caste system, how it impacts not only in India, but how it's actually been now exported outside India and in places like uh, Google and Microsoft and other large corporations within the United States and also raising its ugly head here in the United Kingdom. Um, unfortunately, the caste system is so intertwined within Hinduism, within the Sanatana Dharma, that you cannot take away, just like karma is part of their religion and faith, it's explicitly linked to karma because the caste system is based on the birth, uh, whichever family, so if you're coming from a higher caste family, you'll be treated like a higher caste. If you come from a lower caste family, you'll be treated as such. And many peoples, you know, they somehow think the caste system includes the untouchable. And the Hindus say, no, it's not part of the caste system. What they actually mean is that they are so low in the, um, in the hierarchy within the society that they don't even belong in the four categories of caste, which are the, the top is the Brahmins, then you have the Kshatriya, then you have the Vaishyas, and then you have the Shudras. So the ones who are called Dalits, they are outside the caste system which means they are the outcasts. They don't even belong in these four categories. That's how low they are within the society, in the hierarchy within the society. And hence they have been treated as untouchables. And there are others like the Chandalas and uh, not even sure of all the other names, I'm sure Sam and Swati know them. But there are so many different outcasts out there as well. And they are struggling to this day. You know, they have been given menial jobs cleaning sewages and septic tanks and 
everything that the upper costs don't want to do. And the Shudras are actually the lowest within the cost and they are to serve the other three costs. So when we try to discuss this with the Hindus, um, what they say is, oh, it's only based on the roles within the society. It's a vocation, it's the kind of career they have chosen. No, it's not. It's not something they have chosen. It's something that have been given as a kind of a stigma within the society. And it's based on the family that you're born in. Like I said, if you're born as a higher caste, you're treated as such. And if, if you're born as a Shudra, you're treated as a Shudra and outcast as an outcast. What they do is, you know, they try to like ignore it, like it doesn't really exist. But if you look at the reality within the Indian society, you go to them and you ask them and you interview them, everyone will have their opinion about what actually it is and how it impacts them directly or indirectly. Uh, so inshallah, let me um, ask one of the panelists, perhaps we'll start with Brother Sam uh, and inshallah move on to Swati and Ismail. So Brother Sam, can you give us a brief summary of what the caste system is within the Hindu society, whether it's something that's practice or is it in the in the scriptures as well or is it something that was made as they say many times it was made by the british and they try to shift the blame mm -hmm. on everyone other than themselves basically yes brother it's a uh, it's present in the scriptures and it's been practiced throughout this throughout the history by the gurus by the rishis and everyone has practiced even the gods has practiced it without the caste system hinduism doesn't exist so caste system is the base of Hinduism. So till date, till 2023, it's been practiced. And we are seeing the news every day in India and uh, in the east, uh, the mostly in the uh, northeast side right now. Uh, there are violence going on uh, uh, due to the caste systems. So every day we are getting the news about the Dalit, Dalit is being uh, suppressed and oppressed by the higher caste people. They are being killed. They have been molested. They are being raped. Uh, by the higher caste people, the Brahmins, uh, uh, Kshatriyas, and the Vaishyas. So it's a day-to-day -day, uh, life go going on in India. Uh, in Hinduism, it's uh, completely mentioned about uh, this caste system and Varna system and rebirth. Actually, it's, uh, the, the problem is about the rebirth. They believe uh, these people uh, who, who has born as the Shudras, uh, the lower caste, has done some great crime or great sins in the past life. That's why they have been born in this category as Shudras. So they, des they deserve this life by serving to the higher, higher caste or the higher ca categories throughout their life. Right. So it's so just the circle. About, in yeah. the scriptures. This is pretty yes. prominently mentioned in the scriptures. Why do they ignore that? When we speak to them, they say, you know, it's not part of our religion. It's not part of anything. It's something made up by the British or or, or, or something that the people made it themselves? Why do they try to ignore and reject what is clearly mentioned in the scriptures? Uh, right now, the people are getting educated and they're being ashamed of their own scriptures. Before it was very normal and common among all uh, Hindus, like uh, uh, when they were, there was the, they were, uh, there were no democracy before in India. So everything was common. But now after people getting educated, they are seeing, uh, some uh, uh, sort of uh, loopholes in their scriptures and they started to be ashamed of their scriptures and they are denying it. And they're just uh, trying to say that so this scriptures has been corrupted by so and so people. But no, actually it's present in the scriptures uh, throughout the centuries, the people has been practicing. Okay. So is this something which is more predominant within the, the rural areas rather than the cities? Right. Exactly. Okay, so in the cities, it's more or less like, well, it's still more or less to that extent. But yes, even in the cities, if they want to get married, the first question they will probably ask is, "What caste you belong to?" Exactly. Exactly. And even are, even when they are getting the government jobs, even uh, when they are getting the government job, they are being asked about the caste system, because only the higher caste would be getting the higher seats, even in the governance. So yeah, no should rise allowed even yeah. in the governance. Yeah. I heard most of the judiciary is the higher cost. So there's something like yes. seven percent of the judges yes. from a higher cost. So you know that itself shows the discrimination. So it's 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 crazy, honestly. You know, like in this day and age, 
um, to discriminate yeah. something based on the family that they were born in. And Sister Swati, I want to ask you with regards to how, how would one, say for example, you, you come from a Hindu background, so you probably will be able to answer this more appropriately. How would someone know someone's caste or jati? Um, if I understand correctly, it is something which is associated with their surnames, with their last name. Is that true? Right, 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 right. And it's very much, I mean, I would say, brother, it's not that people are suddenly they've got aware of it and they feel very ashamed of that. I think everybody, you know, when they say Varn, Ashram, Dharm, you know, the four Purushas which are there, Dharm, Earth, Kam, Moksha, it's very well part and parcel of the Dharm, Varn and Ashram, both of it, you know, the Varn system of Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, and the Ashram system of Brahma, Acharya, Grihast, Vamprast, and Sanyas. You, you're speaking a lot of foreign language there, so you need to better that. <laughs> of course, yeah. I mean, like, like yeah. People, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the this this aspect of Brahmin, Shatya, Vaishya, Shudra, this we are, uh, most of them are familiar with, and they have, they usually oh, so use... the Varna yeah. system, so let's yeah. let's speak about that. So what what exactly is it? How, how does uh, the scriptures or the, the religious priests amongst the Hindus, they describe it? Yeah, see, the thing is, basically, we are all well, very well aware, you know, this entire Vedic literature, we have the people know now by now that it's classified into Shrutis and Smritis, you know, the Shruti being their very sacred text. The central canon, we have Vedas, Brahmanas, Aranyakas, Upanishad, etc. And then you have Smriti, which is the entire, you know, classical Sanskrit literature, which is there, which comprises of Vedang, Shad, Darshan, and then Puranas, Itihas, Tantra, Agman, so many of it. And you have then Epic also, the Ramayana, Mahabharat. So if you go through all these scriptures, because we are also taking the scriptures into account, we find that of the four Purushads, which are there, Dharm, Earth, Kam, and Moksha. Dharm, you know, the duty, which if we take it like that, Earth, meaning in terms of your economic prosperity, uh, a Kam in terms of the biological procreation, and moksha in terms of the salvation or the liberation, the four edifice on which this entire sanat and dharma is based on, Varn Ashram is like the base, it's the foundation of that Varn, and then the ashram, the stages of life, you know, the brahmacharya stage, uh, celebrate when you are like kind of, you know, student life, then you enter into grahast ashram, household realm, then you, you know, sort of start renunciating a little, you know, start getting detached, which is, which is Vamprast. And then which is Sanyas, the fourth stage, uh, which is about, you know, you, you renouncing everything and dwelling into the forest and seeking liberation. So this is tied together, Varn and Ashram. But the irony is that, you know, these stages, basically, if you would see, it's the Brahmins who have written it all. So, I mean, you know, even in terms of this religion itself, People, we don't, you know, when we see the forms, nowhere is it said, are you, do you belong to Sanatan Dharm? It's not like that. They ask Hindu, Muslims, Christian, Sikhs, etc. Now, of course, the in interesting part is Hinduism is nowhere mentioned in the entire literature. You wouldn't find the term Hinduism. Yeah, the term Hinduism, no. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> so it's, an, it's like irony is that it's a nameless religion because sanatan dharm is like eternal dharm it's like it's like an adjective it's like a quality which is there you can't name it nowhere is it written it's a, so this this entire thing is basically the brahmical writings which have been you know which have been because sanskrit once again was something which was not allowed to be learned to be read by all it was Brahmins had the domination over that. And they are the ones who have written the entire scriptures. You know, the yeah, sages. They still have the domination. I mean, they, they still have, of course. They, they the still ones, have. Because everything revolves around them to serve yeah. them. To the very first them. prime minister, yes. if you see, of India, Nehru. Jawaharlal Nehru, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, he was a Brahmin. So, you know, there was in fact, so so it's it's very, pre it's pretty evident that, you know, this Varn Ashram, and people say, no, you know, it's Varn Ashram, which is different from the caste. You, you call, people call it caste and caste is different, Varn is different. Who are they fooling it about? It's like, you know, it's like the same thing. If Had it been different, I keep repeating it, the, had it been a different thing, then the entire discrimination of Varn Ashram would not have got into the constitution to rectify it in terms of affirmative actions. So mm -hmm. it is it is definitely linked with that. And I'm perhaps, and it and you were saying, no, Brother Hashim, that it's more in rural. I mean, definitely it's it's very staunchly placed in the rural areas, but 
I mean, it's not that in the urban, you know, settings, people are not aware or they are totally liberalized about it. They pretty much are. And, and as you had said very correctly, the surname, in fact, you know, with the surname, they get to know, okay, that you belong to. Within Brahmins also, they last so many subsects. Yes, yes. So I've that. already come across a few surnames like Trivedi, Chaturvedi, you know, Dubey, yeah. Sharma. Yeah. These are all Brahmins on there. Of course. And if you're a Das, yeah. you're probably a Shudra. Yes, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. This, you know, they, they want to make it as explicit as possible. You know, Absolutely. just by yes. linking the name, you can tell immediately which Jati, which caste it comes from. Right. So it's not right. like they want to and, and, it. and brother, yeah, and brother, there are, they are inter, inter, intermarriages as well. And they are also the sub branches of a caste system. If a Brahmin marries a Kshatriya, and the son or a daughter born to that person is another division of a caste. That person is called as a Suta, S U T A. Yeah. So it's if, it's a, if a Brahmin marries a Vaishya, some other category comes out. If a Brahmin marries a Shudra, the, some other categories come out. So they are the, just the branches, branches over the branches. It, it reminds me of this joke somebody made here. Yeah? If a Shia marries a Sunni, then he becomes a su Sushi. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a joke, guys. But don't, don't so, that. <laughs> something like that, yeah. Right. But, it's but nice. you know, Honestly, but but you know what, Brother Hashim, this yeah. thing which you have said, no, I usually see a lot of guests. They come and they say, "Oh, you people also have the sect, you know, in Muslim, see Shia Sunni." But nowhere is it affirmed to such a sense in the scripture. Like nowhere is it mentioned in the scripture. But here, if you go through the entire, you know, be it Shrutis, be it Smritis, because some of them I had seen in the... Oh, but the uh, thing is, we... they, they don't know how to differentiate between a caste and a sect. Because yeah. in Hinduism, they have sects. For example, when you talk about the different Sampradayas, they are sects, you know, Shaivism, uh, Vaishnavism. So for Shai one, Vishnu. the Supreme God is Vishnu. For one, it's, it's Shiva. For another, it's uh, Shakti. These right. are the different sects. In fact, there are different religions within Hinduism, if you ask me. Absolutely. It is the who made them under one umbrella called yeah. Hinduism. In reality, they have separate they are, gods. Exactly. Yeah. If you ask me, they have different gods. And any religion which identifies that God as a different God is a different religion. So, for okay. example, take the sects within Islam. Yeah, We have the Sunnis and the Shias, even though the Sunnis are 90%, alhamdulillah. Even the, the Shias, in fact, even the Qadianis, whom the Muslims do not consider as Muslims, they're outside the fold of Islam because they, they, they recognize their, what is a Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani as, as a prophet of God. So after the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is Khatimul Anbiya, who is the last and the seal of the prophets, there's no prophets after him. The Hadith clearly says, La Nabiya Ba'da. They still say this guy is a prophet. So they are basically outcasts from Islam, they have been rejected as Muslims, as, as non-Muslims actually. So even they claim that the Supreme God is Allah. You see, in Islam, it doesn't yes. matter, 73 sects according to the Hadith, they all claim that Allah is the Supreme God. And hence, many of them claim that they are Muslims. Absolutely. But you see, in Hinduism, they okay. do not identify one Supreme God. Many of them try to use this... Uh, loophole saying Brahman is the Supreme God, but he's not. Nobody worships Brahman. There's not a single temple dedicated to him. So yeah. this is just them trying to say, look, we are just like the Abrahamic faith. They're trying to compete with the Christians and the Muslims, but they can't. This is not a fact. This is not reality. Absolutely. So, so, Sister Swati, I just want to get Brother Ismail in, inshallah, just a few right. words with regards sure. to... Um, so, Brother Ismail, uh, uh, what do you think about the caste system based on your experience or your research uh, so what i find most troubling other than the fact that like how ridiculous it is that um you judge um and you treat people based on something that they have no control over in a negative way um overwhelmingly i think the most troubling thing about the caste system is that it reminds me of the exact same themes that you see in every single system where there's an exploiter and an ex a group being exploited. So yeah. what they have is like a, yes, they have like a, a demon origin story kind of thing where they demonize Shudras by saying that, look, these people are in the position they're in. Not, you know, uh, you know, like they had no control over this. No, no, no. They deserve to be in this position. 
they they did evil things in the past and that's why they're in the position they are thus they're otherizing them and they're dehumanizing them and this is exactly what happens in every single like instance where you have a majority and it commits atrocities to a minority like if you look at uh, like in nazi germany they blamed all the economic um woes on the jewish people and they created all these tropes about jewish people being uh what's it called uh, uh, lesser than the regular aryan uh, population and that they were they gave them a demon origin story in the same way and you see this everywhere like in america as well back in uh, this uh, pre civil rights movement and up to this day like you see um far right conservatives always blaming all the problems in the country on the minority group um as a way of dehumanizing and otherizing so that it justifies actions of violence and discrimination um against this minority so in the same way like i i when brahmins feel don't feel any empathy or compassion um or even see shudras as other human beings as uh, equal human beings it's because of a system of otherizing and dehumanizing that makes them seem like they're just existing to serve them and therefore they could treat them as objects of service as they wish they they, they could you know a brahmin could justify to himself treating a shudra like a car or treating it like a stick which is right. horrendous but it's the foundational it's it's the foundational themes and mechanisms by which a majority exploits and uses a minority it's so like clear as day and you could make comparisons to any uh majority exploiting a minority you want throughout history i think and interestingly brother is ismail it continued the comparison which you had made you know it has continued till date because of that divine sanction which has which it has received so which is the reason why right from the time of its inception till now you know once it's got into the scriptures then it's like something which has been sanctified and now they cannot be you know whatever like they do talk about reforms etc which is again then a question that what kind of god is it that you know where which who has created such discriminations there so that's that's the way that's the entire power game to hold and capture power mm-hmm. by first creating that kind of discrimination you know associating it as something which is divinely sanctioned and then you mm-hmm. have to then follow it and and then you are and not even allowed to read that text that's the irony of it mm-hmm. yeah. yeah it's clearly a way of sub of subjugation um and yeah. a, a systematic subjugation because at the end of the day people in power want to maintain their power and the people and they want to also maintain uh what's it called uh, their resources and at the end of the day brahmins see or other higher um castes uh, see the shudras or the untouchables um dalits as as uh, resources so they need to stifle any chance of upward social mobility for the shudras for the dalits because if you have too much upward mobility or even any then who is going to serve the brahmins and the higher caste so they have a vested interest in making sure to not allow them to read uh not allow them to get educated not allow them to marry um up in wealth or in social status uh or any of that because it it, it threatens it threatens their their positions of power Absolutely. totally uh, is it okay if i play a quick video about 5 minutes long i think so sure. this video is titled why do upper caste means the hindu upper caste believe discrimination doesn't exist now this is somebody going around on the streets probably in mumbai or somewhere i'm not sure where it is uh, but let's see what they have to say inshallah uh, can you see the screen yeah okay हमेशा ये बातें उठती हैं कि रिजर्वेशन की वजह से जनरल लोगों का बड़ा नुकसान हो रहा है इसे इकोनॉमिक बेसिस पे कर देना चाहिए कास्ट बेसिस से हटा के मेरिट वाले पीछे रह जाते हैं तो क्या सचमुच रिजर्वेशन को हटा देना चाहिए आप ये टैलेंट नहीं देख रहे हो यू नॉट सींग स्किल इन पर्सन What you think, you saw, like, इसका कास्ट क्या इसका है? हमें रिजर्वेशन इसलिए मिलना जरूरी है कि सदियों से हमारे साथ छुआछात हुई है पर आपके साथ वो डिस्क्रिमिनेशन तो नहीं हुआ होगा ना कि आपके हाथ से किसी ने पानी नहीं पिया होगा 
या आपको डिस्क्रिमिनेट किया होगा किसी और इसलिए क्योंकि देर इज अ रीजन आई एम ठाकुर कुछ लोगों का एक बिलीव होता है अगर आप देखोगे कि अगर एक झाड़ू वाला अगर आपको आके पानी देगा आप पियोगे मेरा क्या है अगर मुझे कोई देगा आई वोट टेक दैट यही भेदभाव यही भावना हमारे देश को इतना पीछे ले जाती है अगर भेदभाव है तो फिर आरक्षण मिलना चाहिए आपको लगता है की आज भी समाज में छुआ छूत है बिल्कुल नहीं जीरो सब कह रहा है 2019 में छुआ छात खत्म हो गया जिसके साथ खत्म हो गया हो गया होगा जिसका साथ नहीं होगा तो कहे करेगा जब किसी ब्राह्मण छतरी का हम सामान लेते हैं आ, तो जो है कि वो पैसा जमीन पर रखवा पर उस पर पानी गिराते हैं कि ये, ये सुध हो जाएगा तो हम बोलते हैं कि सिक्का पर पानी गिराते हो मगर नोट पर क्यों नहीं गिराते अच्छा सवाल है आपका वो काम से बचना चाहते है तो जो लोग रिजर्वेशन मांग रहे हैं वो काम नहीं करना चाहते एक्चुअली बिल्कुल भी नहीं वो उस सोसाइटी में नहीं जाना चाहते ना जहाँ वर्क करना पड़े काम कभी उन्होंने किया नहीं है उन्होंने तो मंदिर में घंटा बजाया हमारे को बेकूफ बनाया है उन लोगों को क्या पता बराबरी करने का मेहनत करने का मेहनत तो हमारे लोगों को पूछो ना जो कहते हैं ना इनके पसीने से बदबू आती है एक दिन गड्ढर में उतर के देखिए ब्राह्मण का बेटा जो पुजारी पूजा मंदिर में घंटा बजाता है पंडित कहते हैं की इस देश में केवल शिक्षा प्राप्त करने का अधिकार पंडितों को है जो ज्ञान है वो आपने बताया वो ब्राह्मणों का ही है ब्राह्मणों का ज्ञान अर्जन धर्म है अरे बेवकूफ इंसान तीन से पाँच परसेंट तुम्हारी आबादी है अगर मैं शिक्षा तुम ही प्राप्त करोगे तो इस देश की साक्षरता केवल पाँच परसेंट हुई ना हमारा देश कहाँ जाएगा ऐसे ऐसे दिखाऊंगा आपको एस सी एस टी वाले दो सो एफ कार वो कार से आते जाते हैं एस सी लोग जो बोलते हैं हम लोग को गरीब वो एक्चुअल में अगर उनको देखा जाए ना वो फाइनेंशियल हालत उनकी बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग होती है नहीं फाइनेंशियल हालत अगर स्ट्रॉन्ग भी हो गई किसी की तो क्या डिस्क्रिमिनेशन उसके साथ होता है या नहीं नहीं ऐसा कुछ नहीं होता है क्यों नहीं होता क्यों नहीं होता राष्ट्रपति के साथ हुआ है रामनाथ कोविंद जी गए सीढ़ियों पर बैठा के पूजा करवाई उनके साथ लोग कह रहे थे उनकी वाइफ के पैर में दर्द था इसीलिए ऊपर नहीं चढ़ पाए देखो साहब ऐसा है अपनी खाद बचाने के लिए कुछ भी कह सकते हैं आपको भी पता है अभी कुछ दिनों पहले की बात है जब जीतन राम मांझी मुख्यमंत्री थे वो एक मंदिर में गए उस मंदिर को भी उन्होंने धोया वो भी दलित हैं। झगड़े होते हैं तो हिंदू बना दिया जाता है नहीं तो मंदिर में नहीं घुसने दिया जाता है बहुत लोग कहते हैं कि आज भी लोगों को मंदिर में नहीं घुसने दिया जा रहा है घोड़ी पे बारात नहीं जा सकती उनकी इन छोटी मोटी घटनाओं को जो भी व्यक्ति प्रमुखता देते हैं उनका निश्चित तौर पर वो भारत विरोधी लोग है वो नहीं चाहते की भारत आगे बढ़े कोई लोग रिजर्वेशन का पक्ष ले रहे हैं वो लोग भारत विरोधी लोग है बिल्कुल पंडित बोलते हैं इनको मंदिर में नहीं घुसने दो चमारो को तो फिर आपने कभी ट्राई किया मंदिर जाने का हम तो जाना ही छोड़ दिया हमने तो जब बाहर निकाल देते हैं तो फिर कहाँ जाए बताओ क्या बोलते हैं आपको यह बोलते हैं चमारो का मंदिर नहीं है चमारो को नहीं घुसने देंगे हर गांव में एक शंकर जी का मंदिर है दुर्गा जी का मंदिर है काली जी का मंदिर है जंगल पहाड़ पर है एक हमारा भगवान कैमूर जिला में विजय शंकर फकीर का मंदिर हम कई वर्ष ऐसी बनाते हैं लेकिन नहीं बनने देता है जो चमार था वो ब्राह्मण हर चीज को तथ्य के आधार पर ही बोलता है शहर में देखिए छुआ छूट टोटल समाप्त है शहर में तो हम वो छुआ छूत किया है हम लोग आदि हो गए हैं जो बगैर कहे हम लोगों को हम लोगों के साथ की जाती है किसी को हम बताते हैं कि हम वाल्मीकि हैं तो लोग हमसे बात करने का तरीका बदल देते हैं ऐसा कुछ नहीं होता है आज के टाइम में तो मैं न्यूज भी देखता हूँ ऐसा माहौल नहीं है न्यूज में तो सब अब सही हो गया है <laughs> एक ब्राह्मण के यहाँ मैं काम करने जाता हूँ मैंने कहा पानी पीना हालांकि मेरे को पानी की प्यास नहीं थी लेकिन उसी घर वाली पानी लेके आती है गिलास के अंदर वो टूटी का पानी था मगर जानवर भी ऐसा पानी नहीं पीते पंडित जी आप इंसानों के साथ ये काम करते हो आप ये तो दिल्ली एनसीआर की बातें हैं आरक्षण उनको दीजिए जो सक्षम नहीं है जो आर्थिक दृष्टि से गरीब है ये कोई गरीबी उत्थान का कार्यक्रम नहीं है जिन लोगों का सरकार और सरकार के रुतबेदार पोजीशन पर रिप्रेजेंटेशन इन है उन लोगों को एडिक्वेट रिप्रेजेंटेशन देने के लिए आरक्षण आया है ये इक्कीसवीं सदी चल रही है इक्कीसवीं सदी के भारत का निर्माण करना है आज वैसे तो इस इक्कीसवीं सदी में छुआ छूत होती है नहीं ये छुआ छूत मेरे हिसाब से तो कहीं नहीं होती है हाथ छिप गया तो दंगा हो जाता है लड़ाई हो जाती है मतलब आपका हाथ किसी और में टच हो गया तो दंगा हो जाता है टच हो गया तो मारने पीटने के लिए लोग भाग आ गए आरक्षण अब हटना चाहिए जातिवाद खत्म कर दीजिए आरक्षण खत्म करिए जब तक ये डिस्क्रिमिनेशन है सोसाइटी में दबे हुए समाज को उसका रिप्रेजेंटेशन अश्योर करने के लिए रिजर्वेशन जरूरी है तो बजाय इसके कि हम ये बात करें कि रिजर्वेशन कब हटेगा हमें ये डिस्कस करना चाहिए कि सोसाइटी से हम इस डिस्क्रिमिनेशन को कैसे जल्द से जल्द हटाएं दिस इज शहबाज अंसार रिपोर्टिंग फॉर द प्रिंट राइट so i don't know how many of you understood hindi but you should be reading the subtitles if you didn't understand it right um, as you can see so much so much to say
Yeah, it, it is blatant. It's not like it's hidden. Those people who are trying to subdue the reality, it's, 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 that's also blatant. And I think the, the people spoke for themselves. So to, the, the, the parallels. To, sorry, say again? Yeah, I was saying there's like incredible, like clear parallels between yeah. the way higher castes see Shudras and Dalits and the way, um, what's it called? White Americans who are out of touch see black people. They see racism or they see discrimination as a thing of the past that only existed when black people were in chains. Um, and the maybe the charitable ones will say, well, you know, at least uh, uh, it, it, racism was around until post the civil rights movement. And now you don't have racism. But if you actually ask black people or if you ask minorities in America, they will always say that they're being discriminated against. But the white people who are doing the discriminating will not feel that there's any discrimination. Well, of course, from their vantage point, there is no discrimination going on. What they don't realize is discrimination has effects that are long lasting. So just because you took a, um, a man out of chains, you know, today, it doesn't mean that he has now become equal to the person who has never been in chains. Look, if you look at the way wealth builds up, and you could make the parallels in India as well, the way wealth builds up, it builds up over time. And in America, black people did not get to purchase homes for a very long time. And that's one of the reasons why they're disproportion disproportionately affected negatively economically because they've never had the chance to accumulate wealth and land. In the same way, um, in what's it called? Low caste Indians did not have the ability to have any upward social mobility for so long because back when it was very, uh, even if you want to go with the Brahmin account, it was very, uh, uh, what's it, this was back in the day stuff. Well, even if it was back in the day stuff, this has downstream effects up until this day. And I, of course, do not accept. Well, I mean, even today, like, many of them are not allowed to buy properties. I'm not allowed to buy mm -hmm. businesses in many areas just because of the cost. So it's not something that has disappeared. It's not back in the days, it's mm -hmm. pretty much active. So when, when some of these mm -hmm. people were, you, you could easily tell upper cost from the lower cost. All the upper cost in that interview, they said that discrimination doesn't exist. There's no such thing mm -hmm. as untouchability. This is all in the past, in the 21st century. When he asked him the specific question in the, the last slide, he said, in the 21st century, should there be untouchability? And the guy goes, well, I haven't experienced it. So it is like saying someone who hasn't, let's say there's a woman out there, she hasn't experienced sexual abuse. Yes. Does that mean sexual abuse doesn't exist? I mean, obviously she knows about other people who have been abused sexually. Mm -hmm. Similarly, this guy pretty much knows about other people who have been abused because of their cost, because of yeah. this unreachability, which is t still pretty much prevalent. Yeah. So I think being out of touch, also, yeah. that's what Sorry. it is. Yeah. Yes, what they want. Go ahead. Yeah, brothers might wanted to say something. No, I just was going to say, like, that's the, t the living in a bubble, being out of touch that I was talking about. When you live in a cushy life where your family has had chance to accumulate wealth, where your family had chance to um, accumulate education, um, and you were only surrounded by people that had the exact same opportunities of it as you, you're, of course, going to think that, oh, like, these people are just complaining for no reason um, because you're so out of touch. But if you actually get to speak to those people facing the discrimination, you would see clearly, even if you want to accept the Brahmin account, let's really for just be charitable to accept it. Yeah. Even if that was the case, if there's no institutionalized racism or sorry, not racism, um, discrimination, there would still be downstream effects of all the generations of people that are still alive and have children and did not get the same opportunities as people in the past. That's why you need affirmative uh, action and you need protections in the constitution for people like Dalits and Shudras. Absolutely. And you know what? This entire debate of merit, rock, that merit, you know, merit versus need, etc., which comes up, this is something which I think it once again brings a kind of rift in the society. We, if it is, if the purpose is to bring out, you know, to erase or maybe to compensate for those past discrimination, the historical disadvantages, the way in which somehow it, you know, comes out and gets played for the vote bank politics it just creates more rift in the society you see the kind of division which comes out you know in the modern sort of liberalized secularized you know uh, countries 
uh, I see in universities and, you know, there also pe- the ones who are from, you know, from those upper castes, they are not, they are not very privy to the kind of reservations which are given for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. And a lot of times we hear, you know, people saying that, you know, you don't even uh, like whatever, like get marks and you get, you you know, without merit, you get into it. But the thing, but the, and which is the reason why now it's not just, you know, reservations for scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and other backward caste but because of this thing of you know this debate of merit versus need now we have also ews which has come up which is economically weaker sections this category was not there so these are the ones irrespective they could be from the upper caste they could be from the lower caste but the ones who are economically not well off so they are also then given the reservation so what i think just for is, the sake of the audience yeah. is this, can you explain what this reservation is which we also saw in that interview because many people might not be aware because i yeah. think this is more of an indian thing isn't it is I don't think yeah basically yeah. yeah it's basically within the ambit of the affirmative action when we see that you know people who you know it's like within affirmative action there are some who want separate identity don't want to be part and parcel of state that's one kind of you know uh, kind of uh, scenario and the other is the ones who want to be amalgamated so that's where this reservation comes in where people who had been historically been at a disadvantaged position with no fault of theirs just because of the stigma which was attached to them on the basis of the birth or the caste so the, that discrimination which they had gone through now constitution tries to rectify that and tries to give a level playing field you know, to everybody by saying, okay, let's let's try to bring you up to that same, um, uh, you know, sort of um, same mark, uh, so to say, by providing you certain positions, certain seats, you know, in educational institutions, in employments, in legislature, etc, etc. So, so there, you know, you have certain percentage, which is given for scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, these, other backward castes. Like the- like they might give like a 10% quota within say your university that regardless of their merit, regardless of the marks that they've obtained in their exams, Mm -hmm. uh, if you come from this lower, I don't know, this designated class or scheduled class or other backward class or whatever it is, OBC, then you automatically are granted 10% of the seats regardless of your merit is it right but yeah but it's not though it's not completely regardless you know like in some universities they say uh, that that you, you know you get a sort of compensation of maybe like you know uh, if it is maybe like 5% less for you maybe like that they, that could be the scenario and in uh, in other educational institutions it could be that you know if you are from that particular background then you have the straight fold reservation so you get okay. it you just need to have passing marks Right. So this is not just in the uh, at institutions, but also within government employment. Absolutely. So you put a government job and they reserve one of the, say, 10 percent seats specifically for this scheduled cause because they have been wronged in the past. Right. I mean, I can understand from the perspective of other students and other employees, why should these people be getting special treatment and special reservations? Uh, when we have to get it on merit. So we have to work hard for our work and to get it. But Brother Hashem, it, it's, it's clear, isn't it? It's, it's, it's really clear why they need to do that. It's because the people who have to get in on marks only are people who have, uh, what's called, enjoyed privileges that the students who didn't, who don't have to get in only on marks did not. You yeah. at the end, this is yeah, the problem. We have this hyper-individualistic... Yeah. Yeah. We have this we have this hyper individualistic understanding of ourselves Absolutely. in the world and we think that we think that everything that we do all our success comes only from us. And people don't understand the amount of privilege that they get to enjoy um, for and especially the case when you have a discriminatory and discriminatory system based on what family you come from. So this, it's not. We're not even talking about being born into a family with more wealth and more opportunities, or being born into a poor family. We're talking about just based on your genetics. Like you're gonna be given less opportunities, and again, yeah. this has it's downstream birthing. impacts. So these people have gone through a lot of discrimination all their life, so they never had the opportunity mm-hmm. which the upper class, yeah, uh, within the same society enjoyed. Just. Mm-hmm. By the yeah. virtue of them being born in this family, you know, like in America, I mean, between the blacks and the whites over there, it's just purely based on your skin color. 
you know right. you can be discriminated just by that you don't even have to say anything or do anything to provoke anyone sometimes the skin tone is enough to provoke you and that's purely racism that's what it was all about now caste system no is i think is even worse than racism because even if your skin color might be uh, you know fair compared to the other indians if you mm-hmm. are known to be from the lower caste they'll mistreat you and they will abuse you and you can't escape i've heard um in i've seen actually i've read newspaper articles where young boys have been lynched to that just by touching the pole that supports a hindu idol for example okay or they have eaten from their i don't know from the kitchen or something it's as as ridiculous as that you know in this day and age uh it's it's something that is unheard of in a civilized and- and think about it why so in today's age and time still you know after all so called modernization industrialization everything why is it still so deep rooted because somewhere it's getting that sanctity and sanction from the scriptures it's there it's divinely ordained it's something which has come in terms of so you know that sanction which has been there so which is the reason why then this kind of you know uh, this in spite of bringing the reservation still you know the social stigma which is there doesn't get removed it's like yeah thrown some bread crumbs there to you but yeah. but ultimately you are not born from you know you are born in that lower whatever caste lower varna which you're born, is you're born from the feet of brahma exactly and that's something which is there in the scriptures very very yeah. clearly written <laughs> sam you want to uh, you want to expand on that um, how the caste were created by brahma yeah. maybe that'll help yeah i just want to add one one more thing they have they have discrimination over the color as well the four creeds the four caste has been divided into colors as well the brahmin is considered as a white man the kshatriya as a yellow man yellow skin color and the vaishya as a like brown color and the shudras are black okay so all so black by just okay. seeing the colors they can identify that the someone is someone is shudra or brahmin okay i wonder why all the shudras moved to south india <laughs> <laughs> because in south india most of the people are dark skin you know and i'm pretty sure there are many even the brahmins in people. south india so it's it's yeah. it's uh, yeah. i think it's it's so something that the society has definitely created this can never be from the divine this can never be from god almighty who does not um discriminate based on your color caste creed whatever it is you know alhamdulillah that's a reason in islam is pretty much a universal religion you know even even in judaism is based on your lineage yes but in islam alhamdulillah allah never says in the quran ya ayyuhal arab yes here o arabs but in the yeah. bible you say here o israel so god is specifically mm. giving message to the bani israel that doesn't mean that god is a racist and he only prefers one race over all the other races it's just that those prophets actually came for those people at that time but god almighty himself has sent messengers and uh, prophets uh, to all nations which includes india which includes uh, arabia which includes the americas and australia and the whole world allah says all nations and what does the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say in the last khutbah that the white is not superior over the um black and the black is not mm-hmm. superior over the white and the arab is not superior over the non arab over the ajmi mm-hmm. and the ajmi the non arab is not superior over the arab okay. now you can't have anything much clearer than that that is explicit it nips racism casteism creed everything it nips it in the bud you know and and, and and there was a point in the video there was a point in the video that was very um um Uh, crucial from a practical perspective he said brahmins only make up you know so much so much as 5% 3 yeah. to 5% of the the population so even on a practical pers- perspective so is the hindu uh, religion trying to uh enforce illiteracy rates is it trying to push society backwards is it a backwards religion these are the notions that come up from people or brahmins pushing forward that like only brahmins should get educated how crazy is that like if we look at what islam teaches like the prophet muhammad peace be upon him he what it says in the hadith that it is incumbent upon every man and woman to seek knowledge subhanallah like yeah. completely opposite it does not and and in fact 
we find that money is never and has never been, for the most part, ever a, uh, a thing that held back um, people from teaching others in the Islamic worldview. Money, status, wealth, um, family background. In the Islamic worldview, it's like the, if a person wants to seek knowledge, you try your best to help them seek knowledge. Yeah. Because we see knowledge as a virtue and we see knowledge as something that should a virtue is for everybody. And we yeah. see everybody as somebody who's, uh, ha, uh, as long as they have the will to pursue it, they should have an equal amount of support as much as possible. Why wouldn't we support people who want to gain knowledge? At the end of the day, from a practical perspective, everybody benefits when people learn. Except when you have people at a, uh, you know, a small percentage of the population who have the wealth of the power and are trying to exploit the majority of the population that are beneath them, and then a specific minority that is their resource for servitude, then of course they wouldn't want them to get educated. It's, it's lunacy, really. And do you remember in the pre-Islamic era, during the Jahiliya period, even the girls were supposed to be a burden on the, mm. uh, on the society. So they used to literally bury their daughters alive, you know, it's something when the Prophet Sallallahu when he was given the nubuwa and given the wisdom, he actually eradicated this practice from this society. But today, I think in India, a lot of people still practice this. You know, female infanticide is pretty much real in, in, in India, even though it doesn't come under this particular topic. But it just shows that it is not just the lower caste and the outcasts who are discriminated against, but also the women. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't happen in the Muslim communities. Of course, it does happen in every community. But there's a difference between it being legislated by the scriptures, do I right. mean, or it is something which is coming from uh, your own cultures, cultural practices, your traditions. Yeah. And there is also casteism, you'll be surprised, within the Muslims as well. But again, this is from the culture and the tradition of the people and not from the religion of Islam. You will never find any hadith mm -hmm. or any ayah in the Quran where anyone has been discriminated because of their color or their caste or something like that. Mm -hmm. What does Allah say in the, in the Quran and what the Prophet Sallallahu says? What Allah looks at is your taqwa, not your rich, how rich you are or what background you come from, mm -hmm. what color skin tone you have or what caste or what, whatever your language or your, your ethnicity. None of that matters. Neither mm -hmm. the fact that you are a male or a female. It is only the taqwa, the God consciousness that you possess. Mm -hmm. In the sight of Allah, you're elevated because of your um, your, your God mm -hmm. consciousness. It has nothing to do with yeah. any other practice. Alhamdulillah. And that is, you know, that is justice. Brother Hashim, you know, the contrast is so stark because when discrimination, specifically as well against women or against poor people or something, happens in the Islamic context, it happens out of ignorance of the religious scriptures. Absolutely. And when it happens in the Hindu perspective or in the Hindu context, <laughs> it happens as a result of knowledge of the scriptures. So exactly. The more, uh, the more knowledge they have, the, the more discrimination they get sometimes. Yeah. E exactly. Because discrimination is part and parcel to the Hindu teachings. Yeah. Absolutely. The, it's like verbatim. You can get the shlokas, those, you know, the mantras, everything. And this is not just exactly. about, you know, the smritis, but also the shrutis. Because a lot of time people say we, like, you know, that's a very common thing of we don't believe in Puranas and this and that, whichever they want to reject. But this, this is something, if you go through the text, you'll find it blatantly everywhere. Not even a single text is something which is bereft of, you know, mentioning this aspect. So maybe now is a good time to bring in a few of the scriptures from the... Yeah. Let me... Scriptures? Yeah. yeah. Go on, Sam. I know you got it all under your sleeve. Yeah, let me, let me go... Yeah, let me, let me quote a few scriptures about like how discrimination happens in the scriptures. Yeah, you can, you can share your screen. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. It's a Devi Bhagavatam, book number one, chapter number four, verse... Uh, am I audible? Uh, yeah, you're picking up, I think. Yeah, but the voice is lagging. A, I think. Have you got the slide or something you could show us, or is it something you're going to read? No problem, either way. Uh, no, I can read. Yeah, so the yeah. Bhagavatam, book number one, chapter number four, verse number 15 to 27. There it's written as a man who has sons goes to heaven. And the sonless man, one who cannot has has a has a son, 
uh, will never enter heaven the other other verse says in skanda purana book number 5 session number 3 verse, uh, chapter number 103 verse number 121 to 104 the entire chapter talks about uh, the residence in swarg is not possible without a son if a father if a parent uh, doesn't have a son the parents will never enter jannah never enter swarg swarg and the manusmriti chapter 9 verse number 81 says the wife who bears only daughters the wife who bear only daughter shall be abandoned in the 11th year so the husband should divorce uh, her or get separated from her in the 11th year if the if the if the women is just uh, uh, gi- giving birth to daughters not to the son so sh- she should be abandoned in the 11th year the same is mentioned in garuda purana book number 1 chapter number 1 115 verse number 63 to 66 wife give birth to the only daughters she shall be abandoned in the 11th year again the same same statement in uh, shatapata brahmana book number 5 chapter number 3 verse number 1 to 13 the same thing is sa- said and uh, plus it says wife without a son is possessed with the destruction and the calamities so she is being cursed the wife who doesn't bear son she is a cursed <laughs> the irony here is the the male or the chromosomes come from <laughs> come from the father to de- to designate whether it's a male or a female not from the female <laughs> because the male has um the chromosomes to identify as x or y not for the female yeah it's an x isn't it uh but the blame is put on the on the woman it just shows so ignorant so this goes to all those hindu say how advanced and scientific hinduism is you know when he's always blaming the female for producing either a male child or a female child uh, you know sorry they're blaming it for producing a female child all the time and not giving them a male child when this chromosomes actually is determined by the male uh, x and y chromosomes uh, anyway i think sorry it's, it's in line it's a, no no i'm just saying it's in it's again in line with developing an, an origin a demonizing origin story to vilify a minority that has no power um mm-hmm. and it's being done by a group that does have power and is exploiting a, another group it's just simple as this is a small portion of people exploiting a big uh, another group and uh, they're they're doing it uh, horrendously absolutely yeah. and which is why i think the name you know the name actually of the religion is it's neither hinduism nor sanatan dharma it's brahmanical religion which which is because they write everything they have written the scriptures they have the control over it they decide who's going to have mm. the resources so but but yeah that's that's something which they can't blatantly say out there so yeah. therefore the sanatan dharma is the new thing which has come out in the market <laughs> and because of this there have been many um many women who have actually many yeah, the superiority of the brahmin i'll uh, i'll just sorry samba you're breaking up i think yeah is, yeah i is think so like, yeah the voice is like lacking yeah okay go ahead yeah yeah uh, I'll, i'll just show you the superiority of the brahmin it's uh, mentioned in mahabharat book number 13 chapter number 8 verse number 21 it says if there be a kshatriya a fully 100 year old man and a good brahman child if only 10 years the latter should be regarded as the father and the former as the son for among the two verily the brahman is the superior which means the 10 year old brahman is considered as the father of a 100 year old shudra a kshatriya and the brahman is always considered as superior Yes, even the 10 year old brahmin is superior how. to a 100 year old kshatriya yeah. now you know this brings me to um the discrimination that's been taking place in the west yes so i think brother ismail you probably uh, want to share a few things on that how uh, the discrimination takes place uh, at workplaces and also um other places within the society where you have asians or south asians as they as they call in america um are prevalent yeah you're muted let me speak. just unmute yeah. yeah so um yes yeah, so it's, it's it's quite interesting that um uh now the the caste system is no longer a, a, a uh, an issue that is india specific um with the migration of indians uh they've also carried over their 
uh, specifically the Hindu caste believing um, Indians have carried over their uh, Hindu baggage, if you will. Um, and they've now brought it overseas and they are doing some sort of, uh, not, I wouldn't even say undercover because it's very blatant, but they might just not do it in front of people who are not Hindu. So in the workplaces, for example, in places like Cisco and places like Google and places like a lot of these Silicon Valley companies that are full with Indians and to a large majority uh, Hindus, um, you'd have people doing the exact same thing that happened in India for you know hundreds of years, which is what? Limiting upwards mobility. And how do they do that? Uh, in the workplace, they stifle promotions. They stifle raises. Um, they stifle um, networking. All these things based on um, caste because they are still upholding the same things they believed and their ancestors believed in India, that you must discriminate based on caste. And how they do this is very interesting. Is They'll try to suss people out um, via their last names um, or... A, a, a one technique that I read about is that they, they try to go swimming together because a Brahmin will have um, a, a thread, a specific kind of, uh, you know, thread that's sacred, only for the Brahmins. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's tied around their waist. And that way, um, they'll be able to recognize who the Brahmins are, who are worthy of promotions, who are worthy of, uh, you know, uh, raises, and etc., and who the should what's it called shudras or the dalits are, and who who should remain as servants, and should have their growth stifled. It's the exact yes. same uh, system, just re uh, what's it called invigorated, if you will, or takes a new shape in twenty first century America in the corporate. Very shrewd, very shrewd. and probably maybe because maybe there they can't decipher from the surname, <laughs> so they have to go there to see the sacred thread, the upanaya, in, in terms of you know enable in, in order to identify. Because usually, with what you see here in the in the Asian subcontinent is, as Brother Hashim had said in the very beginning, the very surname itself, people you know just get to know about it. Not just the caste, also the subcaste in terms of the region. You know, like the Brahmins mm -hmm. of whatever, like this particular mm -hmm. you know district. This particular mm -hmm. region, area, etc. So that that that's exactly, and that's what I'm constantly saying that this is something you know. No matter, I think, no matter how how much time has it been, like it's been more than so many years of independence. Right from the beginning, we have had the affirmative action. Why is it that it's still not sort of you know coming to an end, or maybe sort of you know because it was supposedly not a permanent solution. It was supposedly something which came as a temporary thing for them to come up to that same level to remove this kind of discrimination and then to get done with it but it's the way in which it's lingering on and on is because of that you know sanctioning which it gets from the scriptures that it cannot you can't just negate it like that it's there you know people you know so many people when they say that they're god you know this is something which is ordained by god then no matter whatever you give that's like a surface thing for them like a bandit solution and it can never, therefore, that's the reason it can never get resolved from the society. Economically, you the way, you know, you had said there would be people they, they, in that, you know, clip which Brother Hashim had shown. It was said that, you know, you see scheduled cars and scheduled tribes, they come in cars, big cars, etc. Uh, economically, no matter how much, even if they prosper, you know, still that's that stigma or the social, you know, discrimination, which is there. That's something which can't, which no constitution can amend because that's something which is coming from the religion itself. That's the reason why the scripture needs to be, you know, uh, sort of looked into and uh, sort of debarred or whatever, you know, get rid of to in order to get rid of this or to maybe figure out whether it was whatever, like human, because this is entire question on the on the on the conception of God itself is something which is which is in utter chaos in Hinduism. Yeah. So at this uh, junction, I would like to share another cl clip with regards to um, the caste system in the West. Uh, I think this was in the city of Seattle. Uh, where it has been banned or something like that, and it's it's. I was surprised when I first heard it, and this I think this came about uh, just two months ago. So this is a BBC News report uh, on that. Just wanted to quickly share that with you guys. Oh, there's no audio. Hi, 
caste discrimination has been banned in India since 1948, but it persists and it travels. Seattle has just become the first city in America to ban discrimination on the basis of caste. The city has a large South Asian population, many of them working in the tech sector. But supporters of the bill say the caste system is still being used in the United States to discriminate within the workplace, within housing, retail, sometimes in public places. In the future, it will be identified in its own class, alongside race, religion and gender identity. Caste goes back some 3,000 years. It's a very ancient form of social hierarchy that originally divides Hindus into four main categories. For centuries, it bestowed many privileges on the upper caste while sanctioning the repression of the lower caste. But no class was more discriminated against than the Dalits, the outcasts. But was the change in the law necessary in a city where South Asians still only make up 2% of the population? Joining me to discuss is the Seattle councillor that wrote the legislation, Sharma Sawan. Very welcome to the programme. Thank you for being with us. Um, you obviously have your own Indian heritage. Have you ever witnessed this kind of discrimination firsthand? I've definitely witnessed it in India where I was growing up and in Seattle and in the United States as a whole, We've had hundreds of oppressed caste workers, as you said, specifically in the tech sector, publicly testify to the city council and talk to me as, as in my capacity as council member that an elected representative of working people that this is happening. And in fact, statistical studies are now recognizing that caste discrimination in the workplace and in other situations is actually has become pervasive and has become a serious issue in the U.S. Has the Indian diaspora in, in the city responded to the legislation that you sponsored? Because uh, very often you find around the world when this is brought up that Hindus who are politically active aren't particularly supportive of it. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't have won this legislation in the first place without having built a fighting movement that successfully united an overwhelming component of the South, Indian, uh, South Asian community in the Seattle region, not just inside Seattle. And in fact, we had solidarity from South Asian activists across the nation in the United States. And also we had people come in from Vancouver, BC, you know, Canada to support us and S South Asians from there as well. And the reason we were successful is was because we obviously united oppressed caste community members and workers uh, but alongside them, we also brought dominant caste Hindus like myself uh, and who don't personally experience caste discrimination, but want to fight for a society free of caste oppression. We brought Hindus and uh, sorry, Sikh and Muslims as well. And we brought unions, the Alphabet Workers Union, for example, which represents Google workers, was in solidarity with us for this ordinance. And who was against it? Of course, not surprisingly, the yeah. Hindu right wing, the far right that is uh, very closely aligned with the Modi regime in India was opposed to it, but that was no surprise. Just very quickly, um, why was the legislation that was already on the statute book not enough? D discrimination on race has been there for a long time. Why couldn't that have covered it? Because the uh, fact is that uh, the, uh, the oppressed caste people uh, experience a very specific kind of discrimination, and that is... Uh, you know, manifested itself not in the form of this. I mean, just to give you a concrete example, what does caste discrimination in the workplace look like? If you're a tech worker, say at Amazon, which is headquartered in Seattle, and you are an oppressed caste South Asian worker, and your bosses are dominant, so you're South Asian, but your your bosses are also South Asian, but they are from the dominant caste, and the discrimination you experience, you know, being denied raises or promotions, or being excluded from meetings, or being made the target of derogation remarks or slurs, you know, being made to suffer daily indignities, if that is happening in a way that the people who are perpetrating that against you are also from the same, uh, have the same race as you, then it becomes very complicated in the courts. And that is why, see, it, this is such a major victory that Seattle has become the first ever jurisdiction the globally outside South Asia to recognize caste as a specific form of discrimination. And in fact, I think, you know, since we won this, we've been actually uh, reached out to by people in the United Kingdom, people in England and Wales who have been fighting for the mm. same kind of recognition that we have won here, but hasn't happened in the United States. So, for example, activists like Santosh Das, who is the spokesperson of Anti-Caste Discrimination right. Alliance in the UK, has reached out to us. OK, well, we'll, we'll perhaps revisit that. Uh, Sharma Swan, thank you very much indeed.
Alhamdulillah. Right. So as as you can see, it has um, been exported to uh, Western countries as well, where people generally don't even know about this happening. Right. Only the people who have been impacted by it directly, uh, they have been suffering for a long time. So Seattle um, has been the first um, city to actually put, put this as a law, as a jurisdiction, and it has passed the bill to imp implement it now. So anyone who tries to do this at workplace, they actually can be arrested, go to jail, be fined, or whatever the rule is over there. And I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll be spread all around the world very soon. And if this gets um, out of hand or you know, there's discriminations coming left, right, and center. Because if your boss is of a higher cost and you come from a lower cost, you will never get the promotion that you deserve or the raise in your salary that you deserve. Uh, so it's it's like there's no, like Brother might say, there's no upward mobility. Yes, you're stagnated. Mm -hmm. And that is the place they want you to be. Yeah? Absolutely. At the point, at the point of Brahma Absolutely. forever. doesn't matter what That's you do. You are there by birth, and you're going to remain there by birth. This is basically that principle. Mm -hmm. uh, it, yeah. It's not that modern day oppression and slavery. Absolutely. Which yeah, is the reason? Of, uh, yeah. yeah, go on, go on. It reminds me about one verse. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's present in Manusmiti chapter 8, verse number 21. If a Shudra becomes a judge in the presence of a Brahmin, then the Brahmin will suffer like a cow who is stuck in a mud. <laughs> I thought cow was the god or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if that's something which is supposed to be bad or good, but uh, it's we get the message. It's it's like I said, it's it's in the scriptures, and you can't Absolutely. deny it. Absolutely. Was that from where was that from? Manusmriti. Manusmriti. Now, yeah, what, from, is, uh, what is Manusmriti? What is this book? What is the scripture? And who is Manu? <laughs> it's a law book. It's a law book of Hindus. Right. It's a core that's, law book. Every, so every law is a, mentioned in Manusmiti. Manus, Manu is the first human considered as a, a higher rishi. Is he, is he like Adam, like for us? Uh, yeah. No, they are, they are different Manus. Uh, time to time, the Manus came. Even, even uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, sorry, I'm forgetting the name. There are many, yeah. there are many, many, many yeah. Manus. So like so for every, every century. Multi yeah, every century. Yeah. yeah. Every century, a Manu comes. Wow! So they and considered as uh, as 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 uh, from the uh, from the uh, from the lineage of the seventh or the eighth Manu. Right. So Manu Smriti actually means the law of Manu, and yes, because the Manus change, the laws also change as the years pass or the centuries pass. Uh, I think it's not that no. the laws change. It's basically, you know, it's, it's, it's in fact, you know, because a lot of people I had seen, uh, you know, initially when we had put this, uh, uh, like the streams notification, people were saying, oh, you know, you are going to quote Manushmiti, etc. That's, I mean, come on, that's one of the most authoritative scriptures of the tradition. It's the most authoritative writing, in fact, if of the Brahminical tradition, which is outlining the social civil regulations, which is giving you the code of conduct for maintenance of the so-called Sanatan Dharma. And the Manu is like, you know, Manu is the Manasputra, the son of Brahma, the creator of the universe. Yeah. And this is and this is not something which is just, you know, you can't just shun it off that it's mentioned only in Puranas. It is Manu is mentioned in Rig Veda, which is supposedly one of the oldest Hindu scriptures. And, and Brahma has created, you know, as per the scripture, Brahma had created the universe and, and, and he decided to create law and order in the universe and because of that he created the Manasputra, Brahma's son, Manu, the lawgiver of the universe and his responsibility was basically to preserve the Vedas, to bring out the knowledge in the universe, to you know the, create the human race, preserve knowledge and that's how this entire text of Manushmiti came into being. So how can you... He was you the all... first one, he was the first exactly. one to carry the Vedas. Exactly. So and how the first can one you... to realize the Vedas and then to write these laws based on the Vedas. 
absolutely so how can you know when people say that we don't you know how and i want to in fact bring it out you know i, I would i would like to you know uh, over a course of time bring out certain things which bring this fact that it is very much you can't just negate it like that by saying it's it's within the smriti tradition and we don't want to believe in that and we only follow the shrutis your shrutis your authoritative text of vedas very clearly bring out the entire basic foundation of the of the varnashram system and that is something which is affirmed also by the smritis then so entire you know take out any take up any scripture it, you will not find any which has no mention of it so how many can you keep rejecting to say that you don't and there are few it? yeah and there are few organizations here in india some extreme hindu organizations uh, they want to replace indian constitution with manu smriti because they believe this is our law book actual book so we exactly. want to we want to replace it so those progressive hindus uh, they are just making a display of virtue signaling and they want to throw the baby with the bathwater <laughs> what what this means is this manuscript which is supposed to be the scripture which was not only that the guy actually realized the vedas he is even called bhagwan manu by many people yeah yeah that embodied the vedas himself and right. someone who's created by um one of the gods you know by uh, brahman himself Right. Absolutely. And, and, the and they have they have statues of Manu. He's a they have statues in the organizations. Yeah, they have statues of Manu in the organizations, in the organizations where Manu, uh, where manuscripts has been collected or like publications. They have a statue of Manu and they worship Manu as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why it's called Bhagwan Manu to many people. Right. Yeah. So these progressive Hindus, new Hindus, whatever they are, you know, they are just revisionists basically. They want to. reject things which are obvious in the books in the scriptures and because it doesn't agree with their modernist views and it's kind of embarrassing in this day and age and i'm not surprised that they are embarrassed by such a blatant uh, display of discrimination within these so called laws exactly. and so so what do you want to read out some of these laws maybe oh yeah i would love to <laughs> yeah maybe um... for the sake of some <laughs> for them because you always come with another excuse oh you guys don't know sanskrit you have mispronounced it or mis um, translated it right. they blame even the hindus to translate it the, you know the, the thing is brother no matter which guest come say that i'm whatever like you know doesn't know sanskrit that doesn't matter but we if we, you know here if somebody is not able to they totally disregard whether they know the language or not So um and sister Swati you know what's even more amusing is the fact that when we ask them to come on our join our stream and correct the errors if you think we are making any errors nobody wants to step forward of course yes? <laughs> they always want to blame you know they are the old keyboard warriors in the And the thing band. is But nobody what wants to the face to face Yeah, the best they can do is to sort of you know misinterpret, bring out certain other very like you know their own kind of interpretation to it, uh, you know, to say this is not. But you can't do that. Something which is mentioned there by your God in the scripture. I mean, be true to something at least. <laughs> that's yeah. that's the irony of it. So, uh, you know, I would like to in fact bring out that uh, you know a lot of people when they say that it's all Manu Smriti, you know, maybe the the hair in the stream they'll just bring out that. So of course, and uh, now that we have told, it's an authoritative text, Manav Dharam Shastra. You can't negate it like that. Uh, but okay, you know, for your peace and satisfaction, even your so-called, you know, Vedas, the Shrutis, which is so, which of of which we don't even have got the manuscripts yet. Still, uh, you know, for the sake of uh, of for the people, we find it. And uh, you know, Brother Hashim, if you could show the. Um, if you could if you could show for the for the people i mean i can do it even without that yeah, but are you able to share it on your own screen because i don't can... know how to share it <laughs> all right no problem just read it to what you want okay i'll it. just read it out so basically oh, if you would see <laughs> yeah so basically if we see you know uh, we find rigved for example if we find in rigved basically the very foundational basis which is there uh, mandal 10 sukh 90 uh and mantra 12 which says brahmano asya mukhmasi dahu rajanne kritah uru tadasya yadvesham padya shudra ajayata which simply means the ones who know the brahmins who are there and the others who know the sanskrit that his mouth became brahman his arms became rajanya 
his thighs became vaishya and shudra was born from the feet so it is absolutely clear that this is something which has been mentioned in the rigveda in the purush sukta of rigveda which says that all these four varnas they sprang from the mouth arm thighs thighs and feet of the supreme being and that's how the division of the society into these four varnas so that's natural that's god ordained so 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 you know so that's that's the first basis the the foundation which has been laid now if we see further within vedas itself what we find is that you know in the vedic time if you would see there were these untouchable people uh, who were, who would be in a village which was which is now in bihar kikat and there they used to rear cattle and obviously you know the aryans for them this was something which was not taken at all they would take it to be a crime so they would invoke the warrior god indra to wage the war against them and to in order to loot their cows so here again we find rigved where uh, you know in rigved again mandal 3 sukt 53 mantra 14 which says kim te kranvanti ki kateshu gavo nashir durhe na tapanti gharmam a nau bhar pragandasya vedo ne chakshak mak vandraya nah again it means very simply that they are evoking indra and saying oh indra what do the cows make for you among the kikarts and these kikarts are the untouchable they are saying that you know they neither yield milk for your offerings nor do they warm the vessels of libation bring to us these cows bring to us the wealth of the king you know so basically they want they are saying oh brave one grant us the possession of the people of the low low community the low branch so once again we see the predominance again we find within atharv ved also where there is a predominance of brahmin where it said uh, again this is uh, atharv ved um, mandal 5 sukt 17 uh, mantra 8 and 9 where it said ut yat patayo dashah striya purve abrahmana brahma chedast magrita sa ev patir kadha brahman eva par paterna rajanyo na vaishya which means even if 10 former husbands nana brahmin had a spouse the dame and then brahmin took her hand then he is her husband only he not vaishya not rajanya brahman ev partner na rajanyo na vaishya so so brahmin would have the hold over it uh, and again then we find in upanishad this is something which is very common you know upanishad chandogya upanishad which shown in the last stream also they are also very supportive of the varnashram system and they very clearly you know bring it out that it is based on birth because of the deeds of the previous lives and in fact you know uh, it it just talks about this uh, in verse 5 we see uh, chandogya upanishad again uh, you know mandal 5 uh sukt 10 mantra 7 where it says again tadya eh ramani charanya abhyasho ham yate ramniya yoni mapadye brahman yoni va kshatriya yoni va vaishya yoni vatya eh kapuya charana abhyasho ham yate kapuyam yoni mapadye shvayoni va sukha yoni va chanda yoni va which means that that among them those who do good work in this world in terms of their past life they attain the good birth accordingly and they are the ones who are born as brahmin as kshatriya or as vaishya which are called the dwij but those who did bad work in their past life they attain a bad birth according to you know being born as a dog or a pig or a casteless person so they are placing dog pig and casteless person on the same you know same pedestal same uh, aspect and i remember in the last stream when the caller had come and i remember brother hashim had shown this very shlok you know this very mantra of chandogya upanishad they were saying oh but you know you are reading only one part of it oh, you know you also take the example of satyakam jabali who was the son of the prostitute and he became a brahmin that's a total outright lie you know if we, if you actually read carefully the interview of satyakam which was there by, which by his by his would be guru gautam hari haridramata you find that birth based varn system caste system is again affirmed and the guru and that's when the guru asked satyakam of what family he was he replies that he did not know except what his mother told him so 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 hearing this reply 
the guru you know straight forwardly declares him to be brahmin because he said because no one but a brahmin speaks in such a language and that's something which is mentioned in chandogya upanishad uh, mandal 4 sukt 4 verse 4 and 5 mantra 4 and 5 and here what has to be noted is that this boy had not yet acquired any knowledge so how can he be brahmin when you say that oh it's based on the occupation your work your activity your knowledge the boy hadn't acquired any knowledge guru was just listening to his word and he just declared he was from brahmin family which absolutely proves that this is determined by the birth it is not activity they are just fooling around it similarly we find also again i mean these are all their so called shrutis the vedas which is so sacrosanct for them again we find in rigveda mandal 8 uh sukt 70 mantra 11 where again you know now and and so many times you will you will see you know the non non aryans the, no, the who are not the dwich the shudras the untouchables they have been described in so many places in vedas as anyavartam meaning the follower of another religion or a manusham they are not even humans or a yajvanam meaning that they can't perform the yagna so here in rigveda there it said indra samatsu यजमान मार्य परावत विश्वेशु शतमूति राजेशु सर्वमी हे विजाशु मनवे शास्त्र द्रवतान तवचम कृष्णामर्धयंत व्हिच मींस इंद्र इज बेसिकली यू नो ही सेड टू हेल्प द आर्यन्स द आर्यन वर्शिपर्स इन द बैटल एंड टू पनिश द निगलेक्टर्स ऑफ द रिचुअल राइट्स so so therefore they are saying that you know you punish these you know you punish this krishnam randhyant krishna krishna is black skin so they are saying you know the the tavacham krishnam you punish them the, the dark race you punish them and you make us win you know in the battle now these are these are few of the you know places where you are, i'm not going into the details of it otherwise it'll get very boring and monotonous but these are very few of them within vedas which is talking very clearly it is based on birth and then again pan you know you, you very there are other ancient books like sanskrit grammar you know panini padani is another one we had seen in the last stream they say pan uh, you know uh, that this is also one of the one of the important texts so panini states in his book अष्टध्याय बुक नंबर एट चैप्टर नंबर टू सूत्र नंबर एटी थ्री एंड ही सेज दैट इन रिस्पॉन्स टू द सैल्यूटेशन ऑफ द ग्रीटिंग ऑफ अ शूत्र वन शुड रिप्लाई टू द सैल्यूटेशन विदाउट एनी चेयरफुलनेस विदाउट बींग वेरी फ्रेंडली बट वेन इट कम्स टू द केस ऑफ द्वेज द ट्वाइस बॉन दैट इज द ब्राह्मिन वैश्य एंड द क्षत्रिय then the greeting should be returned you know with a better greeting so that's something which is very clearly mentioned again same panini he writes in ashtadhyayi uh, in uh, in in uh, book 2 chapter 4 verse 10 where he says shudranam nirvisatanam and shudranam a nirvisatanam which means the latter one shudranam a nirvisatanam that means the shudra who can take food from the dish of a higher class without you know without permanently defiling the vessel so to say and the former one which says shudra nam nirvisatanam that means the shudra who touches the touches that you know if 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 the vessel gets touched by the shudra then it permanently defiles the vessel from which he takes the food so that's something which which we find absolutely clearly mentioned within the vedas which have been there people need to read that to understand and and you know so you of course yeah. you, you mentioned quite a few scriptures you mentioned the vedas yeah. the rigvedas you mentioned the upanishad atharveda yajurveda Atar upanishad yeah and the manuspriti of course uh, what by brother sam uh, so this is look this is not something that we are making up um, the varna system is not just based on the roles you play in the society is based on your birth and that too based on your deeds in your past life so as the upanishads clearly uh, indicate the chandogya upanishad it says exactly. that any uh, the people here whose behavior is pleasant that means those who do good deeds can expect to enter a pleasant room now what is a pleasant room that means those who are brahmin kshatriyas and the vaisyas so you know the top three tiers of the uh, exactly uh, of the caste system and but then it goes on to say but people of foul behavior or people who who do evil deeds they expect to be uh entering a foul or an evil womb in some translations 
uh, like that of a dog, a pig, or an untouchable cause, which are right. the chakras. Yes. Now, why is, as Sister Swati said, you know, they are the same level as dogs and pigs, basically animals, you know, and that to animals which are considered to be um, uh, unclean in, in, in most societies, yeah? So anyone who's called a dog or a pig, they'll get offended. Why? Because you don't want to be of that particular nature, uh, of that dirty animal nature. But look, the untouchables or the chandalas uh, are actually at the same level as those um, animals which are which are considered to be dirty. Right, and even lower than the shudras, you know, yeah, in course, terms yeah. of... These are the outcasts, these are the untouchable, and they yeah. are even not fit enough to be in the four categories of the Varna system or the caste system. Here, uh, Brother Hashim, I would like to sort of bring one point here, uh, you know, because, because the objections which usually come are like this. First, they say that, okay, you know, we want Shruti, we want Vedas, whatever, sac you know, that's the sacrosanct text manuscript of which they can't show us uh, till now. Uh, then they say, then they also have seen in a lot of streams, you know, the, the, the they would bring out this particular, you know, verse of Bhagavad Gita, uh, which is of chapter 4, verse 13, where they say, now let us show you that you are all you are all wrong. You have not even yet understood it well. It is not based on pre-birth or something. It is clearly based on your activity and your good. And the and they quote Bhagavad Gita's chapter four verse thirteen by saying, you know, this is something where they say chatur varne maya srishtam gun karm vibhagashaha tasya kartar mapi mam vidya kartaram avyavyam. Now here, when they say that, you know, this is guna karm, you know, you just see that the four, they would say the four varnas, chatur varnya, four varna. Here it's clearly been said by Krishna that the four varnas are created by me. Srishtam meaning created by me. Uh, and, it's, and, and, and it's saying that it's based on gun and karm. Now, what they need to understand is it's a very specific connotation of gun and karm. They can't just lamely turn it to activity. You know, if they actually see within Hinduism, the, the, the gun, which is rajas, tamas, and sato gun, which is there, and the karm, where we have the prarabd, we have the sanchit karm, we have the kriyaman or the agami, which is the present karm. They what they usually do is they say it's based on your karm. You know, right now your activity, your vocation, and they only take the agami one, the kriyamana karm. But that's not the case. The kriyamana karm is just a minuscule part of it. It is in fact based how you would act is based on your prarabd, which is the past life, you know, and the sanchit karm which is the accumulation of all the past lives, you know, uh, which has been there. So basically, you know, the, the it's like if I have to, in a very simple language, if I have to say, it's like, you know, the sanchit, the sanchit karma are like the, the entirety of all the karmas that, you know, have got sanchit means accumulated, you know, and they say, and it's accumulated in the subconscious, in the sanskar. So those all karmas are referred to san, the sanchit karma and the prarabd is out of that kitty, a little bit of it is of, of, of past life is taken. So Prarabd and Sanchit together, you know, you know, plays a very important role in this activity. So how can they say and alienate and separate the birth from the activity of right now, of, of the current system? Where they say oh, it's 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 so it's totally based on current activity, occupation, etc. etc. It's not like that. Your gunas are determined, your activities, your karm is determined by your previous birth. That's how you get, in fact, that's how you get the gunas also. Your, in fact, in fact, the very Bhagavad Gita also says that, you know, people who die and if they have the sattva gun predominant, then they attain a very spotless world. The ones who die with rajas gun prevalent, then they get born in a, in a family where they, where they are attached to work. And the yeah. people who die with tamas gun, they are born in the womb of, you know, person who is lacking intelligence. So how can they say that this has nothing to do with the previous life right. birth at all? Actually, last uh, stream, if you remember, I mentioned exactly. this, uh, 1327, mm -hmm. where you destroy what asked the question about how persons from the three lower castes can attain the same status as Brahmins. So remember right. the three lower castes below the Brahmin are the Kshatriya the Vaishya and the Shudras. How can they attain the 
the status of the highest caste. And guess what the answer was from uh, Bhishma, is it? Yeah, Bhishma. Yeah, Bhishma. So Bhishma answers, Brahmin status is unobtainable, unobtain, unobtainable for these castes in the same birth. Absolutely. Only through innumerable births, they can hope to be born as Brahmin. Now, what does innumerable mean? Yes. It probably means you'll never be born as a Brahmin for, for eternity. Yes, absolutely. And this is, you know, th th this includes the other lower caste, the ones lower to the Brahmin. I'm not even talking just about the Shudras. Correct, correct. Okay, so that's 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 the reason. I mean, so, so, how, so, how and here, that? brother, and here, brother Hashim, you have quoted from Mahabharat. Now, I want to say, if they say, oh, this is from you know Itihas, this is the epic. Now we don't want to believe in that suddenly. Uh, oh, then, but... then reject all your Ramayanas and Mahabharata. <laughs> no, they can't reject it. No, because, it's, a part of, it's a it's part not... of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita and also a lot of times it's taken to be the fifth way. Yeah, it's a also. part of Bhagavad Gita. Yes. No, the Bhagavad Gita is part of the Mahabharata, isn't it? Isn't exactly. Right, right. And Mahabharata in itself, yes, you know, yes, in yes. terms of its value, in terms of the Purusharts that it brings of earth, calm and moksha, Dharmart Kamoksh, and they themselves say that you know people who are not able to understand the depth of Vedas, for them to have easy accessibility to it, you have Mahabharat, which is hailed as a fifth Veda. So how can you reject you know the fifth Veda like that? Because Veda is so sacrosanct to them, so they can't denounce it. Similarly, for Manusmriti, when they say, "Oh, we have now Vishuddh Manusmriti," there are so many you know shlokas of the Vishuddh Manusmriti which is totally sanctifying and I have the references if any of the guests would ask for it, which is yeah, absolutely... They, they more or less know it is from the Manuspriti and yeah. they will try their best to... So, Brother Sam, if people start rejecting these um, scriptures of theirs, you know, started calling it Smriti or um, because of that yeah. they are rejecting it, what, how would you respond to that question? That allegation, basically. In, yeah. No, they, they, yeah, they cannot reject because uh, because the because uh, Chandogya Upanishad itself says, as uh, Swati has said, that the uh, Puranas are considered as the fifth Veda. The Itihasa is considered as the fifth Veda, and Puranas and Manusmitis uh, has been written by rishis, the gurus, the swamis, and the Puranas. If they reject, they have to reject Vedas as well because the writer of the Veda is same, uh, which is of the Purana, Ved Vyasa. Precisely. Ved Vyasa has a has. A, uh, yeah. So with so the has character. a collected and uh, okay, he's a, he's the one right, exactly. And also the Puranas. he's the same person who has written Mahabharata, Mahabharata, Gita, Puranas, Ved, Upanishad, everything. Most of the books has been written by Ved why, why are they saying that these are something that we don't need to follow? The Puranas and the Itihasas. Why they have. Do you know what, Brother Hashim? It's all been compiled. Uh, 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 I just corrected the terminology, no, not written, but compiled by him, Ved Vyas. Yeah. And also, if you want to totally reject, first of all, you compiled can't just pick and choose. Yeah, you can't, you can't just pick and choose because you're very Bhagavad Gita from which they quote and they say it's, you know, based on karma and etc. The same Bhagavad Gita, chapter 16, verse 24 also says that let the scripture be your authority in determining what should be done and what should not be done. Understand the scriptural injunctions and teachings and then perform your action in this world accordingly. So they can't just randomly pick and choose like that. And if they really want to negate everything, then, then just, you know, then what is the fuss and the entire charade over the temples, the temples, the festivities, everything which is there. Well, the, the mention of Ram and Krishna is not in the Vedas. Exactly. Why would they, why would they start building temples after Krishna? Ram, exactly. Start... Every god. Yeah. You'll have to abandon mm. most gods, in fact. Majority of the, maybe from the 330 million, you'll have like a handful left. Absolutely. You know, because nothing, Ram, <laughs> Krishna, Hanuman, yes. Durga, Kali, where is it? Please show us, where is it yeah. mentioned in the Vedas? So these Hare Krishnas, they come with this Gita always, uh, because I think it's, it's one of the books which has been whitewashed of everything that they probably would be, you know, kind of embarrassed about. Because remember, these at that time they were probably competing with the 19th century. Some of these gurus, you know, like Vivekananda and uh, some of their swamis, you know, um, all they were competing with the Christians, Christian missionaries, and also with the Muslims. And 
there's no way they wanted to show all this negativity in their books, which they will have no proper answer to. So I think it's probably whitewashed most of it in, in terms of the Bhagavad Gita and is removed to the references or something like that. And as, as we know that the Mahabharata is a huge epic, from that the Gita is just a fraction of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they can't just throw exactly. away exactly. You know, why, yeah. you know why they can't throw away Brother Gita also like that under the bus? Because Krishna, supposedly the avatar of Vishnu, who's uh, extrapolating from Brahman, it's all tied together. If you're rejecting Krishna, you have to also reject Vishnu. You have to also then reject the very Brahman that they talk about, you know, mm. because because even, even Brahman has the uh, extension in terms of Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh. And Vishnu's incarnation come as Krishna then. So then, either get rid of all of that and be and don't call and, yourself and the a temples, religion. And the yeah. thousands of temples dedicated to Ram Krishna and all yeah. the other ones, yeah. which are not there in the Vedas. It's not right. there. So I think it'll be a good time now to perhaps um, bring in. Um, I mean, I'm I'm hoping there are Hindus in the chat who would want to correct us if you would like to use that phrase. Um, if you have made any mistakes or misrepresented your religion, you're more than welcome. Now is your opportunity to come. Before that, before that, Brother Hashim, before that, I would yeah. like to also, they, in case if somebody is there who believes, they call, oh, we have Vishuddha Manusmriti now. They didn't they didn't use that. Those are the Mool Shlokas. Even yeah. in Vishuddha Manusmriti, you That's know, okay, chapter... Sister, when, yeah. when they bring it up, you bring, bring the, the shlokas. Reference, from yeah. yeah. Then we can show them. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm going to put the link out, uh, giving first preference to any Hindus uh, out there. So now is the opportunity to upgrade yourself from keyboard warriors to a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, discussion here, inshallah. Yeah. Real warrior. <laughs> keyboard warriors, yeah. I mean, I really want Before that you. if they're really truly seekers, I mean, open your mind and see and reflect upon these texts. It's You just get tired reading it. That's what I yeah, have experienced. Yeah, I know it becomes like that. But if they want, look, if they want evidence, then we have the scriptures. If they yeah. want to bring up their own opinions, then why should we take their opinion over their scriptures? Unless they, Absolutely. they think they're better than we are. So right. we're compiled, right. you know, compiled the Vedas, who's <laughs> compiled the Hasas, and who has compiled the Puranas as well. So if you're a bigger Rishi than Ved Vyasa, then bring your credentials forward and let's see if you can stand up to scrutiny. <laughs> right, so we, have, we have actually pinned the link uh, to join the Q&A, inshallah. Um, any Hindus out there? Yeah. No? Nobody? Come on, mm -hmm. right? Of course, because now it's it's there in the Vedas, it's there in the Upanishad, it's there in your Puranas, it's there in Smritis. What all can you reject everything? The religion in, in itself will totally extinct then if you yeah. reject it all. So yeah, first priority will be given to the Hindus. Uh, Muslims can join in later, inshallah, when we'll call out uh, you know, in the stream. But right now we're giving opportunities to Hindus. So it looks like no Hindu wants to come forward. So while they are making up their mind or whatever they are lurking in the background there. <laughs> so uh, Brother Sam, you want to share some more um, things for us with regards to this topic, inshallah? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me quote you from uh, Prashar Smithi. It, this is also one of the Smithis, which is considered by many people. Uh, here it uh, says, uh, by not in any way serving the brahmanas and by doing heinous acts, a shudra becomes shorted life and goes to hell after the death. These duties are Im imperatively obligatory on the men of the four castes. So here he's talking about a shudra who doesn't serve an upper caste will go to hell directly. Wow. So it's That's a basic amazing. duty of shudra to serve brahmins. By this yeah. only, they get moksha. Otherwise, no moksha. They are going straight to hell. Well, uh, it looks like they have made Even in Skanda Purana, God. there is... They've made themselves like gods in the yeah. society, isn't it? Like, you serve me, you know? Exactly, uh, exactly, I'm, exactly. You exactly. serve um, the creator, you know? God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't even bow down to anyone else. That is the amount of uh, difference right. between... Us and the 
the Hindus who are mostly idolaters. Okay. Uh, we got uh, Dr. Vedant, you need to show your camera uh, for verification in the background. Don't worry, only I can see you. Nobody else can see you. So before you come online, you need to do that. Uh, or you can ask your question in the, uh, in the back chat. It's up to you. Go ahead, uh, Brother Sam, while he's making up his mind whether to show himself in the camera or not. Uh, do you want me to hide my face? <laughs> no, no. Uh, you know, one thing strike me, brother. Guys. Lion. <laughs> <laughs> no, mashallah, you, you, you are the lion, you know, when it comes to showing the face in India. Uh, I know every single person out there who discuss these topics in India, they all hide their face. I don't know what they're worried about, but, well, they have the, the option to do that. You have the option to do that here as well. When we bring you on the panel, you don't need to show your face. It's just for verification in the background because we get lots of trolls who come and disturb the stream. So just for that reason. So Dr. Vedan, come on, uh, be a man and show your face. Right, Sam, go ahead, brother. Yep. And uh, uh, let me quote Kurma Purana. It's one of the Puranas. Uh, it says in uh, book number two, chapter number 16, verse number 22, the race and the caste get lost by giving the charity to the non Brahmins, Shudra, who conduct themselves against the scriptures. The charity should be given only to the Brahmins. See? Even, the, even the charity is given only to the Brahmins, not to the Shudra. The Shudra of deserve course. more charity, but no, only Brahmins are allowed to be given. Of course. This is the level of discrimination. Yeah. What about even the, even uh, even the if, yeah yeah I was going to ask uh, what about like when they reincarnate you know um, can a shudra become a brahmin after reincarnation or do you have to go through I don't know hundreds and thousands or millions of uh, reincarnations before they become a brahmin. It all depends on, you know, whether he gets the opportunity to develop. Exactly. We, we cannot count the words. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, it's not a just system. You know, the other thing about this karma link with the birth and with the cost system, it just shows the, the karma, according to them, is supposed to be this perfect system, which uh, holds you accountable for your deeds. But then, it doesn't show yeah. any leeway in terms of there's no option of forgiveness in the karma system. Yeah, yeah? It, it's it's no and also it's just a black and white, isn't right. it? You're either good or you're bad. You come and think back about the, it. No, just think yes. about it. That now here yeah. in this birth, for example, how do I how do I know what I had done in the previous birth for which I need to repent? or whatever, make the <laughs> correction. I have no clue at all. Then how do I even succeed in making any corrections? That's also something, you know, which is, it's very flawed in its basis, in its premise. Yeah. And moreover, more than anything, as you were saying, do they get the chance, you know, in uh, after maybe how many reincarnations to reach to that level? They are not. They are prohibited. Chudras are prohibited from studying the Vedas. That's very clearly mentioned in Brahma Sutra also. So if they they can't even go through it, they can't read, they can't hear the so-called sacred text, and they have to perform all this service, where is the scope for them to even get whatever knowledge they can acquire? Although I have doubts whether Vedas have that knowledge or not. But still, as per their frame, their system, if they, they call it to to be something which is knowledgeable, they are totally denied from it. And the, the scripture themselves mention it. That they are not qualified to be able to go through, read, or even hear. And if they do, then the punishment which has been there, you know, the punishment. tongue can be slit. Yeah, the tongue can be slit if they pronounce it. The body is to be cut, you know, if, if molten, molten. Hot oil is poured in the ears. Yeah, I mean, all which, which that. Which is that, you know? Is there mentioned in the It's uh, Smithy. Smithy. Oh, Manu Smithy. Manusmiti guys, also the, Sutra. Are waiting, guys who are waiting in the back yeah. chat, uh, you need to switch on your camera for verification. As I said, only I can see. Um, it's only for 30 seconds just to verify. Uh, yeah. 
you're not some mischievous person or something, nothing other than that. All right. So Rohan Saxena is here. <laughs> I'm giving <laughs> it to the other guys who haven't come here before. So Marwa, do you want to show yourself or you just want Rohan to- Rohan Saxena just sticks to very silly points. You can't spe you can't pronounce Upanayana, <laughs> so you're not a Brahmin. I mean, come on, grow up. It's it's okay. It's okay, Shashi. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he, he's one of the guys. Uh, at least he comes, you know. He's, <laughs> I, I give him yeah. that credit. Least, you know, he comes and he shares his opinion. At least uh, that's that itself is a credit to him. Rohan, bhai, come on, uh, unmute yourself. Um, let us know what your opinion is. I don't know if yeah. yeah, yeah, I listened from the very start. Okay. Um, yeah, and thank you very much for this opportunity to offer our clarifications. So even I am a practicing Hindu, and I was at times very bewildered by this problem. So the closure I got was from the Mahabharata itself. Uh, it's from the Ajagara Parva of the Mahabharata, where um, before you go into the scriptures, give me your yeah. your understanding, your your experience in your life with regards to caste. Have you ever been discriminated? I don't know what caste you're from, but. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming from the Saxena surname. I don't know if that's your real surname. No, that's not a real surname. That's okay. not the real name. So tell us your, if you don't mind, tell us your cost and if you have had any discrimination or you yourself have discriminated anyone. Yeah, I come from the lowest caste, the Sudra community, and I haven't experienced it, but definitely my parents have experienced it. They recollect, for example, my mother uh, says instances mm -hmm. where when she used to visit temples, we are offered teeth, that means the holy water. So she used to, she says that um, when we were young, when we used to go to temples, from a distance, the priest used to throw that holy water. We weren't allowed to go close to him and have that water. But that was like some 20, 30 years ago. So this anymore. was at the temples, yeah? Yeah, it was in the temples. And my mother were your has parents in a, in a city or in a rural area? It was in the city. My parents oh, wow. are from the okay. city. Wait, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably many, many years ago. Some 20, 30, yeah, 30 plus years ago. And have things um, changed now in that city? Of course, uh, today we don't see that. Uh, that's good, that's yeah, good, but, that's progress. Yeah, but, but I'm sure even in my very own village where I have my lineage from, so there uh, it's still practiced. I can acknowledge that because uh, it's very unfortunate. That's why uh, this industrialization, commercialization, and all this should happen at a more quicker pace. Uh, and I see more, uh, these things more as a psychological problem than as a religious problem. Because why, why is that? Why why you do not see this as a religious problem when the religious scriptures are the one who have condoned this? Yeah, uh, of course, some religious scriptures do have not this some, kind of... Not some, the, all of them. The Upanishads, we are talking about the manuscript, we are talking about the Mahabharata. These are major scriptures. And Vedas. And just, Chuck it under the bus, you know. Yeah, I think uh, we had stalwarts amongst our clan, like Mahatma Gandhiji, who have who has gone extensively into scriptures, and he instructed. He is the one who led the great march against untouchability, and he almost brought a great change in our country. And for that, he reason, himself is hated by them. You know that Gandhi himself is hated by the RSS. In fact, they are the ones who killed him. Right. Exactly. Right. Uh, the, yeah. Sir, that, that's because uh, <laughs> they thought that he gave you the other country of Bangladesh, not because of other reasons. I mean, Pakistan. Yeah, and, Pakistan. and they have rejected the Indian constitution as well. They have rejected Indian constitution as well. They wanted to implement Manu Smithy as the law in the beginning of the, uh, 1947. What is the RSS? So they have opposed Indian constitution, yeah. Okay, interesting. So yeah, they're yeah. calling others as being anti-Indian or anti um you know, law, uh, being national in the country and yes, anti-national. And this is completely the opposite, isn't it? If you're going to reject your own constitution and reject the father of the nation like Gandhi, who happened to be on every single currency of India, if I'm not mistaken, at least the notes, I think. Um, and every government office, his picture is there, including Modi's office. So how can you hate yeah. someone you know, who's supposed to bring peace and harmony and in fact played a huge role in getting rid of the um, uh, the Britishers from India. 
Uh, yeah, this RSS, the current president, Sarasanga Chalak, uh, our Mohan Bhagavad Ji, he himself said we need to root out this uh, idea of caste from our minds and, and from the society. Did he? I think, in fact, I would like to correct you, brother, because uh, he, in fact, had recited the shloka uh, on, in fact, August 5th, 2020, where he had said that Etar Desh Prasutasya Sakashad Grajannam Swam Swam Charitram Shikshenan Prithviyam Sarva Manavaha meaning from the first born, that is the Brahmin born in that country, let all the men on the earth learn their respective duties. So how is he discarding right. the caste system? Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I still want to know, Ron, I want to know from you why you do not consider this as a religious problem. Yeah, because the uh, churches are the ones who sanction this practice. Yeah, it, um, I only look through the eyes of uh, stalwarts like Mahatma Gandhi, Ji, Swami Vivekananda, Dayananda. No, yeah, no, they are not the ones who wrote the scriptures. So I know there are people who are activists like uh, Baba Ambedkar. He played a huge role in getting rid of the. Uh, he was the architect of the constitution, isn't it? He's the one who put a special section for the scheduled cause. So he played a huge role as well, and they hate him as well, because I think he became a Buddhist from a Hindu. But that's that's different. Look, these are activists. These are people who played a huge role, like the way um, you had activists in the United States, you know, Dr. King, who played a huge role getting uh, during the civil rights movement. So there are there's always been activists who have looked at the people who are oppressed and try to improve that situation and speak out against the oppression against them. And we give them credit for that, absolutely. But my question, Rohan, is specifically to do with the scriptures. Do you acknowledge that the scriptures are the prime reason we have this discrimination? Because it is the scriptures which have codified, especially the Manu Smriti, the law of Manu, which has codified this discrimination from a very long time ago, long before the Mughals came, long before the British came. So why are you trying to, you know, somehow shift the burden of this discrimination, this, um, I think it's an oppression, isn't it? This oppression onto others. Yeah. Why don't the Indians, the Hindus in particular, like yourself who recognize this is wrong this should be rooted out from our society as you said why don't you come up and say these are problems within the religion because you clearly said this is not a religious problem and i think it is uh, yeah uh, now the chief ch champion against this so-called uh, uh, casteism was none other than dr b r ambedkar himself he was so interested in this problem he went on to do a phd on this from the columbia university so he has written this phenomenal paper origin of caste system mm -hmm. as part of his phd thesis so if we read that we'll come to understand that scriptures in itself has got not much of a problem and he wrote this exclusive book to figure out where the problem is who was really? that? And he was Hinduism. The one. so i don't exactly. think the hindus will take him as seriously when he writes books when you are now what about Buddhist, burning of Manusmriti? Yeah, you're saying that he Manus has absolutely yes. Yeah, and you're saying he has nothing to do with the scriptures. He didn't have any problem. What are you talking about? Okay, have you read the book Who Were the Sudras by Dr. V. R. Ambedkar? Yes, I have read the book. No, uh, I have uh, the, the, we, we just know that he has burned Manusmriti. Can you give me the reason like why why did he burn Manusmriti? Wait a second, let's figure out who were the sudras. Who has read? No, the no, book? no, no. Let's the first problem? figure out why did he burn the scriptures no, since you said since you said that he didn't have uh, any no. problem with the scriptures. Yeah. Manusmriti was a later law book which developed probably in the post Buddhistic era. Um, our scriptures predate Buddha, and for that reason he has himself done that. So have you read the book Who Were the Sudras? Okay, there so he has so you're saying you're saying the Manusmriti is uh, in the time of Buddha, is that what you're saying? Post Buddhistic book, it is. Okay, uh, so how many, let, let's say a thousand years? Is it a thousand no, no. years? Two thousand years? Yes, okay. yes. So you're talking about a two thousand year old Hindu, manus, Hindu scripture, like the Manusmriti. The question is, why did Baba Ambedkar burn it? Yes, you know. Yes. Why? 
is that that's what you know in the process of life in the process of societal ev evolution many things happen and we need to bring in laws which over time gets uh, uh, will need to be diluted or even cast away and that's ex that did not happen so easily because people's mind were so deeply entrenched into manuspruti so to drive that do you, think, do you think look even without the progress yeah. that the society has made are you saying 2000 years ago humans should have been discriminated just because they were born uh, in a lower caste or an out caste? 2,000 years I mean, ago, humans were still human, right? No, it wasn't what has actually. Changed? What has changed? Tell me, a homo sapien back then was still the same species as us, right? Yeah, like, you know, who are okay, those? So those are you stuff? saying this law, this law was okay 2,000 years ago? You see, how it evolved, how these laws evolved. I'm not like, talking about the example, evolution. I'm talking about when it was originally written. Yeah, was see, it, laws do not... Okay, the question is this. Was it okay to discriminate based on your birth 2,000 years ago? That's what I'm trying to explain. Laws do not drop down from heaven. They evolve from within the society. So there was a need within the society. For example, uh, Sister Swati... Uh, never reached laws the were dropped down from heaven, brother. Did you hear what Vedas had said? Where where you have the where you have Brahmins, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra coming from the mouth the 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 you know uh, thighs the feet etc which has been mentioned here so it is definitely dropping from the heavens no no this varnashrama has not dropped from heavens the best example is even buddha has talked about the chatur varna if you look into the digga nikaya of the tripitakas so you yes, want to say that it's all man made you want to discard in, the god from all of this you don't Mahatma, want to believe in god Mahatma Gandhi himself says this is an invention of our forget rishis. About, forget about an, forget okay, about so an English. Let me ask you this. Is, is Manu what, someone considered what about to Ram? be a Bhagwan yeah. according to many of the Hindus? Manu himself is considered to be a Bhagwan, right? Yeah, uh, even I respect Manu. There is no doubt about that. In, in what sense? Look, we have in Islam, we have God and we have the prophets. Okay? So you know a bit about Islam, right? So let me ask you this. Would Manu be considered like a prophet at least, if not God? A uh, prophet means uh, uh, prophets have that exclusive access to divine revelations. But in what, our context... What Manu? Manu got his revelation from uh, Brahman himself. Yeah, he was Manus Putra. Okay. So let me yeah. ask you this. You, you somehow are saying that we need change in these manuscripts. Am I right? In these scriptures. No, that's why I uh, request you, let's at first look into the scriptures, see if there is problems. All right, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you now saying there is no problems yeah. at all in the laws of Manu? Not in the Manu, I'm looking from the Mahabharata. No, but we are uh, talking about what the about Vedas? Now that yeah. you want to come to Mahabharata, what about Vedas? No, no, before we go there, Sister Swati, I want to know, at least acknowledge that the Manusmriti is something you agree with or you disagree with. Let's start see, with that. Definitely, I disagree with many of its aspects. It needs a change, and uh, that's what life is all about. Even Indian Constitution has got so what, many amendments. Why, do why you, did we do that? No, no brother. Why do you? Why, why, why do you? Why do you? Why do you need change? Yeah. The why do you need change? People would change something is because they disagree with it. So once again, the question is this: Do you disagree with what Manu wrote? Two thousand many. Years ago? Many of the aspects with Manu wrote was probably for those times. I haven't, uh, I don't have a... And that's the reason for my follow-up question. Are the human beings 2,000 years ago, when Manu wrote these laws, were they not human beings? Were they, were they human beings who deserve to be discriminated based on their birth? I don't see that as discrimination. It was only a rule book to keep society in order, not to well, hammer... So you don't see discrimination in, in the law of Manu? Seriously. No, no, it's not. It is, it is not to some uh, to throttle someone, and uh, it, its in, intention was to keep orderliness in society. For example, if let my me read. Let <laughs> let me read couple of. Oh let yeah. me read couple of couple of verses. Hey, then oh, we can question uh, you. Just wait one second, just before Brother Sam goes, bro, Brother Rohan. Yeah. Seriously. Yes, like, This is like the equivalent of saying. This is the equivalent of saying. Well. Um, you know, enslaving black people was not really about discrimination. It was more about economic prosperity and and, and spurring on the industrial revolution. What are, what is this? Like, was there a result from the Manu laws that there was discrimination based on uh, what family you were born? Yes, there was. So I'm not interested in all the other extra stuff. Like, it is very very clear. 
That's it, brother Sam. Go ahead. No, the whole agenda of Manuswati is like, for example, my grandfather says that I want to go on on, on a binge eating of meat. Manuswati says, no, you, you aren't allowed to have meat uh, uh, on a splurge. My grandfather says, no, who the hell are you to ask me? So they said, okay, then you be a Shudra and we are not allowing you to conduct, uh, be a model for the society. Model we are going to create out of the Brahmins. If my and grandfather wants to... This is not your grandfather. Uh, this is not your grandfather. You, you said that... This is God's son. <laughs> It's not God, God, blah, blah. It's only people like my grandfather who simply wanted to butcher animals. and. What God, blah, blah? Do you not believe in God? Do you not believe in Brahma? Do you not believe that Manu was his Manas Putra? Is, is Buddha bringing in gods when he's talking about Forget Chatur Forget about Varma? Buddha right now. Talk about your scripture, your own scripture. Don't bring Buddhism right now to it. Talk about your own scripture. Is Manu not the son of Brahma? You're saying God, blah, blah. That's like a blasphemy done by you, yourself, of your own religion. See, and you have no regrets about it. It's not blasphemous because uh, God for us is not uh, uh, something who cannot be questioned or who, who should be. That's only the problem that you have created imperfection of God itself and you take such pride in that. No, these are not imperfection. The primary imperfection is within the Arabic, uh, Abrahamic system where they say your right. God is a jealous That's God. That's what I was waiting for. Brother your Hashim, I'll just rejoin brother. again. Okay, please take yeah, me again. Yeah. I'll just leave and rejoin again. That's fine. Yeah. Brother Rohan, you said you said earlier like uh, Manusmiti laws were, were were made just to uh, have a balance in the society, right? These were your words. Just go ahead, please. Yeah. So you tell me how 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 the balance is being made with these laws. Manusmiti chapter eight, verse number two seven two. Out of arrogance, if a shudra teaches a Brahmin his duty, then the king shall pour hot oil in his mouth and ears. Manusmiti chapter 8, verse number 270. If a Shudra insults or abuse a Brahmin, his tongue should be chopped off. Manusmiti chapter 8, verse number 281. Uh, if a low born person tries to occupy the same seat with his superior, he should be banned and his hips, hips, hips should be, hips should be cut, cut off. Manusmiti chapter 8, verse number 279. If a Shudra hits a Brahmin with his any of his limbs, the limbs should be cut off. I can go on and on and on. So can you tell me uh, what made you say uh, these verses keep the balance in the society? Don't you have defamation case today? If somebody abuses you, can't you go ahead and uh, file a defamation case? Or if you, if I insult your religion? No, okay, okay. tongue should be cut off. Tongue should be cut off. The leg should be cut off. The buttock should be cut off. If a Shudra acquires the seat of a Brahmin, if he goes and si sits uh, beside a Brahmin, his buttock should be cut off. Is this okay, justice? Uh, okay, I'm surprised you're, you're in denial of this clear passages. No, I, I'll answer this. Is, this. You know, this is the reason, this is the reason when you come online, you know, and we question you, we we expect Hindus to be sincere. You no, know, please don't, listen. Don't throw please out listen. the baby with the bathwater. And that's exactly what you're doing now. No, please listen to my answer. Signaling. Okay. Uh, uh, my, there is a friend of mine in Pakistan and she said that I don't believe in uh, moon splitting. It, it's all uh, uh, some fable of some people. And where where are you? Where are you going? Where are you going, brother? Brother, brother, where, where have what you jumped this? from Manusmiti to the moon? Is that, is that not what a lot? What do with our it? conversation? Yeah. Is that, is that not a law? Listen, we are not discussing Islam here. When we're discussing this, you can bring it on. So please stop doing this, uh, changing topics. Or, do you have the, also, do you have problems? Your whataboutery doesn't work here. What about Hanuman you know, eating the sun away to glory? What about that? Do you have any problems with that? <laughs> What about what about Shiva cutting the head of his own son Ganesh? Do you have problems Anuman with that? Eating the the son, for example. Yes. Okay. Please, please not fire I mean, against. We can one. go on and on, you know, if you want to bring it. I mean, you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. Do you hear yourself? Right now, what you're talking? Topic, you know? Okay, but I don't. Rohan, the wait. problem is the Rohan, problem just is just acknowledge that here. there was oppression, there was discrimination, and those people who were discriminated against were human beings, even two thousand years ago. I don't know why you can't acknowledge that. See, I acknowledge the story of my own mother. She was ill-treated in the temple. What more can I acknowledge? You said, you said it is not religion. The religion is not to be blamed. Psychology has to be blamed. Okay. That's what you're saying. You're, you're, putting, you're shifting the blame on everyone else except the religion. Let's see, that's what I'm requesting you. Can I read out from the Mahabharata? Let us see what is there. Okay, no, can I please? Go to the Mahabharata. Let, me, let me read out from Mahabharata. Let me give yes. you a couple of verses from Mahabharata as well. Brother Ishmael, please go on. 
No, uh, if it wasn't a religious issue, you'd see this caste system everywhere else, but you don't. You see, it's specifically, um, and it's, that's the inter- interesting thing about the caste system is that it's a very, very specific and very odd kind of discrimination that we don't see anywhere else. That's why you need such specialized uh, legislation for it in America where it's getting imported now. So you could make a direct link wherever you find caste systems, it's directly linked to Hinduism. Okay, sir. Thank you for and your that's time. through the scripture. Go on, sir, Brother Sam, and go on. Uh, yeah. Brother, can I please read out from the Mahabharata? It will bring a closure to all the discussion. Yeah. Please, please. Really? I, before that, before that, you do, do read about it and sure. enlighten us. But, Brother, in the last stream, you were saying, uh, Rohan Saxena, that you are more into Vedas and, you know, Patanjali Yoga Sutra and sort of Smritis don't appeal you much. Suddenly, now you've shifted gears and now you are so fascinated by, Madhus, by Mah- Mahabharata. I just want to know every stream you pick and choose one text uh, to suit the convenience, whichever uh, you want to. In the in the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, there is only one word called Jati, where it says, irrespective of all the Jatis, these ten regulations should be followed by everyone. Yeah, and Jati things. means Jan. It ca- it comes from Jan itself. No, so it yes, go ahead with Mahabharat. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah. There, um, in some situation, Yudhishthira. A snake, it's in the form of a metaphor. So a snake yep. asks, a snake asks um, Yudhishthira, hey Yudhishthira, who are these Brahmins? I want to know about them. So Yudhishthira replies. One second, one second, one second, Rohan Saks and brother, you don't find this amusing snake asking? You had problems with moon splitting. Now skein is snake is asking Yudhishthira, and you are very rationally taking it. You don't find this amusing? <laughs> I'm, I mean, what your your dis, your you know your sense of deciphering just it has very discriminatory nature. I'm sorry to say about that. Okay, thank you, sister. Yeah, now let's listen to this. Um, but so, you didn't answer me. You didn't answer me. Didn't you find it amusing? You found uh, you found you found moon splitting to be very amusing. Snake speaking to you, Dishter, You didn't find it amusing. Okay, I say this is a metaphor. Are you ready to call uh, the, the moon splitting as a metaphor? Do you also want to call Shiva cutting the head of Ganesha it's a as metaphor? Do you also... That's a completely different thing. <laughs> so so let's, let's please stick to this. Okay. It, it, uh, it's so, so interesting so... how Hindus, Hindus, when pressed on their mythology, become like atheists, become uh, yeah. empiricists. They reject okay, okay. all miracles and they take everything <laughs> metaphorical. Yes, and this I is a metaphor that we are, we are we... listening to. Okay, yeah. Brother Rahman, you, you believe in the supernatural or no? What's the problem? Why can't you? Why do you have problems with wood splitting, but you take all, 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 because, your, because, uh, all the mythology wholesale? Yeah, after the research, explaining this, next I'll come to moon splitting. Please wait. Yeah, now here so, the snake. Uh, one, one, more, one more thing, brother. Not about Islam, so stop yeah. all this, you know, what about her? Can you just stick yeah. to the to the actual topic at hand, please? And also, I want to know this. You are saying this is a metaphor. So, is Yudhishthir also is he an actual being, or is he also a metaphor? We'll come to this after reciting this uh, scenario. Finish, yeah. finish your, finish your passage. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, the snake asks, "Whom can we call a Brahmana, O Yudhishthira?" So the Yudhishthira says, uh, "O monarch of snakes, it is said that he is a Brahmana in whom are found the qualities of truthfulness, charity, forgiveness, good conduct, benevolence, asceticism, and mercy." So the serpent asks, "Hey, these things are to be found even in in the Shudras." They are also truthful, charity, uh, benevolent, merciful, kindful, everything. Um, so Yudhishthira replies, the Shudra in whom these characteristics are present is no Shudra. Something higher. A Brahmana in whom these characteristics are lacking he is no Brahmana at all. He is a Shudra. Okay. And Yes. So this brings a closure, and here it we doesn't come to bring a closure. It doesn't. It Why contradicts. Not? It contradicts a lot of things which have been spoken. In fact, even in the same text of Mahabharat, which we had just quoted, where it was said that you have it takes you know sort of years together for you to be well, even able to take the birth saying. of Brahman. Mr. Swati, let's see what he says about the Chandro, uh, Chandogya, Chandogya Upanishad. Upanishad. What is your view about this passage? See, that's what you know. The explanation of all is to be found in the well, cover of the commentary. The what, commentary. We are not itself. going to. We are not going to interpret it. You read it and you interpret it. If you want to consider this to be also metaphoric, then tell us why. So read it no. and tell me what you what you understand. <laughs> 
so that's what i think even last time i tried to explain this but i was uh, in a hurry okay so at first uh, let us look into the etymology of the word brahmin what is that brahma jayate first 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 read the verse first read the verse brother read the passage and give us your understanding of it yeah yes, please please allow me to say this one line so that it will bring we, we the context you, listen, we we listen to your quote not just one line the entire quote now you now you read the quote i'm giving you and tell us what you understand from it sir to explain this please allow me just one line in sanskrit it is brahma jayate brahmanah means the one who has realized that brahman he is to be called brahmin this is the etymology of the word brahmin okay now coming to the chandogya upanishad yeah Uh, now people here whose behavior is pleasant can expect to enter a pleasant womb, womb like brahmin the kshatriya the vaishya and blah blah but people of foul behavior can expect to reach some uh, other um, foul womb like that of a dog pig and uh, uh, ya yeah, chandala okay. so yes first and foremost tell us if the womb that's discussed here is that literal or metaphoric it's literal okay now why is the womb of a uh, brahmin which um, kshatriya and Vaishya considered to be good, and uh, that of a Chandala considered to be evil. Yeah, as just now I explained from the Mahabharata, because the Chandal, sorry, the Brahmana womb is possessed with the qualities of mercy, kindfulness, charity, truthfulness, uh, compassion, and all these things. That of a Chandala, it's full of um, hatefulness, jealousy, lustfulness, all nonsense of this world. He is best of all. You're, you're saying, how is first, first and foremost? Do you become a chandala from birth, or do you acquire this during the lifetime? This right. category. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, there is a possibility of a chandala by birth also. Okay. What about the brahmin? Is, is a brahmin by birth? What about the brahmin? Before he does yes, all the good deeds. Yes. Like for example, uh, in this life, I've done great many good deeds, but yet no, I no, fail. No, no. Didn't hear the question. Listen to the question before you respond to it. Is the category or the classification of a brahmin? is it since birth or is this category decided based on his deeds during his life term yes that, that is what there are two aspects to it there is a jati brahmin and there is a varna brahmin jati is we are talking, about, example, we are talking about the jati here which is the caste <coughs> okay yes so and also the varna why, why don't not try to bring out a conclusion of the two differences he does even any deeds As soon as he is born, he is born of a Brahmin Jati. Why? Yeah. 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 Here, here within the panel, Sister Swati is from the uh, Brahmin caste. She is not a Brahmin Varna. She is Brahmin caste. That's How do you I'm... know that? How do you Because know that? He... Do you know my Gotra? Do you know that? How can you claim it's not Varn and it's just Jati? Don't try to complicate it more. Rohan, Brahmin, Rohan, you know? Rohan, Rohan. Just, just give the answer, brother. Yeah. Don't pinpoint out any any other person the on the panel. Is why why are this class? In fact, even the jati or even the varna are they both not based on the birth? They are, but you know that's the way to complicate and you know encircle and entangle people into all of that. Mm. And I want to ask him. I want to ask him that you had said that you know the definition the uh, that Brahm, Brahm, Brahmin is the one who has realized Brahman. Do you really think? all the brahmins that you see around especially the ones who are there in temples say kali say hanuman temple the brahmins the pandits who are there if they have realized brahman then why are they worshiping you know and performing rituals there of hanuman or the other ones who are supposedly not the brahman why are they doing that then are they enlightened one what are you speaking about okay <laughs> let me help you let, let me let me help you out let let me help you out with one verse uh, varun uh, just uh, just uh, just a minute Mahabharat book number thirteen, uh, chapter number eight, verse number twenty-one. It says, uh, "If there is a Shatriya of full one hundred years of age and a good Brahmin child of only ten years, the latter should be regarded as the father and the former as the son. For among these two, verily, the Brahmin is superior." How about this verse? What do you say about it? What about? Yeah. What? What do you say about? Even it? the e even the ten-year-old Brahmin is superior to a hundred-year-old Shatriya. Yeah, you agree with this? They are simply heaping praises on somebody. Like, for example, when you meet a young boy, don't you heap praises on him? For example, if you meet the son no, of no, 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 superior, superior. No, no, it's talking among these two. The Brahmin is the superior one. It's not about the praise. 
the superiority has been demolished there by Yudhishthira explaining who a Brahmin is. That is the explanation which was required. So, so, this, so this, you, so the, the no. question to you was whether the Jati and the Varna, is it determined at birth or is it while they're doing the deeds? Guru yeah. Bhai? Jati is determined by birth, just like our sister Swati is. Varna is determined by behavior of a person. Whether please, he can... oh please, who what, give what, me a scripture, what about the color? quote from scripture which says this. You, the distinction which you have made, kindly give me from scripture. Is it out of your own mind and your own did psyche you, or is oh it mentioned God. somewhere? Did you not hear what I quoted from the Mahabharata? Did you not hear it? The what snake, did I quote what, from what the snake was saying? Rohan, the Rohan. metaphor? Oh, going to believe a snake? No. What, what did it say? What did Yudhishthira explain the snake? Okay. The so one who is... Rohan, with, with Rohan, Rohan, before, before they do the deeds, okay? What Varna, what Varna classification are they when they're born? If, let's right. say both the parents are Brahmin, then according to the Hindu Varna classification, what would be a child who is just born be classified as? Varna classification has got no, um, what do you call, bureaucratic uh, requirement or bureaucratic um, benefits whatsoever. Varna is... You, what, what would be the classification according to the Hindu system? By birth, he is a Jati Brahmin, but by no, Varna... Jati, because you're saying Jati and Varna are different. I'm asking what Varna would he be classified as? He's born to Brahmin parents. He's just born. The child is just born. He hasn't done any good deeds or bad deeds. The question still remains, what classification within the Varna system would he or she be given at birth? Here Yudhishthira has explained that. Can you identify truthfulness, kindness, benevolence in the baby? How Varna can a newborn baby? infant, how can an infant have all this? That's yeah. what I'm asking. Can you identify these things in a newborn baby? You cannot. Yeah. So which, which is so why? Which is what would be the Varna if you can't identify? Right. We are not going to. We are not yeah. going to assign. We are not going to assign. Oh, tell me a to Brahmin who doesn't assign the Brahmin one at birth. Give me any Brahmin. Go on. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, yeah. um, uh, uh, there is. Gadi Rukde. No, 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 sir. Uh, How can you be so one... insincere? Every time no, you no. come, not even single time you're, you know, honest about no, the no, thing. No, no, I want okay. him to show me a single Brahmin who does not assign his child as a Brahmin Varna at birth. Give me an example uh, of any Brahmin. Yeah, uh, if I think it's in the Vayu Purana or in the... Um, yeah. But you don't in, believe in Puranas, no? Are you? Pur Pur Do Puranas capture. Puranas capture India's history to a great ex extent. So uh, we really? can. You keep shifting. You keep shifting in every stream with what you believe about in terms of scriptures. You just suit it as let, for your let own. Let him give the reference. Yeah. Okay, give us, give let him give the reference. Uh, 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 Rohan, you have a, a reference? Yes. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, Manu's own son, he gets pushed into the Shudra Varna because he kills a cow. This is to be found. No, I no, no, think no, 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 no. The question is different. You cannot kill a cow. You and I know that. <laughs> so once no. again, at birth, my question is very specific. Give me an example of any Brahmin who does not classify their child at birth to be a Brahmin. Yes, the, the example. You know, why, Rohan? you know why you cannot run? Because you are absolutely wrong. No, it is not. Yes, I, that last time also. Give us a single example. I will, I will hold on. Uh, the last time I'll speak. You know, I'm going to put you in the back chat. If you got reference, come forward. I'm, I have to bring other people in. Within one minute, within one second, yes. I'll close it and I'll also have to go for a one sleep. Minute? Please. Okay, stay here one minute. That's fine. Right. The guys in the back chat, uh, Ramdas and guy who calls himself genius, can you please show uh, your faces for verification? Sorry, it's my Just before, before these guys head out, inshallah, I'll say my salams. I have uh, some stuff to do, inshallah. So, Jazakallah khair. I learned so much today, mashallah. Like, Inna Mr. Swati always Inna educating Inna. me. Brother Sam, may Allah bless you. I was Inna lovely Allah. meeting you for the first time. Brother Hashim, Inna thank Inna. you for inviting me. Um, You're welcome. Inshallah. Brother. See you guys soon, yeah? See you on the time. Inshallah. Take care of yourself, brother. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah Okay, so Ramdas, I'm going to remove you from the back chat because you haven't verified yet and you have been in the back chat for quite a while. And, Others and, are going to join. 
Uh, and Zandu. my friend Rohan Saxena, what do you have to say about Rigveda, which says that Brahmin comes from the mouth and from the arms, the Rajanya, from the thighs, the Vaishya, and from the feet, the Shudra. When Rigveda is saying this, what do you have to say about that? And you are quoting Yudhishthir, who uh, himself had gambled uh, his own birth yeah, yeah. there. So this yeah. this Rigveda, Rigveda is talking about a grown-up man or or an infant or a newborn. Yeah. Okay, uh, please go and figure out from at least uh, even the Max Miller who says many words like Vasanta and all have been used in no, that. No, 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 uh, let's not go to Max Miller. I'm quoting no. you Sanskrit word, word, verbitum Sanskrit, which is written in with Rig Veda. What do you have to say about that? Brahma Asya Mukha Masi Dahu Rajanya Kritaha. You also understand Brahman Asya Mukham. What does it mean? Brahman Asya Mukham. From my mouth comes Brahma. Asit Bahu Iti Rajanya. From from my from the arms come the Rajanya, the Kshatriya. Okay, hold on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, please go and figure out any Indologist who everybody says that it's an interpolation done to the Rig Veda. Oh, Every that's that's the oh, last you know, thing to throw. It's no, an I'm not saying this. I mean, Wait a second. Yeah. All worth all in all Indologists worth their salt, starting from Max Muller to Indian JNU, Delhi okay. University, everywhere. Okay, the same okay. Thing. Okay, Inter yes. who did the interpolation? Let me. The Brahmins knew the Sanskrit. Nobody else could dare touch the scriptures. Definitely. And I who agree. Did the, and who did the interpolation? And and, exactly. and what about the God? How helpless is the God here who can't even preserve the own text? Anybody, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can come and do interpretation. Okay. You, you interpolation, you want to say that? Yeah, you see, even we know that even Quran is not preserved in its order. Uh, oh, it order is preserved. Of Let's not go there. It is preserved. No, 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 tell me, we can, we can, the last verse. Tell been... me which is the last verse to have been revealed in Quran. You don't know. You uh, don't have an idea. Rohan, see, Rohan, this, is, Rohan. this is what he does. This Rohan, is what he does. Rohan, hold on, hold on. Rohan, Rohan, this is not the subject, brother. Please calm down. We are talking about the caste system in Hinduism. Let's not jump to Quran about its authenticity. We have many debates a bit for earlier. And Brother Mansur also has conducted a debate with uh, J. Smith, uh, and he exposed J. Smith, but, and ha he has proven but, the authenticity of Quran. Sense. So there are many. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, brother, brother, brother. Let's let's get get on to the main topic. Let's not jump. Come on, you're saying you're saying Rigveda, Rigveda interpolated the very, very, you know, the most. The such popular, famous mantra of Rig Veda, of Brahma Asya Mukham, you want to say that that's interpolated. What are you talking about? I mean, have some sincerity at least. If nothing See, else, then interpolation. Every, every, every Indologist has published research papers on that. Please go and figure out in their journals. That's what all I can say. Is that okay? Maybe I can give chance to others who want to defend Hinduism. Yeah, maybe. because you don't have any answer. You do not find the reference for mm -hmm. any Brahmin who doesn't call his child a Brahmin at birth. On the yeah, Be best example. Yeah, yeah the best get... example, best example yeah. um, is Satyakama himself when he asks his mother, mother, um, of what Gotra do I belong to? Mother says, I was in service with many people. I don't know what your Gotra is. See, this is the most awkward statement Wait, a mother I was can. In service with many people? What does that mean? Yeah, that probably she was into some very public service or something, which and, I don't And explain. listen, listen, uh, hearing this. Service, what do you do with your Gotra? Yeah, yeah th that's what. When he wanted to get admission into the Vedic school, he asks uh, his mother, Mom, what's my Gotra? She says, no, I don't know. And yet he and, gets admitted. And yes, what did the Guru admitted. say? And what did the Guru say? You know yes, what? Gotra is Exactly. And Rohan Saxena, what did the Guru say? Please complete the story. What did he yes. declare? That he was a Brahmin. He was none other than Brahmin. This is what Chandogya Upanishad, which you're quoting. He said, now, where did the boy, the boy had not even acquired knowledge. And yet he was declared to be a Brahmin by the Guru. So that means Wait he was second. determined okay. by the birth. You know, the no, it was not this, by birth. This, this new no, 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 it's not by birth. It, it's not, no, no, it's not by birth. Wait a it's second. It's an the guru outright what? lie. The Guru, okay, guru listen, got them. Listen to my explanation. Listen to my explanation. What does the Guru say? The Guru says, by your conviction to speak truth. What is no, that? By your conviction? No, no way, yeah. Okay, no read way, out that no verse. Way. No, it was, that verse. it was simply said the, the boy had no knowledge at all. He didn't know it. You are speaking. No, no, it. please don't lie. You are a Brahmin. Please don't lie. I am not uh, lying. I am not lying. I am okay, only read out that you, verse. Read out I that was, verse 4.4.3. 4.4.3. Read, read out that 4 .4 verse. 4.4.5. You read that for me. I okay. know Satya Kama, you know, this kind of waffling that you are doing, you know, very no easily waffling. taking that example. No waffling. 
Yeah, of course you are doing that. How, this let's person, go. Uh, let's go verse by verse, step by step. Yeah. Are you ready? Prepared for it? Yes. Let's go. But uh, full, but just a sec, just a second, just a second. There are a lot of things that needs to be gone step by step, verse by verse. Don't pick and choose things like that. You hadn't even sorted out what Brother Hashim had put in of the Chandogya Upanishad, the very first verse, which was which was in the last stream also shown to you. First, clarify yes. that. First, clarify yes. that, and then clarify to me which I had given to you from Rig Veda, the very simple aspect of Brahma Asya Mukham Asmi. What is it? The mouth becomes the Brahman, the arms become the Rajanya, the thigh becomes the Vaishya, and Shudra okay. is born okay, from okay. the field. Where you, is the interpolation? The Where okay, is the interpolation the here? You'll get the what answer. is the interpolation? Okay. okay. Now, now, are they saying that the Brahmins are to be born only in India? A Brahmin can be in US, UK, uh, Arabia, wherever he is. So, yeah, but it's based, yes. it's based on the parents, isn't it? Yes, based wherever the, parents, the truthfulness, the truthfulness. Number one, yes, number one chastity, family. chastity, truthfulness. He can be born in Saudi Arabia or England or America, not wherever right. it is. Not, not just a geographic location we are talking about. It's, we are talking about by birth based on the parents. So, if the yes, parents you, are Brahmin, listen to me, is, if the parents are Brahmin, can the child from day one be of a Shudra verific, uh, sorry, classification in the Varna system? From day one. Please understand, he will you get a Brahmin womb. He will get a Brahmin womb. What does that mean? He will get the womb of that mother who is chaste, who is truthful, benevolent, kind, and all these things. Where, yes, so where why, can that be, mother? Is is there, okay, one second. That, one, okay. Listen to this. Are you telling me that the, the womb of every uh, Chandala is evil? Is no, the mother already... Already... Is the mother who is yeah. considered to be untouchable, is she, all of them, you know, let's say there are millions of them, are they all evil? Is that what you're saying? Whoever is lacking the traits of truthfulness, he I is a chandala. I'm talking about the classification. Let's say they have already been classified as a chandala. Okay. Are, uh, they, are they by nature automatically considered to be evil? Who are these chandalas? Chandalas are people who prefer to eat dog meat, according to Bhagavad Gita. You so also like you... cannibal. Remember in one of and the things you had said? A... That's true. That's worse <laughs> than dog meat. Yeah. So, <laughs> you were so, now, you, so meat. now what? That you of a dead man. Of course. Okay, so and, so also, and also, and also, Ro my friend Rohan Saxena, you had said that you know you were saying this this entire thing of truth, chastity, etc. The very aspect where it said in Manusmriti that a Brahmin who is only Brahmin by descent, only only by this one who has neither studied nor performed any other act which is required by Vedas, that Brahmin at king's pleasure can interpret the law to him, can act as a judge for him, but never ever a shudra, no matter how learned he may be. And this is mentioned in chapter 8, verse 20. What are you talking okay. about? That you, you, you have the conviction and, and you, are the, you have the knowledge. Sorry, okay, so there are two people waiting in the back chat. Yeah. Okay, so then I may have to leave. You okay. haven't verified yourself yet. If you, sure. you got one minute to verify yourself, genius and Dr. Vidal. If you do not, I'll have to remove you. Okay, so it's up to you. Yeah, okay. sir, maybe they will defend my religion better. <laughs> I'm a poor servant. Yeah, but do you believe are, in religion? <laughs> in no, one of the streams, you were dazed. enough to show their face even. Oh, I'm a true Hindu. Jai Shri Ram. Thank you. Namaste, sir. Thank you very much. At Ashok, least to reveal sir. that. Take Thank care. You, <laughs> Take care of right. yourself, brother. Thank you. All right, so... Dr. Vedant, do you have the courage to show your face or you want to be removed as well? Because I, I don't mind calling the Muslims if the Hindus are not brave enough. Okay, I guess so. You're not brave enough, so I'll have to remove you, sorry. Uh, genius. Come and look at that. If nothing else, then the very, you know, initially they used to say, oh, get us Vedas. We don't want Puranas. Now that you've got them Vedas, you say, no, 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 that's also got interpolated. You couldn't even show the manuscript of that. Amazing. And you're talking about Amazing. zero okay. percent of sincerity, zero percent. And then you talk about chastity. Right. Truth it looks like the Hindus are afraid to come online uh, on the panel. So I will open the floor for the Muslims if they wish to come or Christians or whoever you are. Doesn't matter. Alhamdulillah. So Hindus and non-Hindus all are welcome now. Unless somebody guides themselves in Muslim name and comes and you know then asks. No, that's fine. Everybody has to verify whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim. You need to verify. If you don't verify, you won't be allowed on the panel. Genius, stop coming if you don't want, if you're not, you know, brave enough to even show your face. 
Come on, have some courage, guys. Like Bunty, you too, you need to show your face if you want to come online. Hurry on, you need to show your face as well. Okay, so um, Abdul Hakim, you need to show your face to us. Uh, sorry, uh, Hariyom, I missed that. Can you please do it again? I can't see your full face. Need to show you. This Hariyom again, the same guy who came in the last stream. I don't know. It's the same name. Yeah. Right. Okay, Hariyom, we'll let you in. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to show your face. Okay, go on. Oh. You are the same, same person Tansha. from yeah. He's from that. We yeah. will give him another chance. Everybody deserves a second chance. Uh, Harry, you want to unmute yourself and problem is the language, the and still you want to come here. I don't okay. know if people listening to the stream, but uh, we hope you were and give us your um, I don't know. Just summarize for us what you think of the stream and what your views are. Harry, are you there? Have you come to make a short uh, this time? I have not watched a full stream. Okay. I, I have not watched full stream. stream. This time, going back to your phone. How long? So how long? I have just. Uh, I was just saying. Uh, I just saw uh, Rohan and uh, all of you guys are talking. Okay. So you just saw the last few minutes then, basically. Yeah. Okay. So what is your? Yeah. You come from a Hindu background, right? Yeah. Okay. What is your your jati or your varna? I am Brahman. Okay. So for you, uh, what is your understanding? Do you think in the Indian? I society, am Brahman. Did you get me? Yes. Yes. I know. I heard you are Brahman. In your view, do you think there's discrimination amongst the Hindus based on caste? Somebody is whispering you the answer. Am I audible both? to you? Yes, yeah, you are. Audible. That's fine, Sister Swati. Let him answer. That's fine. So, Hari, do you think there's discrimination in the Hindu society based on caste? Yeah. Okay. What are the discriminations that you have observed? Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that uh, uh, we do not allow them to enter the temple. So and, when you uh, say we, you mean the Brahmins don't allow... Uh, we don't even take... Okay, you don't allow whom to enter the yeah. temple? Yeah. You don't allow whom to The Shudras? What are Shudras, you Shudras. Are you? You're very, I don't know, reserved for some reason. So what, is that still prevalent? The, are the Shudras still not allowed in the temples, like in the 21st century? Yeah. So much of thinking, and in monologues you're saying... No, is maybe maybe the voice is lacking. Sis, yeah, maybe he, lacking. So, uh, Swati, maybe, the, maybe the voice is lacking. It's okay, let him, okay. Let him answer. Hari, do you think this discrimination is something that the people themselves, you know, from their own cultural tradition, or is it something that the it's based on the religion and the scriptures of India? It is based on the scripture of the Hinduism. Okay. And what is your opinion about that discrimination? Should th should this be allowed based on the religion, or should you are you against it? Uh, I am allowing discrimination. Oh, so you, you are condoning the discrimination? Allowing. You're not, you're not condemning it, you're okay. condoning it. Yeah. yeah. Allowing. Why, why, why uh, yeah, I am it, allowing, not condemning. Why do you think it's, it's okay to allow discrimination uh, just based on where this human being is born? Uh, uh, because uh, due to his previous uh, birth, uh, so in his previous birth, he did uh, bad deeds. Okay, but the thing is, he's a human being, you know. His previous birth, he doesn't even remember. Let's say even for uh, the no matter the previous birth. No matter when you are born, 
in a particular family, automatically you're assigned this, what do you say, tag or label because of the past. Yes, in the case of the Chandalas who are considered to be untouchables. Yes. Why is this label since birth? Because you have no idea what they did. In, even you as a Brahmin have no idea what they did in the past life. Yeah, we do not have any idea, but uh, as, uh, as per our, my scripture, we know that uh, those who were born in the family of Sudra, they must have a committed uh, big sin in their past life. Okay. All right. No problem. Wow. Uh, at least you're, you're open and sincere about this. Ma'am, you got any questions for Harry? What did you say, sir? No, no, I'm asking Sam or Swati, have you got any questions for me? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Brother Hari, I just want to ask if, uh, uh, as you are a Brahmin, and uh, do you have any Shudra to serve you? Uh, no, there is no any Shudra for me to serve. Okay, if you have a Shudra, so do he have a, a right to have a property? or that property belongs to you. If you have a, if, suppose if a Shudra is working under you and he possesses a property, so does that property belong to Shudra or belongs to you? Obviously belong to me. How so? Because my scripture says. Okay, so you don't find any, uh, any, any wrong in this? No, no any wrong in this, because uh, he has committed a wrong deed in his past life. And how awesome. is he going to recompensate for that? Does he remember what, what wrong he committed in the past life? How is he going to compensate for that? We don't have the memory of the past lives, no? Uh, how does he, how, how so should he seek repentance? Uh, uh, there is a duty of higher caste uh, if he can at least guide him. But the higher caste are not supposed to be in touch with the, with the lower castes. And also, why is it that the God who you know whom you believe in, uh, one, uh, also I would like to know uh, which, which God do you believe in? I believe in Brahma. Brahma, okay. Uh, so, uh, where is it that it has been said by Brahma that he has committed the sin and the higher caste can correct him and guide him? And also, how does the higher caste know what sin did he commit in the previous lifetime? The correction has to be according to the error that you have made. Don't you see so many flaws which are there in this entire premise? So, uh, if there is chance of loss or... Uh, so, I will say that anyone uh, should not go against the scripture to commit sin. At first, he has to uh, follow his uh, all sets of rules mentioned in the scripture. Then there is no chance that you will get born in the Sudra family. Okay, okay so uh, brother, do you consider... Just one question. Do you consider yes. Indian constitution to be higher or the Manusmiti to be higher? India, uh, because uh, as we are uh, everyone is living in secular country and uh, as I said before that uh, article 25 to 28 no, mentioned and that no, everyone has... No, no, no. Uh, I'm talking about... Yeah. Yes, yes. I understand that. I understand that, brother. But as you being a Brahmin, yeah. so you said that uh, you you follow the scripture and you don't see, you don't see anything wrong in following the scripture. So I'm asking, do you consider uh, yeah. your scripture higher or superior to be the, to uh, uh, compared to Indian Constitution? When it is compared because to Indian, Indian Constitution, Constitution, my scripture is higher. It is higher because it okay. is given by our Arisi Manu. Okay, but Indian Constitution talks about like uh, equal justice. Brahmin and Shudra yeah, should so, be treated equally. If anyone committed crime, the punishment should be same, same for the Shudra and Brahmin. But it, according to Manu Smithi, it's completely different. Absolutely. So do you consider do you consider Indian constitution to be uh, no law for you or a bad law for you? 
And in fact, if you uh, follow Indian if, constitution, you are going if, against the scripture. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am going against, against the scripture. scripture. So the same Manu Smriti says that if I am feeling uh, 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 that my uh, any country or any constitution going against the Manu Smriti, I will have to leave that area. I have to leave that country. So um, exactly, otherwise, that, exactly. So what are you doing? So are you in India still? <laughs> yeah, I'm in India still, and I will be living in India. Why would you be living will you in be India? Living, <laughs> will you be living or leaving India? Uh, I am living in India because there is no uh, alternative option. So it is our uh, what can I say, majburi to but live in India. But then under this majburi of yours, you, you are can always go to Pakistan. They don't have such a rule. <laughs> <laughs> and also because of this, Harifa, you know, I'm because just kidding. Yeah, you don't need to take. <laughs> yeah. And because okay, and look, be one thing I like about Harry is at least he's straightforward. You know, he's honest. He is. He's, he respects his his scripture, uh, whatever it is. But the fact that no matter how, how living in the twenty first century and discriminating based on birth, uh, it's it's appalling. Honestly, you know, as a human being, you have no right to judge another human being from the day they are born. No, this but the question, the you know, justice anyone can do, just that based on the patterns that they're born to or the family they're born to. Just based on that, you have already assumed that in the past life they were evil, so we are not going to respect them, even as human beings. They're considered to be untouchables, the chandalas. Yeah, agree? the chandalas. Yeah, I believe that chandalas are untouchable and they must not be respected. Why do you consider them to be even not worthy of to be touched? Because they have committed uh, uh, bad deeds in their past life. But you don't what know? bad sin? Yeah, you, you don't, don't know, know about it. You have no idea about their past life. Uh, uh, because even he has no idea about his past life. Exactly. So that's the entire so thing. How would you correct? Why you are judging them when neither you nor they have any idea about their past life? Why you are not even consider them to be worthy of being touched, untouchable? Why was he born in that uh, Chandala? He should not have born there Did in Chandala family. Did he have a choice? Did you have a choice where you were born? Uh, must maybe God may have uh, given me the good uh, this better opportunity to born in the Brahman family. So I uh, no, get birth asking, in this family. Have a choice. Not what God. God always does what He wants. Uh, I must you, have uh, done uh, good deeds in my last life. Second, how do you know? I that? must have uh, 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 done good deeds in my last life. As per my God. scripture, that if you have done good deeds, you will get born in Brahman family. It's not based on just any Tom, Dick or Harry. So what about all these Hindus who say that there is no discrimination in the society? Are they telling lies? Hari, are you there? He's also asking, I think, from all, somebody. All the Hindus who... What to say? Are, are actually denying that there is any discrimination, like the video I played earlier. Do you consider them to be telling lies that when you know there is discrimination, when you yourself have conceded about this discrimination based on the birth, do you think all these Hindus who are in denial about these discriminations, are they telling lies? Right, we got chaos in the background. Can you please switch on your camera for verification? Oh, please, the entire channel is going to come here? No, no, that's you fine. And then that's chaos. Good. That's good, that's good. That's good. That's good. That they are sincere. We have no issues with them yeah. coming on. Where has Hariyom gone? He's gone? Yeah, I haven't removed him, so... Probably He's gone. Out my there. my basic query okay. with you know question to him was that uh, if he was... Banti, so I'm going to bring you in next because... Do you want to keep your camera on? It's entirely up to you. Why didn't he emigrate? If he's so true to the scriptures and he agrees that the Indian constitution can... Majburi. Majburi, yes. Fine, sir, but I can't say much in English. As much as you can say, it's okay. Okay, sir. So, sir, look, our Hindu culture is discrimination. But... Say it in English. Are you able to say even a little bit in English? Because our audience is English. Okay, uh, there are uh, discrimination in uh, Hindu religion, but uh, that is not very vast. Yeah. Uh, means that 
means ki uh, in uh, not, are you saying there's only a little bit of disc discrimination not much may 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 be matlab uh, i belongs to a lower uh, background matlab uh, backward caste but uh, i didn't feel anywhere ki matlab aisa kuch feel hua ho ki mere ko discriminate kiya gaya mandir jaane se are you in a city where do you live uh, right now i am in chandigarh sir yeah but in a city i belongs to patna i belong to patna my is native that, place is, is patna a, bihar is it a small town or is it a city no uh, patna is b grade uh, uh, metro city aap keh sakte hain you oh, can say yeah, yeah. so it's a city so you will not see as much discrimination as you would see no no it uh, okay okay matlab you are saying ki in villages there so, are yeah more no i um, means my uh, matlab fathers uh, native place वहां भी हमारा आना जाना होता है मतलब क्या बोले सच्चाई से बोले तो बिल्कुल नहीं हम आज तक फील नहीं किए मे बी बट दे ऐसा कुछ हमने कभी बताया नहीं गया Okay, so which what is your background? Is it Shudra or is it something else? अब Shudra भी नहीं कह सकते लेकिन ये है कि जो चार grade है in India की क्या बोलते हैं Rajput, Brahman, Lala and Bhumiyar इनसे तो belong नहीं करता हूँ जो you are you are outcast you are Dalit are you Dalit? नहीं not Dalit I am in OBC. What what is it called? What is your caste called? It other falls within Shudras. Does other, it fall other, within Shudra? No, no, not Shudra. Uh, a level up, a level up from Shudra. Okay. If you're if you're seeing in terms of scheduled caste, you may say it's a different category altogether. But oh. within the four four Varna Ashram system, which is there, it, we didn't it, belong to that. We didn't it, belong to that. So you didn't belong to Shudra. You mean to say you were outside? And brother Bunty, yes. Yeah. I, I, I am in between uh, uh, Vaishva and Shudra. You can say that. Okay. Because there are many castes. There are many castes. It's, it's probably some. It's Shuta. 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 Yes. Yeah. No, Shuta. Yeah, Shuta. Yeah, no, Shuta. No, no. There's no term. So, no. आपके या कोई तो टर्म होगा ना आपके ठीक है आप आपने बताया कि यू हैव have... जो 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 आप आप अगर फॉर्म भरते हैं अगर किसी भी उसका तो उसमें एक ऑप्शन ओबीसी बीसी1 एससी एसटी तो एससी एसटी द थिंग इज दैट दे हैव मेड नाउ दैट दे हैव मेड नाउ ओके एनीवे लेट्स 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 नॉट गेट टू मच सो हैव यू बीन लिसनिंग टू द स्ट्रीम और यू जॉइंट रिसेंटली नो नो अभी अर्लियर जो बंदे थे जो मनुस्मृति में बोल रहे थे कि वी विल मतलब मनुस्मृति अब वो तो वो तो खैर ऐसा है नहीं और ऐसा हो भी नहीं सकता सो व्हाट व्हाट डू यू यू थिंक इज योर व्यू अबाउट अगर सप्रेस होता है दैट इज डिनाई बाय सनातनी ये तो डॉट श्योर है कोई भी चीज है जो कि ह्यूमैनिटी के दिस इज माय व्यू अ ह्यूमन व्यू सिंपल नहीं तो वो वो गलत बोल रहे थे वो गलत बोल रहे थे मतलब ऐसा है ही नहीं कि भाई ह्यूमैनिटी से ऊपर कुछ हो ही नहीं सकता और हमारे मतलब जो हम अभी तक पढ़े हैं या जितना हम जानते हैं चाहे रामायण हो महाभारत हो जहाँ किसी को दबाया गया हो चिरहरण हुआ हो जहां जहां जो जो गलत है उसको हम डिनाई करें सिंपल सी बात ये है मतलब हमारा धर्म अगर ये सनातन में है so, या ना वट इज दर्पज ऑफ योर स्क्रिप्चर इफ एवरी थिंग दैट गोज अगेंस्ट योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग फ्रॉम द मॉडर्न इज व्यू यू जस्ट रिजेक्टेड वट इज दर्पज ऑफ योरिप्चर एग्जैक्टली exactly, स्क्रिप्चर का पर्पस हो सकता है सर कि जिस टाइम जिस तरीके का माहौल होगा उस समय वैसा बंदा उस तरीके का स्क्रिप्चर लिखा होगा उन्होंने ओके okay, उसको रिफॉर्म करना उसके आगे के जनरेशन का काम है okay. जैसे हमारा आपका 
what about jaise aap hum you know that means that, that people that means god can make shudras, mistakes people who are shudras they no 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 god 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 can exactly so the god can make mistake within the within hinduism you mean to say god can make mistakes no no not ma'am hinduism to kuch hai nahi na aap pehle is cheez ko na pakde aap sirf insaniyat pe baat kare no but the thing is the thing is that what would you call this then we can't call it hinduism sanatan dharma again is an adjective what is the name to this nameless you know philosophy come theology what is the name of it dekhiye okay, i belong matlab basically i belong to hindus ठीक है सनातनी आप जिसको बोले हम उसको बिलोंग करते हैं लेकिन इस सनातनी में हमें इतना इख्तियार है या हमें आई हैव सच पावर कि हम किसी भी स्कल्पचर को मना कर सकें या उसको फॉलो कर सकें ये हमारे में because the thing well, is what you are saying no that, where is this from okay. yeah because what you are saying in fact the scripture goes totally against that you know the bhagavad gita which everybody most of the hindus they believe in they bhagavad gita itself would say that let the scriptures be your authority in determining what should be done and what should not be done you can't go with your own rationale and this is something which is very clearly mentioned in bhagavad gita's chapter 16 so uh, same same goes for even manusmriti manusmriti also says this that you know he shall not honor no, no, even no, no. with speech i agree agree totally yeah. agree to you I totally agree to you lekin agar hum us cheez ko nahi mante hain to hum sanatani nahi rahe hain aisa bhi kahin nahi dikhta आप समझिए बात को मैं यही बात बता रहा हूँ की मैं कर्मा को ईश्वर को छोड़ देता है वो वो सीधा नर्क में जाएगा नो नो आई हेवन डिनाई की ईश्वर नहीं है या ईश्वर को हम नहीं मानते No, no, it's not about denying. It's about not agreeing to, not abiding by. It's not denial of the God. It's yeah. about not abiding by the laws of the God. It seems so like laws, laws, laws of the God. No, laws, laws of the God. Where are they? Here, where are they written? Laws of the God. What if? Isn't Manuswati the entire social law code? Yeah, Bhagavad Gita. No, that. Okay. That. 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 उसको उसमें लिखा हुआ तो है कि जो मानेगा वो आ, सही है जो नहीं मानेगा वो गलत है इस चीज का भी जजमेंट करने के लिए किसको कहा गया हमें कहा गया है ना नो इट इज बेसिकली वेरी क्लियरली सेड इफ इट्स लाइक गॉड इज सेइंग काइंडली आई रिक्वेस्ट गॉड इज यू नो रिक्वेस्टिंग दैट प्लीज यू नो गो बाय द अथॉरिटी ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स सो इफ यू आर नॉट सो यू आर नॉट अबाइडिंग इफ यू आर नॉट अबाइडिंग बाय दैट ठीक है इसका भी इख्तियार हमको है कि नहीं who gives you that's what i want to ask who gives you that permission to go against the scripture when god himself says that don't go against it abide by the scriptures then who gives you it's a, yes. it's basically our own desires our own reasoning so is the reasoning of your superior than god that's the question yeah. then yeah you can say so, that Okay, okay, so I you would think, say okay. I, I think we should just leave it here. We're just going wrong. Okay, so then we come right. to the conclusion yeah. here that the reasoning of us uh, of of one of the Sanatani person is higher than the God Himself, right? Because exactly. But, but, you know, if, if, if if there is any contradiction against humanity, yeah, but I am the God. Who defines humanity? Because my reasoning could be different from yours. Third person's reasoning could be different no. from second. हार्मिंग 
द हार्म थिंग इज नॉट अ सिंपल थिंग अगर वो हार्म मेरे को पहुंच रहा है तो उससे किसको फायदा हो समाज को हो रहा है या कोई बंदा सिर्फ अपने मतलब के लिए मेरे को हार्म कर रहा है ये no, सब कुछ सिचुएशन का जो आई एम सेइंग इफ यू हार्म योरसेल्फ व्हाट इज इन योर हैंड व्हाट्स इन योर हैंड आई विल हार्म माय सेल्फ आपके हाथ में क्या पकड़ा है लाइटर 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 व्हाई डू यू नीड अ लाइटर मतलब आई एम गोइंग टू स्मोक एंड इट्स रिटन ऑन द पैकेट ऑफ द स्मोक ऑफ द सीक्रेट फॉर योर हेल्थ Suppose, suppose hmm. in a country there are one 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 lakh people living, and out of that, ninety thousand people are smoking, and ninety ninety thousand people are getting cancer and getting died. Hmm. So, who is getting affected? The humanity, the human kind, right? The you population smoke, is decreasing. Who is causing this? Sir, 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 sir. Smoke, there is secondary smoke which which harms other people. Do you know that? Yeah. Exactly. Now, now, here secondary or passive smoking is not happening, sir. I am alone. and i am in matlab uh, certain room jahan pe ki dikkat na ho are you telling me you don't smoke outside i always uh, smoke outside and alone matlab ye koshish to ye rehti hai when you smoke outside there is secondary smoke going to harm somebody else ab so you are you're harming you are harming humanity in a way you are breaking your about, own principle yeah. and what about harming against humanity you said i am against it but when it comes to yourself then you want to change the principle again you see what this is what in in the quran allah says you made yourself as a god based on your whims and your desires your whims and desires are your god mm-hmm. this is exactly the example you have given us here panti to ab unka kya kahenge jo muslim bhi hain aur cigarette bhi pi rahe hain daru bhi pi rahe hain absolutely wrong whether they, they are muslim or not at least they know if you harm yourself deliberately and when i don't mean just taking drugs or cigarettes or alcohol I mean, even people who overindulge in food, who eat a lot of fatty food, lot of sugary food, all these things. If we know that they harm ourselves, then you shouldn't do that because your body has a right over you. God gave you a body for a reason. Do you think you are misusing? Sir, इस हिसाब से तो आप भी जैसे अभी इतने बजे तक स्ट्रीम कर रहे हैं. This is also harm to your body. No, it's not. How is it harming your body? I got a very comfortable chair. I bought a chair so that my back is not harmed. And, yes, sir, and, sir. and moreover, his timing is different. His timing is different. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's timing is different here because everybody belongs to different country. No. Yeah, we have so only been more than three hours now, so nobody yeah. harming ourselves. But but okay, but 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 everybody has has his biological clock. So if he is but not ev- but not everywhere it's night. Time. Not everywhere it's night. No, people belong no, to different but, time but, zones here. Agree, agree. But we are not doing. But we are not. But we are not doing streams every day like you are smoking every time. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah. So anyway, look, Bandi, by all, I, all we are saying is that your body has a right over you. God has given you a body for a reason. Okay, that, that's all. Again, but uh, all we are saying is to use crack, it. Crack, crack, use it in crack, a crack, way. Crack, 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 crack. Sir, he, uh, uh, being a Sanatani, I mean, there is no such thing that there is so much discrimination. Hai, but people are facing such thing. We will not say that. But uh, the day. Going on and on, ये कम ही हो रहा है. It is not gaining. मतलब ये reduce ही हो रहा है. The discrimination is increasing, not decreasing. In fact, the discrimination has now moved to America and the UK. You know, the if your boss is a brown. वहाँ का तो हमको idea नहीं है, but in India, I don't. इसलिए मैं बता रहा हूँ ना आपको एक मिनट सुनो. If your boss in the United States, you know, this is actually verified by lots of um, cases. 
In fact, in Seattle, they recently legislated to ban the cost system and specifically yes. Windows ones perpetrating this. Because if you're, if you're working for Google, for example, yes, and your boss is uh, a Brahmin and you are a Shudra, he will not give you a promotion or a raise in salary, even if you deserved it. I'm not so saying they're all like that. I'm not saying they're all like that. I'm saying there is discrimination. And this is coming. This has been exported outside. So it is increasing. It's not decreasing, my friend. All right. Any also, just one know? last question before you yeah, leave, sure. brother. Uh, one last thing uh, my, uh, I would like to ask. You had said that, yes, uh, you know, the God in Sanatan Dharm can be wrong, can be imperfect. And you said that, you know, we, through our own reasoning, uh, we make corrections, etc. Uh, where, you know, where, where somewhere your own reasoning denied that self-harm uh, is, is bad for you. Uh, that's a question. But let's not go into that. I want to ask then if the God if the God can be imperfect, can be wrong in Sanatan Dharma, can make mistakes, then why to worship that God? Why do you worship that God then? satisfaction. What, satis what satisfaction do you derive out of worshipping somebody who's wrong? discussion no, I'm not assuming at all because I've seen people are so there's one one of the guests who came from so many months. He he's never changed his stance. So we are not assuming things are changing like that. But I'm just curious to know that, you know, God, why, 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 why are you doing this? We are doing it to bring out, you know, just to bring out the expression, yeah. the viewpoints to exactly. everybody across. Yeah, exactly. So, Every... so what I'm so what I'm maybe, asking maybe, you, maybe, maybe sometime. I will मतलब worship करते करते हो सकता है कि एक time सच्चा भगवान मिल जाए जैसे आप ढूंढ रहे so no I'm not seeking I've we've, I've already found but the thing is when the 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 entire thing is I am that seeking you, right now I am seeking you are seeking so that means the scriptures have yet not given the answers right the Hindu I, scriptures I, I have already told that मैंने आपको पहले भी बताया कि अगर ऐसा scripture में है भी और कहीं पे कंट्राडिक्शन है भी तो उस चीज को हम डिनाई कर सकते हैं इतना बूता है हमारे या but हमारे would, but but why would god bring out contradictions why would god bring out errors why would god bring out mistakes and why would he be imperfect what is the difference between what is the difference between human and god then human exactly. is imperfect and so is god so why would exactly. you, why would we worship somebody who's imperfect exactly यही चीज खोजने की जो कोशिश है वही सनातन है भगवान किसी को मिलता नहीं है उसको ढूंढना पड़ता है अपने आप में और हम इन दैट प्रोसेस इन दैट प्रोसेस ऑफ सीकिंग इन दैट प्रोसेस ऑफ सीकिंग यू नो अ पर्सन कैन कांस्टेंटली गो ऑन द रॉन्ग ट्रैक गेट मिसगाइडेड गेट इनटू रॉन्ग कंपनी सो एंड देन मे बी वन डे इवन डाई विदाउट इवन गेटिंग द आंसर सो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ लाइफ इज दैट इज इट इन यू टाइम आपके नजर में ये आपके नजर बिकॉज़ यू आर सेइंग नो दैट इट्स इट्स समथिंग व्हिच इज सीकिंग यू हैव नॉट येट गॉट द आंसर एंड द स्क्रिप्चर्स आर एंड द स्क्रिप्चर्स आर नॉट रियली रिवीलिंग द आंसर द गॉड इज नॉट देयर टू गिव द आंसर ऐसा नहीं है राइट स्क्रिप्चर राइट टाइम पे मिलेगा तो उसका आंसर भी मिलेगा अभी आप जैसे but all the scriptures are there in front of you all of the scriptures of hinduism exactly. are there abhi, in front main wahi bataye ki aapko abhi hum contradict kyun nahi kar pa rahe hain isliye nahi kar pa rahe hain kyunki abhi hum sab scripture ke through gaye nahi agar aapke jo manushriti mein jo aapne bataya ki bhai jo brahman hai wo mukh se nikla hai ye yahan se nikla hai uska exact meaning agar humko pata hota to i will main aapse conversation karta abhi main wahan tak gaya nahi इसलिए मैं बट इमेजिन थिंक अबाउट इट इवन विदाउट नोइंग द एग्जैक्ट मीनिंग दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच इज बीइंग प्रैक्टिस्ड थ्रू आउट द कंट्री मेरे साथ नहीं हुआ इसलिए हम नहीं बोल सकते ना मैं यही बात तो बोल रहा हूं कि मैंने आते ही बोला कि भाई ऐसा हमारे साथ तो आज तक नहीं हुआ लेकिन ऐसा भी नहीं कहता हूं कि नहीं होता आप बस आप 5 मिनट देर हो गए बंटी भाई आप सिर्फ 5 मिनट देर हो गए नहीं तो आपके साथ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन कर देते थे हरि भाई नहीं नहीं मैं मैं इसीलिए उस समय उस समय एक्चुअली सर ने बताया कि भाई आप कैमरा ऑन करो अब मेरे को थोड़ा सा आइडिया नहीं था कि यहाँ पे आते कैसे हम पहली बार आए थे वैसे हम वो क्या बोलते हैं साहिल आहिल के लाइफ पे रहते हैं हम कभी गए नहीं है आप आज पहली बार ही आए हैं आपके लाइफ पे ओके एक्स मुस्लिम साहिल लाइफ में हैव बीन देयर साहिल समीर हेटेड वो क्या बोलते हैं ओके ऑल द इस्लामोफोब्स हुआ आई इनवाइट यू ऑन माय चैनल एज वेल ब्रदर 
<laughs> please visit my channel as well join my stream yeah. as well when is, when is your next stream sam wednesdays wednesday okay so come on wednesday bunty bye on sam stallone's channel but uh, thank you for your participation we really appreciate your opinions yeah. uh, take thank care you. thank you so much bunty bye all right see this is this is what i like you know share your opinion openly you know no yeah. need to be nasty just be friendly and yes. we can all learn from each other yes right so right. we got abdul hakim here abdul hakim oops <laughs> <laughs> yeah assalamu alaikum how are you guys wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam alhamdulillah uh guys i want to ask you like uh, i have this uh, indian friend i used to work with and he's a uh, hindu and um he's kind of his faith is kind of believe he's god in all kind of physical things are god so and i keep i always have this like debates not debates it's only like a debate from one side from my side only you no know, i'm trying to invite him to islam but the thing is he's not like he's not showing any kind of uh, like he's not giving a step forward to have a debate or discussion with me about it so what do you think the best way to get him into thinking and you know like giving back and trying to figure out the truth it has to be two ways and you can't expect somebody who is not willing to even listen to you to give dawa to them you know so maybe i don't know give them a quran in their language which they can read and maybe sometimes you know they can just in their privacy open the book when they're bored one day you know and maybe allah gives them it through reading it so simple things like gifting them with a book like the quran the translation of the quran or some other stomach book which you think will benefit them uh can go a long way if they're not willing to listen so like uh if he doesn't want he doesn't want like you have no like uh some kind of uh, why no formula if that's what you're looking for oh yeah i'm looking like for the come from like he's a good friend of mine you know like i'm trying yeah, like if he's a good friend of then try to you know like you don't have to give him a lecture you know like sometimes when there is an incident or something you know say we respect in islam we are taught to respect our neighbors you know to have good relation regardless of their uh, of their faith or color or creed we are not discriminating anyone in islam based on their um race or something like that you know bring up something that you think will be uh um, that will break the ice or start a conversation he's your friend so you should know what his interests are and what he doesn't like for example oh, okay. there's no fixed formula the idea of dawa is to do it in a way with wisdom and which will benefit uh them without them being turned off by the dawa that you give oh yeah true uh i have a second question and hinduism is there some kind of a messenger that they got sent like from god like from allah you know not like a messenger that got sent to them and they, like it got corrupted and it become like as it is now sorry say that again i didn't quite catch it and i'm saying like uh, that they had like a messenger from god and they changed the the box to what is it like right now are you talking about the hindus yes did you have like a messenger from so they don't they don't actually believe like us in the rasul or in a nabi they believe that they have rishis who when they meditate they connect somehow to the the spiritual god and that's how they gain knowledge so it's it's quite different to jibril bringing the revelation to a to a messenger like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like to musa alaihi salam like to isa alaihi salam okay it's very different it's not a revelation it's more like an inspiration if you want to call it that so there is no connection between it and god like allah no they do believe in god but they don't have a revelation they don't believe in revelations like the way we do i mean like in in the start like in the beginning of hinduism like the first person who came up with the uh, hinduism was it some kind of revelation? we don't know who that is <laughs> oh. so in hinduism you know the i think it's probably the british who have put all these different religions under one umbrella called hinduism hinduism if you look at it today uh, and even back then they always had different sects which believed in different gods even for example they have a sect called vaishnavism which believes vishnu is a supreme god 
We have another one called Shaivism, who believes Shiva is the uh, Supreme God. There's a third one that's called Shaktism, which believes Sh the goddess Shakti is the Supreme Goddess. Do you understand? So like yeah. us, you know, we believe in Islam, we have sects too, but they believe Allah is the Supreme God, regardless of which sect you're talking about. Okay, <laughs> that's too many. <laughs> yeah, it's, Hinduism, you cannot look at it with the lens of from an Abrahamic faith. You cannot. It's a completely different uh, identity, a different methodology, a different belief. In fact, the Hindus disagree with each other about the belief, even in the Supreme God, who it is. Okay, so it's much more complicated than you think. But once you understand the basics, then uh, things do fall in place. Oh, sure, uh, thank you guys and the uh, Jazakumullah khair ala in oh, yeah, for your time I for doing and how it work, you know, like I know that you guys don't get paid and stuff, like it's amazing guys. You know, yeah. Where are you calling from, Abdul Hakim? Uh, I'm a Moroccan, but I live currently in Dubai. In Dubai, okay, yeah, I'm sure there are lots of Hindus in Dubai. They got a few temples there as well. And in yeah. fact, they're building a large one right now as we speak. In Dubai, also in Bahrain, yeah. there are quite a few temples, the Hindus. In Dubai. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right, Abdul Hakim, you take care, brother. Keep us in the doors, inshallah. Yeah. Salam. inshallah. Thank you, yes. Bye, Mike. Right. right. Uh, looks like Hariba is back. I wonder what he wants. Okay, I'm going to bring Kios in. Let give him some opportunity. Uh, the others who haven't verified in the background, can you please verify you guys got one minute. Uh, or I'm removing you. Thank you, Mahal. So, sir, sir, my English is not that fluent again. So no, that can't be an excuse. That was just one time thing. It can't be an, a thing that you, you need to speak I'm in not the language. To you, please, please. Yeah, sure. Look at that. Look, Look at hold the on, cheekiness. Nice. It's okay. It's okay. Don't, don't, sir. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, if you come here, chaos, you need to respect the panelists. And if you don't yeah. want to respect them, then go to another no. stream. Uh, I, I'm just talking about the basics. I don't. I'm not that fluent in speaking English. Is this English. the way? Is this what your Sanatan tells you? Just, tell just, you just to one speak? second. Just one second. Yeah. So chaos. Look, speak mm -hmm. freely. Whatever you know. Nobody's an expert here. All right. So feel okay. free to talk. But one thing I want you to do is please respect the panelists, including Sister Swati. She's part of the panel. So mm -hmm. let's respect each other, and then we can have a more productive discussion. Okay. And by the way, why so much hatred with to me, uh, chaos? Do you want to make another live stream, another reaction stream? Um, just leave the topic. Acha, mera sabse pehla sawal hai. The language has to be English, please. English, English, not English. Uh, it can't be an excuse, you know, for everybody now. Okay. Yeah, we. Is that what he's saying? Brother, brother, it's already a question for you. Do you do you believe in the caste system? Uh. I believe in Varn Vivastha, not caste system. What's the difference? So can you so, explain what's the difference between the caste system and the Varna system? That's a very Varna easy system. thing to now make a segregation between the two. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I, I believe in that uh, uh, if if my deeds will decide my Varna, if I'm a fighter, I'm a Kshatriya, I'm, if I'm a teacher or a doctor, then I'm a Brahman. If I'm doing some kind of business, then I'm Vashya. And if I'm uh, mm -hmm. like uh, doing uh, farming or supporting the like, uh, like I'm becoming the backbone of the society, then I'm uh, Shudra. So, where did, where is where did which, where, in which scripture is it just, written just, that caste just is just different from Varna? Sorry, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. so Manu Smriti yeah. chapter number 10, yeah. verse number 65 says that your knowledge will decide you will be Brahman or Shudra. Manu Smriti chapter number 9, verse number 335 says Janna Jayate Shudra, which means everyone is Shudra when they are born. And there are many slokas like that. If you will go to the Bhagavad Gita, there is a Chaturvarnan Maya Srishtan Gurna Karma Vivaha. Which I had already explained, which I had already explained. It's tied with yeah. your karma okay, yes. and also with your guna. Okay, yes. okay, okay. And another, another thing, another thing. Uh, when Mahabharata was introduced, it was introduced in 24,000 shlokas. And right now, uh, there is one lakh same shlokas. Same old arguments. More. Yeah, same old arguments. No, no, no. Just, just listen to me. Kyo, 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 sorry, 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 brother. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you give me that? Can Can you give me that Manusmriti verse which we have quoted? Uh, Manusmriti chapter number ten, verse number sixty-five. What it says? Uh, uh, your Your knowledge will define that uh, you will be Brahman or a Shudra. Okay, go ahead. 
Let me pull it out. Yes, I got a question for you. Are you telling me that Hari is wrong? You heard Hari earlier, mm. right? You were, yeah, you were he, he is no. right now. The the basics of uh, uh, <laughs> most of the Hindus are not that cleared. And uh, right now, I, I have a question for uh, yeah, like so Hari, uh, how much Hari, I, brought, I brought chaos. Hari, chaos let me read. You are, yeah, yeah, yeah. You Please correct him. Brother Hashim, yeah. Just brother yeah. Hashim, brother Hashim, said. just a minute, just a minute, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chaos, uh, mm -hmm. the verse which you have given, the Manusmiti chapter 10, verse number 65, it doesn't talk about the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Let me read out the verse. The Shudra attends okay. the position of the Brahmana, and Brahmana sings. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. No, you have, no, you have spoken uh, in know, English. You have, sir, sir, no, sir, 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 you have spoken in English. You have given a translation, right? You have spoken in English, right? Uh, I have spoken you in English. You haven't quoted any Sanskrit word. Uh, uh, sir. That does not define. If I will write a book today, I will write any rubbish thing about that. Uh, or on any let, me, let me read it out. Let me read it out. At, let, me, at least let me read it out. Read the, let me read out the translation. It's done by a Sanskrit scholar, not by any Tony Harry. The he? Chudra attains the position. Ganga, Ganga Naja. Not Max Muller. Ganga okay. Naja. A well-known mm -hmm. Sanskrit scholar. Mm -hmm. The Shudra attains the position of a Brahmana and Brahmana sinks down to the position of the Shudra and same should be understood by the, by the, by the case with the offspring of the Kshatriya or of the Vaishya. What it means uh, is if a Brahmin marries, hold on, hold on. If a Brahmin marries to a Shudra girl, he sinks down to the position of the Shudra. Mm -hmm. That that's just one sloka before twenty four number. Also, that's also, not mentioned in that. No, 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 no. I have read that. Uh, I'll, I'll, like, earlier. No, twenty. Uh, I I yeah, have read that. I'll you tell cannot you. I'll tell you. Sixty-four. And, uh, sixty-four. Let, let, let verse number sixty-four. So, let, so, let, let, let number sixty-four. I'm just giving you context. I'm giving you context, brother. Please hold on. I'm giving you context. You you said it was about, about the knowledge. What, no, it was not about the knowledge. It's about the wedding. Let me complete, no, brother. That, please, that's please. Please. Before. That's one sloka before twenty-four number slokas, and that says that if if, if a Brahman is married to a Shudra family girl, then after the seventh generation uh -huh. of the like next generation, the Brahman the new generation will become the Brahman after the seventh generation, and that's one sloka before. Let me read that's, it out. That, 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 that's not mentioned in Vishuddha Manusmriti. And uh, another fact is, oh. how can you deny the shloka of Janna Jayata Shudra, which means that everyone is Shudra when they are born? Wait okay, so a hold second. On. Okay, hold Wait on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Guys, guys, hold, hold on. on. First, you, first you said about the knowledge. I have refuted you. I have read something no, no, different. You haven't, you haven't. What you have, what There's you have a particular said. word of, of, of Vidya uh, like, like this. And I can give you the shloka. Wait a yeah, second. Of course, of course. You, you are saying the English translation. Let, let, let me clear you one more thing. The maximum of your research, I have seen all of the, those things. And those research comes from the site name Wisdom Library. And Ved no, it's not from. It's not It's not from. 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 Max Brother, it's not from Max Muller. I'm not talking it's about, from a Sanskrit I'm learned pundit. Max Muller. I'm not, not talk, talking about Max Muller. I'm talking about your maximum research. So are you? Are you uh, talking? Not at all. Talking? Not at all. You are making speculations. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't doesn't no, matter. All of those are Brother, brother, hold on. Chaos, 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 please calm, calm. No, calm down, please. Sir, sir. Please, please, one, one calm question, down. Just down. one question. Just calm down. Please, 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 please maintain it. Would you just, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah guys, let speak one at a time so yeah. we can have a productive stream. I mean, please. chaos, cool yeah. down. You can make a reaction stream, no issues okay, about Sam, it. But Sam, cool what down. is your question? Sam, I'm me. not making anything. That's uh, that the point. Chaos, chaos, just. Chaos, it's okay, brother. Calm down, calm down. We can have a civilized conversation. Why are you so hyper? It's okay, Sam. What's it's your okay, question? It's okay, chill out. We can have a conversation for half an hour. Yeah. Whether, whether I quote from any... any uh, Yeah, my question is... Uh, uh, I have just refuted him by saying that this is about the sinking down to the position of Sudra. So so this is not about nothing to do with the knowledge. The oh, Shudra okay. attains the position of the Brahmana and Brahmana sinks yeah, down to the... Pro you're not letting me complete, then how can I talk, brother? Oh, okay. yeah. Let okay. them finish and then you can talk, okay? Everyone will be given chance, don't worry. Yeah, on, and, and, and there yeah. is a Medhatiti and, and Swati wait. And there is a Medhatiti commentary. The commentary says the same thing. The Shudra attains the position of the Brahmana is what what has already been asserted above. 
the the brahmana sinks down to the position of the shudra and the and the brahmana means there should be understood uh, to be the brahman born uh, prashastra if he marries a shudra girl of a nature describes above he sinks down to the lower level so it's not so a even choice. the medatiti it's, commentary it's, says yeah no, it's not um, a choice then my you're sinking is, down the, you are the being punished you are being punished no, the same. to that level of so, shudra so, it's not a choice it's not a clear choice that you are getting yeah. and also and also which this thing you are saying no that oh it's all about knowledge and things like that if you see Man manusmriti's chapter 8 verse 20 it very clearly says that a brahman who is only a brahman by descent that is only by the one one who has neither studied nor performed any other act required by the vedas can at the king's pleasure interpret the law to him can act as a judge but never a shudra no matter how learned a shudra be so what are you talking about knowledge okay. that you know it's the knowledge which is making you uh, the, uh, the brahmin uh, and you can decide and you can choose where is the decision that, here that's 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 not mentioned in vishuddha manusmriti first of all and another thing let me tell you let what me about, tell you what about what about mahabharata <laughs> guys, no, no, guys, no, no, just a second. Just a second. Just a second. He wants. No, he's. So he's saying. No, he, no, no. He's saying. Just, he's just, saying it's not there just, in Vishuddh Manusmriti. No. So let me let me tell you from Vishuddh Manusmriti, where in chapter twelve of your Vishuddh Manusmriti, verse forty-three, it says mm -hmm. very clearly. ज It's clearly uh, uh, that and, you are being and, and, born and, and, into that. No, 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 no. Again, my question is there. What, the, where does the verse says uh, in that Vishuddha Manusmriti that uh, Shudra are uh, does not define your knowledge? Let me clear you one thing. Of course, where, where the, is the knowledge the, here? You no, are being you. Valmiki, you have if you have the Madhya Valmiki, Tamo Gun. The Valmiki, you are the Rishi forced. Valmiki was born in a Shudra family. No, and he, Rishi he, no, Valmiki. No, 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 no. He was, he was, he was born, no. no, he was born no, of Mahabharata. the tenth son of Brahma. Uh, he was born of the yes. tenth son of Brahma, Tracheta, the... and his name was Agni Sharma. So, who are you fooling about with this thing? In fact, he himself had said, you know, when he had to witness that love and Kush. they are the when ram had asked whether love and kush are his own son and when valmiki was called to give the witness of that he had said that i am a brahmin i am born out of brahma's tenth son i am brahma's tenth son son pracheta sure. and therefore i am guaranteeing and i am witnessing that these two love and kush that, are that, your that, own that, son okay, okay. so so how it, it, where it, does he become a shudra now how does he become anything you let, can just you know speak. randomly fool speak. around let me speak okay, let me speak let, let, let the, 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 here here comes the shloka janna jayate shudra which means everyone is shudra uh, from their birth and when they they are taking dwaj what is the concept no, of dwaj he's we not he's not by now. birth he he's clearly saying he's he, a descent of brahma he's a descent of brahma i'm also son. descent of brahma if if you he's will go to the puranas i'm also descendant of brahma and i belong no, to a shudra family He is okay, clearly guys, saying. Guys, let's. This is not going. Anywhere. No, so I'm also clearly saying. saying I'm the. Uh, 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 I, I, I am the generation of the Brahma, and uh, I am from the Brahma. Listen, listen to the brother. Listen to brother Hashim. Listen to brother. Yeah. brother Hashim. No, I'm going to because you. What you're saying, Kios, you are saying the complete opposite of what Hari pos posited earlier. So I'm going to bring Hari in and ask him, why are you a different Hindu to this guy, Kios? By the way, are you? What is your jati or varna? Uh, I'm Shudra. Okay, you are Shudra. Hariyom, are you there? You need to unmute yourself. Hariyom is a Brahmin. Yes, I am here. Okay, so you heard what Kios was saying. He seems to what? disagree with everything that you said. Yes. So I don't know whom to believe now. You both are. And 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 one more one more thing. Let me give yeah, you a yeah, verse. Rig Veda six twenty. Wait a sec. Yeah. Wait a sec. Wait a second, Kios. Wait a second. Yeah. Okay. Let let Hari at least your own off. members. Do you have your chance? Yeah. Hari, he's saying the complete opposite. of what you posited earlier so do you have anything to say with regards to that uh i cannot say he is wrong why because uh, uh, in fact uh, why is he not wrong uh no uh, 
Because because he's your own team member. Uh, uh, he can say Indian constitution is wrong. I, no, no, that's fine, guys. Give her uh, her even I don't know. Okay. 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 just in favor of him that uh, sudra undoubtedly is like a punishment but uh, yeah when a sudra serving for the brahman he can become uh, any of the dwis uh, he can attain any of the dwis uh, it is not mentioned here whether it is same birth or next birth yeah, but you guys know your scripture. but uh, tell me i know do i do know you? You think so? Both of you don't know if it's same birth or different birth. Uh, I I do know, and I am giving you the words. Uh, Rig Veda, uh, twenty two and ten. It says that uh, oh, it's it's Hindi translation says that O Rajan, आप शुद्र वन में पैदा हुए व्यक्ति को शिक्षा दीक्षा दे करके उनका द्वेज करें. So then uh, you know the tr- translation of this verse. Uh, bring out the Sanskrit. You know bring out the Sanskrit. How do I trust you are saying okay, it correctly or not? Okay. 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 So we can have a good conversation. So Hari gave his uh, view. I, I'm. I just to. I just want to say one more thing, sir. I want to just say one more thing. Just listen, brother. You you will have your opportunity, no problem. But you need to have a conversation, okay. not a monologue. So let me ask you this. You said you're a shudra. Yes. Have you yeah. ever been discriminated in your life by another Hindu? Because no. Personally, okay. no. I knew that. I knew Hari that. says it is okay Not to be ground level, but uh, I, I, I don't. What, what I your... don't know about my parents. Okay, we are not asking about your father. I'm asking about you. Hari said it's okay to discriminate children. Do you agree or disagree with that? Mm, mm, he he should not discriminate. It. No one's come no, say in the way that. He clearly said. He clearly said. He he has no issues with them being discriminated. In fact, he says uh, you are being discriminated because you what? did something wrong in the past life, yeah, which is why it. you got the birth. Yeah, yeah, you deserve it. That's why you got this birth of Shudra. You did something really wrong in your past life, and that's that why you are now. That comes from Puranas, and and that's, no Hindu question. It's, 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 it's an Upanishad also. It's in Vedas also, and that's what Hari Om. It's, it's not told. in Vedas. It's, it, the, the the reincarnation into Shudra family is not in Vedas, and neither the concept of hell and heaven, heaven is in Vedas, and okay, no, neither. We are not Is talking about the hell and heaven. We are talking about the caste system, brother. No, no. Uh, I, I, I was, I saw your debate from a quite long period of time. I'm giving you the another words. Don't change. I'm giving you. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you talk, what do you say about the Upanishad, brother? Brother, let's, let's deal with one verse first. What do you say about the Upanishad? Anything that contradicts with Vedas, read it. Uh, will, read it. Read it. Read it out. Read it. Ah, Vedo aklo dharma mula. It's on your screen. Simple. Yeah, yeah. Upanishads are in fact the gyan of the Vedas itself, the extension in that sense. You know, Vedas yeah, are the Kalpan, and the gyan the, is the Shruti. It's Shruti. Yeah, it's Upanishad is Shruti. So what's the okay, problem? Okay, one question. One question. Please, please. Wait, wait. Just one question. One question. Wait, wait. Just Just one question. question. One question. If, no, no, no. Chaos, chaos, chaos. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, brother. Brother, please read it. And tell us uh, what I, you do. I I I I know what's Upanishad and what does it mean. But if it contradicts with Vedas, tell us what it means. Read it. Read it at least. Read it. Read it for the audience. Read it for the people. Read it tell for at least for Hari Hari Bai. Now the people here who listen can expand to, to the. Read it louder. Okay. I will. Read. What happened to your yeah, voice now? Here, whose behavior is pleasant can expect to enter a pleasant womb. Like the Brahmin, Shatriya, or the Vaishyas, caste. But people of uh, behavior can expect 
to enter a like, ball. Uh, I'm, 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 giving, I, I'm giving you one example for this th stuff. Okay, I'm giving you the one example. Uh, I can give you the words of Upanishad to saying that uh, in a particular uh, disease. But first of all, yeah, answer this. Yeah. Why didn't you respond? Uh, this? I, I, I don't believe in this. I don't no, believe no, in this. No, no, no. Why do you not believe? It's it's from Upanishad, from Chandogya Upanishad. <laughs> okay. It's from your Shruti tradition, from your classification. Okay, let, me, let me ask Hari. Hari, what do you think of a guy who disrespects, or sorry, rejects, not even disrespect, completely rejects the Upanishad? That disagrees. I'm not completing rejecting the Upanishads, sir. So do you agree please. that you, you as a. You just Shudra, said you don't believe in it. That's rejection itself. Yeah, you as a Shudra no. are, in fact, born in a womb that is evil. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? If you want, I can give you the Sanskrit of this. No problem. As uh, if he is disagreeing with that, I have no problem because scripture allows him to, if something is inhuman, if he feels he can disagree with that. But you had said you didn't did have any problem. What is according to you? Just to, yeah, according to you, just according to you, how do you deal with the Shudra? In fact, well, just well, a uh, back, according he had to said me, that you said I will deal, he, deal with the even, even you said even yeah even you said brother Hari Hari even yes, you said no, that no, if you have exactly. a servant if if you have a servant Shudra and he possesses a house or a property that property will be belonging to you you have said yeah. this and you said there is no issue with discrimination if the scripture says and discriminates it's okay for it because scripture can't go uh, wrong yeah in my view it is not uh, uh, I think. It, it, so that in means, my view, that means chaos uh, I don't is what, you, what do you think? What do you think about what do you think about the chaos as he is a shudra? Can you say something to him about your view? Uh, chaos. As per saying his knowledge, I can see say that he is a righteous person. And as per Manus, no, he is a he's a, he's a he's a shudra. He's a he's a shudra. And you had just he's a shudra. He is himself is saying. Uh, yeah. By yeah. the way, Hari, no, Hari, no, he's himself, considering he himself, himself as given Shudra, a right? Verse 9.335. Okay, so right Hari, now, he is have, considering himself as a Shudra. Yeah. Sam, Sam, that's, that's and so, so yeah, I, 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 okay, okay, brother. Uh, according to me, you are also a Shudra because you don't have the proper knowledge on Hinduism. And another thing is the Shloka no Janna Jaya the Shudra is the same thing. Am I, am I, you, am I a Shudra okay, or a Malaysia? Am I a Shudra no, or a Malaj? Malaj is the title given to uh, the people you are, uh, who are no, no, mad. No, 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 no. I will say, I will say, no you are Malaj. Brother, oh, brother, yeah. brother, brother Hashim, over to what you. What does Malaj mean? Uh, Non-Aryans. Uh, Malaj means, Mal means like... Uh, uh, non Aryans, but Mal has means, you know, Mal Mutra. Mal Mutra uh, like that, uh, the Istinja or uh, uh, Gusal, I do not do forget that, what is urinating or some party like thing. And Icha means the yeah, thinking. Yeah, so that's what, that's Mal yeah. are uh, like the potty. Okay, yeah. so you're calling, you're ah, calling so you, Shit, in a way. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. so, 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 uh, I'm here what to talk on. Yeah. So for us, uh, for us, uh, non-Hindus are Malays. Okay. You are so, wrong here, brother. What, what okay. About I mean, what about chaos? Would you eat? Would you eat from a uh, from from his home, for example? Mm, if, if you ask me, uh, I don't have... Yeah, if I'm he follows the care. rules and regulation, I will surely eat from his home. Okay, so you the as The scripture a, doesn't allow you to eat from his home. Yeah, you are not being a Brahmin then. Okay, okay, so, so, uh, yes, uh, here's my question. Let me, no, you, you, are, you are just, uh, you yeah, guys are just diving. Sir, sir. Hari, Hari, answer the question. The, can Brahmins eat from the same utensil as a Shudra? Can Brahmin eat from the same plate? From the same plate. utensil. Same plate. Let's say same plate. Uh, 
if he hmm. follows the rules and regulation properly no, then no way uh, no way there is no problem it is not like but it's not listen i can i can show you the verses of sex slavery in islam it does not mean that islam is promoting sex oh chaos 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 where have you jumped brother will you eat from the same plate as chaos or not Hmm? Uh, Are you I have been eating from many, um, uh, hey, wa, many sudra plates. Uh, question, uh, from the same plate as chaos or not? Awaz, awaz nahi ja rahi meri. Awaz nahi ja rahi hai. Abhi aa rahi hai. Aaj. Aa rahi hai, It's coming. Now answer the question. Yeah, yeah. Would you, okay, would you drink from the same, let's say, uh, tea cup as chaos? Somebody who's a shudra. Would you, if he serves you tea from his cup, in his home would you drink that um, see you have to think a long time for that simple. in fact manushmati says that brahmin should never invite a person of other varna for food and in case the latter begs the brahmin for food the brahmin may you give know, them some leftover you know earlier hari was saying he's okay with discriminating the shudras but now yeah. he thinks that he's changed his mind when his friend kios uh, 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 let me be as per no i am just over 9.335 i can only listen to but one as one. hari what are you saying say again yeah and, and uh, so uh, as he given the verse 9.335 so as per that verse i am saying that if he is righteous there is no problem eating with him okay first but the manus but, 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 but the that, manusmritis but, yeah. but brother but the manusmriti says that dharmo padesham darpen vi prana masya kurvatah Tapdama se chaye tailam vakrite kshotre cha parthiva, and you must be understanding it that if a shudra arrogantly presumes to preach religion to Brahmin, you said he was knowledgeable. If he tries to preach you the religion, the king shall have poured burning oil in his mouth and ears. He can't, he can't, he can't preach you anything. Being a shudra, your your scripture says that. So what about that? Can I, can I, can I, can I defend the scripture? And brother, one. No problem, Hari. Why, Hari, Hari, Hari? One, one more thing I want to say. You, you have quoted. Uh, you, you are supporting the verse number three, three, five, chapter number nine, verse number three, three, five. So this verse is against chaos. Do you know this? In this verse, it's written what? that if he is pure, wow. this verse is against the chaos, chaos nature. You said that chaos might be a good person uh, according to this verse. So I respect him. But this verse is completely against chaos. Let me read it out. If he is pure, attended upon his superiors of a gentle speech. Now you tell me, does chaos has a, has a gentle speech? No, he's aggressive. No. His speech is high. Yes. So it's against yes. this verse. So now well, you I'm say, standing and uh, debating uh, with you guys. So my pitch is high, and uh, I will no, request you no, to no, answer no. my question. No, no, no. So making so chaos, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chaos, chaos, hold on, hold on, please. Let me speak to Hari. Hari, now you, you now you say. In fact, chaos can't even debate yeah. with him because he's not allowed uh, to ask for the scriptures as a shudra. Uh, bro brother Har Hari, hello. Yeah. Am I audible to you? Uh, uh, does it yeah, seem you like uh, I'm disrespecting you? It's not about seeming and feeling. You are it's not disrespecting me. But please, sister, I'm asking a question uh, from. You. But uh, uh, if somebody uh, is feeling hurt, uh, no. Uh, do, do you feel that I'm disrespecting you? It's not about it's no, no you are not disrespecting me at all. Question That's all. Okay. You are not disrespecting me at all. Yeah. Chaos, you know, earlier Hari said, no, not to me. The reason you're born as a Shudra is because of your past deeds. So you're born what, in what Hari before. said. What what Hari said is all his own opinions, and I'm not going to disrespect his opinions. But uh, if if you no, will no, go no, to the, he said it's from the scriptures. He never yeah. said his opinion. Yeah. Why are you why are you misrepresenting Hari? Yeah, he's totally no. If the I've quoted the scriptures and he said. He said, yes, it's there. I agree with that. I have quoted exactly. the scripture. He agreed uh, with it. So your, your, your uh, Sam, Sam, about Sam, sir, my, my, um, it's my gentle reply to you. Uh, your team members were putting hijab in Vedas and the shlokas didn't even existed when I checked what all of those. Shlokas in this, is, this, is, this is not, this is, this is out of, oh, yeah. 
this is our uh, subject that, that brother exactly, come on precisely that's what i had been telling to you right from the very beginning you know the reason the reason you changed so you are bringing you are bringing you are bringing I'm slavery you are bringing sla- slavery into this conversation bro, brother, why did you I'm bring slavery why did you bring about the hijab no no no, no. this is no, not the platform that's what to discuss if you want to discuss that, come on my platform come on my platform come on my platform my platform is open to you brother Brother, my As platform is open to you. Come. Why don't I you come on my platform, I will sir? I will okay, slowly come. Okay, then we can talk there. This is not this is not the platform. Okay, this is not the platform, brother, to talk about all those things. You come to my yeah. platform okay. and right here talk about, about the caste system, is, please. If we talk about every other topic, no, 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 no. just just one more thing. I I have I have cross checked your many verses. So my simple question is, which is the most supreme book in Hinduism, Vedas? Hmm. we are nobody to answer you need to answer depends upon changing okay. all the time uh, yeah depends yeah depends yeah depends yeah, okay. upon the people opinion some people believe some believe gita some hindus believe gita is the highest book some believe veda some believe manusmriti so how can i reply sir sir, sir, sir here you are completely wrong you are telling that manusmriti is it's a law okay wait wait you have rejected you have you have rejected upanishad right now just now Yeah. You are I just still, letting, me letting me speak half of my words. You are just letting me speak half of my words. I I just told that anything which contradicts from Vedas uh, will no longer be tolerated. And and uh, 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 I don't remember the. Who said that? that? Is it written? Is it is it written in Vedas? Is it written? Is it written in Vedas? Whatever you are saying. Uh, reading, reading anything. Reject, uh, anything. Anything. Brother, brother, uh, hold on, hold on. I'm just I'm just quoting your own word own words. You said that anything which which contradicts with Vedas is will be rejected. Is this verse mentioned okay. in Vedas? Mm, no. Hmm? So where did you get it from? Then? Yeah, the very the very <laughs> statement that you where had. Where did made, you get it from? He, he didn't get You're the question. You're against your own principle. Uh, what skills? Skills? You got choked. Okay. You got okay. choked, dear. No. No. You 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 are just uh, misrepresenting my words. Uh, let me clear you one thing. Uh, Ved- Vedas are the supreme supreme books of Hinduism, and it does not tells about the reincarnation to the Shudra family or the Brahman family. Did you uh, say? It was did you? Did you Vedas say? Vedas also. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Guys, and, guys. And, and, you, and yeah. Kios. 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 It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Chill. Chill out. Chill out. And also, Vedas does not talk about temples. Vedas does not talk about Ram. Vedas does not talk about Hanuman. Does not talk about Durga, Kali. Why are there so many temples built on that? Then, if you are truly a seeker okay. of Veda, wow. What can, about can that? Answer? What about the festival? Do you agree to demolish all the temples? Let's demolish uh, it then. Let, let Let me speak, man. Uh, okay. So. Uh, my question is uh, i will answer your question if you will allow me to answer the like no 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 so, so just answer the question don't give another question to it just answer yeah. it out mm-hmm. so sorry wait wait i mm-hmm. want to know yeah, what question are you answering uh, I, i'm answering that hanuman and ram uh, krishna all of these are not mentioned in vedas then let me clear you one thing Mahabharata and Ramayana are there. history books. In fact, Vedas Mahab- also is against Mahabharata? idol worship. Then why the idol worship is going on? It's not even favoring idol worship. Then why that? Why why that is going on? Okay, okay, uh, okay. Can you give me the verse where it says that uh, idol worship sh- should not be happened? And uh, tell I'm me the totally, verse which uh, says. Can, give me the verse which says that yes, you can have idol worship. Give me that verse, which from I Vedas giving. which says you. Yeah, all Arya Samaj ji condemn. All Arya Samaj ji con. All Arya Samaj ji condemn idol worshiping. Uh, I'm not Ar- Arya Samaj ji. I'm, I'm not Arya Samaj. But you sit with Arya Samaj ji, right? You sit with Arya Samaj ji. Wait a minute. There are all kinds of, you know, there are Arya Samaj ji. There, there is Advait Vedant. There is an atheist. Yeah, yeah. It's a Charvik, mixed bag. Charvik, you sit with all these people. Yeah. Uh, Hinduism allows me to. Uh, reject w- what I want to, and let me clear you one thing: Ram, Krishna, what, what, Very what is good. Bhagwan? Bhagwan, Bhagwan. It doesn't Bhagwan. allow you to reject. It doesn't wait, wait allow your Gita again, once again. Your wait Bhagavad Gita very clearly says it that you cannot. The scriptures be your authority. He don't believe it. He don't believe it. Be done. Yeah. Can you? Okay. He will reject that as well. Using that principle. Can I answer? Can you reject the Vedas as well using the principle? <laughs> If 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 uh, uh, even um, like uh, 
Vedas give me, gives me the right that if Vedas are non authentic, not like non authentic, but if Vedas are like uh, what can I say? It's non scientific, non, non like uh, it, so it, I cannot science, understand. But science, science is your god, and if your understanding has limitation, that means you can even reject what the word of God. Please, please you, wait a minute. Can, can I answer? Can I answer? Can I answer? Yes, yes. Uh, I will be comfortable to answer in Hindi at this particular point. Can no, I speak no. Hindi? No, the language you, you is English. English quite well. Yes, the language is English. Okay. Kindly go ahead with that. Uh, so, so Vedas gives me the right. And be polite. That, uh, Don't be aggressive. Yeah. I, I'm not aggressive. I'm standing outside the my house right now. Because and then so you know what, Brad, the chaos, it will go against the reaction stream that you're going to make. So so be polite so that your folks and your friends can praise you when you go back there. Who had sent you here. It does not matter what whatever <laughs> they will do, that that's their own opinion. Okay. No, yeah, so, but so, you know, no, I'm I'm yes, just I'm yes, just talking yes, in your yes, favor. Let him answer the question. Yeah, yeah please do that. Uh if if like uh, 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 some can I use some Hindi words? Uh, I'm no, not getting the an, words. It's an English channel, brother. Right. It's an English channel. Word. It's an English channel. Uh, some, Please some, be, respect only, our audience. Only some some Hindi words. They, some they uh, may not be able to can, understand. Then the audience may not be able to understand. Let's respect the audience. No, you, you can Otherwise, translate it. No, I am not here as a translator. Respect the audience and speak in the language on in which the channel is. Try try to say it in English. If you cannot, it help mm -hmm. no problem. Well, this is well, not your well, English. Yet. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, like uh, what can I say? Hindus cannot reject Vedas, but uh, they they if if they have question in Veda, uh, like uh, at any particular you verse, they cannot understand. Uh, yeah, the, like a doubt. So okay. the, the, the they cannot uh, just uh, practice that particular verse if it uh, says to do some particular kind of actions. But uh, when they understand that particular, uh, like uh, in, in uh, terms of uh, doing things, we can reject Vedas. But uh, uh, if we don't understand that, what is the benefit of those particular things? But uh, when it comes to like uh, rejecting, no, Vedas are not the supreme books of Hinduism. No, we cannot do that. Okay, so let me ask you this. <laughs> but what's the point just, of just it? Party, just, just yeah. a minute. Why do you consider the Vedas to be authentic? On what basis? Uh, cause uh, it's uh, from our Sruti pra parampara, yeah. and our 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 uh, scholar says that Vedas are the supreme books, and it's the uh, knowledge of God. And if you will ask me personally, I don't believe on any books. I'm not uh, uh, like a practicing Hindu, but I I, I have and gathered what, what some parts said, of. What you just said is a claim. So even if your scholars say that this is Sruti okay. or is something that comes from God, it's still a claim. I'm asking you, mm -hmm. based on your, because look, every human being is given logic, intellect. Okay, on what okay. basis? So, 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 no, so, so for just, example, just because, just because Vedas do not mention in any religion, any particular no, book, no, no, I believe that. it's not about that, my friend. I'm, I'm saying, look, in in contrast to, say, for example, the Torah. Okay, if you have okay. a choice to believe between the Torah and the Vedas. Which one you think is the most authentic and why? Mm, like, what uh, I, I what would be your criteria yeah. to determine uh, the authenticity? How do you consider it? Uh, like, uh, Vedas even allows me to be an atheist and nothing will happen to me. Now, Sam sir will quote up Quran. No, no, but no, uh, let me. That's got nothing to do with authenticity. That's still, okay. a, you know, that's called circular. That's reason. not the question. Like, like, that's not the question. Yeah. Can't use the what, the, what, what, what kind of authenticity do you need? What kind of yes. authenticity? When you when you say a book is authentic in comparison to another book, for example, okay. your your understanding that the Puranas the Puranas are less authentic than the Vedas, am I right? Mm -hmm, yes. Okay, and what criteria did you use for that? Uh, uh Manusmriti. What Manusmriti itself authentic according to you? Uh, not complete Manusmriti, but uh, we should some Manusmriti is ninety five percent authentic. How come yeah, you're still using somebody this, from this century is using uh -huh. to somehow? But it's not Smriti. Uh, I mean, like uh, it's not Shruti. It's not Shruti. Yeah. Uh, it does not matter. Manu, what Manu did, Manu 
was a king okay and he he wrote manusmriti and he 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 placed himself lower to the brahmans and if he did so he did that for a particular purpose so i i no one here to question and manusmriti even we can change the verses from manusmriti according to the time and it's also mentioned in the last of manusmriti okay so here is so what, what, no wait a minute manusmriti is not a godly okay, so what do you, what do you, what do you say about the vedya sa What, what do you say about the Ved Vyasa who has compiled Vedas okay. and Puranas? Okay, first of all, is he reliable? Uh, I would like to no, no, let me speak. Let me speak. Krishna Devyapan was the Ved Vyasa at that particular time, and Ved Vyasa is a position given to a particular uh, per- person at that particular like. Uh, i hope you understand and what he did he he r- r- wrote puranas he gave it to the yama harsan his student and yama harsan gave the purana to his six student out of which five were brahmans and then brahman just uh, brahman people just uh, started uh, uh, writing and there are many interpolations if you will say doesn't matter tell to me that doesn't uh, doesn't matter oh, doesn't matter can uh, I, 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 doesn't I, I, matter do, do you Kyos. want to kill okay, 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 okay sir doesn't matter i am we are asking okay. क्राइटेरिया personal research on this particular topic and uh, uh, vedas are authentic cause uh, it was the our shruti parampara and unesco says that vedas are not changed from almost 2000 bc and <laughs> we, we, we unesco unesco okay. does not say that i have actually checked the pdf <laughs> yeah you know uh, i have also yes. i have done you know you know wait, four wait, streams you know what unesco i have done five No, not no, even, not even one person of any city cannot be proved i know what you will say i i know what you will say you will say that uh, uh, it's not later than the second millennium bc which means uh, vedas uh, no, 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 uh, it's cannot be it is 1464 ce not bc yeah yeah there is only yeah. there is only 559 years old less than 600 years can old can be read the manuscript today which you have and we don't know and we don't and we and we, and we cannot see it also and we cannot see also okay, okay. So, so 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 you you want to this, this is on unesco website i have actually checked it the pdf oh, okay now 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 no, let me don't speak tell me, something don't tell me it is 2000 oh, okay 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 let me speak something uh like uh, the there is some uh, disturbance all... in your audio the the okay so let me set somewhere like find place okay now so let me speak this is the disturbance Okay, okay. Still, let me speak it. Like uh, Saraswati River mentioned. Is that your will, heartbeat, uh, brother Kios? Is that your heart beating very fast? Uh, I, I, I am roaming here today. I don't have anything to do, and I'm standing and like I'm rotating in a circle, kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, you can. You can sit down. You can sit and then this shows. This shows. This calm down. Uh, this shows your curiosity. Yeah, you can say. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I have I have knowledge on this uh, particular things and uh, what I can person, say that uh, person goes uh, around when he is tensed. Yeah. Uh, I I am not tensed. I don't have anything to do except to talking to you guys. So uh, let let me speak. Okay. Uh, like uh, uh, if if you will say that uh, Vedas are not older than the fifteen hundred BC. So let me clear you one thing. Vedas mentioned a river. Saraswati, which is uh, almost eighteen hundred BC old, and it existed. It it uh, it, mm-hmm. it just uh, it was like dried out at the two thousand eight hundred BC, and then Aryan uh, uh, some the, scholars doesn't and doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Who, uh, if 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 it talk doesn't. So 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 verses. It just doesn't take the twenty thousand verses, brother. If if you talk about the Saraswati one one river, okay. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello. Does it make sense? Hello. Hello. Yeah, we are we are able to hear you. Yeah, out. you're talking okay. about you're talking about Saraswati River, one one or mm-hmm. two one or two verses or five five verses that doesn't that that doesn't fix twenty thousand network. 
wait, wait, wait a minute, sir. My network is just. Oh, there, there's some. So, okay. There is some connection issue. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there, there is a connection issue uh, from my side. I guess. Uh, so. Swati, maybe my my voice is lagging. You please. Uh, no, no. Your voice is clear. Uh, Your voice is clear. Yeah. So. So then, what is the outcome then of of the entire thing? Uh, what, let let what, me clear you some verses, Samson, so that you don't quote it again next time from Puranas. Uh, like uh, if you will say that atheist people will go to the hell. First of all, hell and heaven concept is not in Vedas. Uh, let it be. If uh, let, let 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 take it as a granted. Then still. If you go to the way just let me tell you just, just let me tell you that let me tell you i'm i'm telling you i'm telling you chaos chaos i'm unable to hear you i'm unable to hear you okay i'm unable to hear okay. you brother you're breaking up maybe some connection connectivity problem i'm unable to hear you sorry uh now am i audible Yeah, I think Hello? Sam, you have some issue with the internet. Maybe you can rejoin. Probably, I'm able to hear chaos. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, maybe you can rejoin again. Okay, I need to rejoin them. Yeah. 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 Sure. So, read the chaos. Yes. Yes. So basically, you know, so what's so what's this big deal about this thing which you were saying? that you know about vishuddha manusmriti that you had talked about that yeah this is something that you would believe in but not the manusmriti which has been there which has been given by manu to the manas putra by who's which has been mm -hmm. given by brahma to the manas putra manu and okay okay so, yeah let let, let uh, i hope you are trying to uh, understand what i will speak instead of arguing with me okay no no yeah so, i'm trying to understand and which is why i'm you know which is why i'm very genuinely wanting to ask that brahma being the creator you know and his manas putra manu and he who's the law giver and he's writing you know he's giving the code of law how can we bypass that and believe and mm -hmm. sort of you know prescribe to somebody who's from this century you're talking about you know dr surendra kumar who's from this century itself so how can we mm -hmm. how can we go with somebody from this century nice and speech. denying denying the creator's okay, okay, son okay. yeah uh, okay 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 let me speak now so i i have given you the verse from in, in the chat okay just go for it now manusmriti says at some places and it contradicts with itself okay first of all and manusmriti uh, says at some places that shudra should not have the right of education but i have given you the verse from vedas uh, it's uh, uh, yajur veda 26 by 2 and it allows but, but, but that's every the, human that's the thing see that's the thing now that's the thing how can vedas allow it when vedas themselves are saying rigveda them itself says brings it out very clearly that you know these are born from the mouth these are born from the uh, mm -hmm. arms these are born from the thighs these mm -hmm. are from the feet okay. and then giving them let, giving let, them the let, prescribed let duties speak. that this is your duty okay. this is your swadharm and stick to that and don't you can't okay, change okay, okay. that which is why okay, it's further okay. yeah can i speak okay yes. so uh, let me speak now uh the the just uh, uh, i know the verse you are quoting to me it's uh, let me see uh, i i have taken out the verse uh it's i guess in the uh, tenth part of uh, like 12 verse number and uh, 10th like him okay so no. just before shloka just before shloka says that uh, i'm no, uh, no i'm not quoting from this no 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 if, if the, the, the law the, the law of understanding vedas are very simple you should not take out the meaning of uh, one shloka individually but you should uh, co connect it from the previous shloka so previous previous of shloka course. of we, course it should be okay. connected my question is see vedas mm -hmm. uh, the only thing what i'm asking you is that you are taking somebody from this century somebody like you and me and you're taking mm -hmm. his word as as vishuddha mm -hmm. manusmriti to be to be superior than brahma's own son manu who had given the law code you are taking this to be superior than that that's my question to you why this why this kind of rejection of manusmriti 
manusmriti itself say that, says that uh, whatever is uh, not connecting with vedas and is contradicting with vedas you, you should not uh, obey that and manusmriti itself allow us to where is it saying that where is it saying where is where is it saying that whatever is contradictory to in fact you know if you the, go the by shloka, the shloka vedo vedo akhilo dharm mulam the shloka which is what which, uh, is what, just, which is what i'm asking you which is what i'm asking you everything that so then everything which is there you know what about mm-hmm. which i initially had also asked you what about ram what about durga what about kali what about mm-hmm. hanuman none of that has been okay. mentioned anywhere in vedas but that's something mm-hmm. where we see across you know the entire country you have temples around mm-hmm. you have festivities around people worship so all of that okay. is not something yeah go ahead Okay. okay so uh, uh the the like uh, puranas are not, not the religious books and first of all how come that's what i'm asking how come it's written it's also compiled by way we are so how come that you say that's not religious books Hello. Yeah. Where Here did Kios go? Where did he go? I was not able to hear him out. Yeah. See, your friend had gone. Oh. So, so Come yeah, so Hari. I don't know yeah. him even. You? How come you don't know him? I've seen you on the channel, the same channel on which he's. I there. am. Your people. Ah, uh, yeah. I am. I, I know the owner of that channel, not him. Okay. I know the owner so, of the channel. Okay. All right. All right. So you must have. So so therefore. So what basically is the thing? I think that just a second, brother Hashim, is. I think he's gone. Maybe for the prayer. I guess. Um. What? So basically, brother Hario. What I would like to ask you is that your take is that everything which is there within the scripture is something which is correct. You can't negate it, right? And you say that that if somebody has been born in a shudra, that's because of the past karmas which have been there, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. My question basically to you is that uh, okay, if we go by that, that because of the past karmas, whatever sins been committed, that you've got this birth, you don't remember what the sins were. How would you rectify it? How would you correct it out? Because you don't remember it. Nobody else remembers it. So what if that you keep committing that again and again? What is the chance of you improving upon it or repenting upon it? Uh, there is a verse in Srimad Bhagavad Gita. It is in the chapter 5 and I am forgetting the proper. So 5, maybe 36 or uh, 5.36 like that. So it is said that when somebody is getting birth, he is being born in a, in a Sudra family or any uh, non-Aryan family. So what happens? Uh, that is a, uh, a, that is a part of punishment undoubtedly. But uh, if uh, he has tried something good in his last life, even a little good, he will be improved in the next life like a child prodigy uh, in the field of dharma and karma. So that God. Uh, but how would he? Him, how would he? Wow! Well, how would he compensate? How would he compensate for the sins that he had committed in the previous life? Because that's the entire uh, purpose, no? Well, how would he compensate? What does the meaning of compensate? As in, like, how would he rectify? How would he correct 
what 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 mistakes he had done what sins he had committed in the past life when he doesn't even know about it he doesn't even remember about it and you're saying the scriptures are something which says that you are born into that particular you know varna because of your past whatever past mistakes past sins so so how yeah. do how do i how do you correct how would somebody correct it out when they don't remember it um in rig vidha chapter uh, uh, mandal 9 and uh, no mandal 7 7 5 and might be it is said that everybody since his childhood childhood he knows the brahma he knows the creator of the universe uh, the god has given him some uh, what you know bachcha bachpan se use kuch the characteristic that he can know the god so from the childhood it is one thing and second thing is that but if that if is the has, case nobody just a second just a second if that would have been the case that everybody knows the brahma right from the childhood then how come yeah. how is it that somebody becomes atheist somebody becomes agnostic somebody denies somebody becomes ved nindak how does that happen then and what has that got to do with what i had done in the previous life my mistakes there are two questions okay. one is if everybody remembers and everybody knows who's the brahman then people would not make such idols and they would not subscribe to the idol worship second thing is and they would not become atheist and the second question is the basic question on which the entire edifice of the varnashram system is based which is that your previous your, you know the previous sins which you had committed gave you this particular birth so then the question arises how do i how do i rectify it how do i rectify the mistakes which i had done in the previous one this is what i am telling you that if he has done at least some virtue in his past life so god will uh, enhance in his second life that portion that part that if he if he was trying to worship the god so in the next life he will be uh, getting some advance you know me kya bole matlab usko zyada fayda milega us agle janam mein how how what but what about my sins what about my sin how do i rectify that um rectify means that to improve rectify means that something some error which i had done how yeah. should what what should i do to to sort of repent for it to correct it out how would i even know what sin had i committed in the previous life because of which i've got this particular birth where everybody is discriminating against me and everybody is behaving yeah. in such a manner against me at so, least so, to yeah keep uh, i think that you must complete your question that's my the precise question is this only that this entire thing varnashram system is based on the fact that in the previous jan i had committed certain sin whatever like my past deeds had been on the basis of those past deeds everybody get the family in which they are born so some are you know brahmin some get born into the vaishya some in the shudra and some in that's what the scripture says so the question is what is that past sin that i had done how do i get to know about it and if i don't know how do i correct it out how do i improve upon that uh the one thing it is said that uh, in every being that is lok lajja bhay these all these things are inside uh, from the childhood and those who follow the path of righteousness by what means even uh, by naturally that everyone has some goodness in a person if he follows that and if he is uh, doing his karma uh, good karma with uh, his uh, all efforts he will uh, you know he will, will tell me what is the good the... karma how will i get to know what is the good karma Uh, in fact you know, in fact the... in fact in fact did you ever think about it uh, hariyom uh, that you know for example you said that yeah discriminating against shudra is okay uh, because it's been mentioned in the scripture in terms of like you know the way we have that segregation they are separated certain things are denied to them don't you think that this behavior in itself is like a sin that we are committing and scripture is sanctify sanctifying this sin and saying that yeah you should treat them in this miserable manner 
no it is not same you know uh, everyone has their uh, every scripture has their own belief my in my scripture it is said that it is punishment uh, like in your religion uh, you know i get that. it it's a punishment you are saying that it's a punishment yeah. for shudra and that's why you know he has to suffer the punishment the question is okay he is suffering all through but for that person for that shudra he is suffering without even knowing what his fault was how would he correct his fault whatever flaw was there whatever sin was there that he he committed in the past life how would he correct it when he doesn't even know what that sin was A agreed that he is suffering the punishment everybody is sort of you know mistreating him but the fact is that he doesn't even know about it he doesn't know what sin he had committed so at least any system of justice when it gives the punishment at least it tells no that this is your punishment because of which you are being this is your crime because of which you are being punished and you better not do it next time now in this entire thing the problem is that the person of those particular varna they don't even know what is what were their sins that they had committed so they don't even know that they don't even remember that and they are just being punished all through by everybody so don't you think this is a unjust kind of system no this is not unjust because they can read any books except veda so except veda there are many mahabharat ramayana purana so they are allowed to read these books and it is the duty of brahmins to help them so we see some uh, sudras also were reading the but the uh, thing is books. but the thing is that the hariyo the thing is that e, the the manu smriti you said mahabharat manu smriti puran you know manu smriti itself doesn't allow for the brahmin to give this knowledge to the shudras they say you stay uh, that is vedic them. knowledge that is vedic knowledge the vedic mantra what uh, vedic mantras manu smriti uh, vedic mantras means that uh, 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 he should not teach uh, hari brother brother, brother brother hari yeah. yeah brother hari one quick question yeah yeah and he was calling himself a shudra while he was quoting while he was quoting all the scriptures so anyone who is learned does he still considered as shudra that's a very good question yeah he, uh, when one is learned so can, uh, will he considered be shudra so you know shudra uh, it's um, yeah he was quoting the scriptures the, yeah he was quoting the scriptures and uh, He, if he is learned and he has gone through the upanishad sanskar uh, at, um, then i think that he uh, he may attain any higher caste like uh, uh, vaishya or kshatriya or brahman as per his uh, um, submission mm -hmm. to the scriptures to the god so why was he calling himself a shudra still Uh, because uh, as he told that he is uh, not uh, fully devoted to the scripture i think he was saying like that i am believing so and so but i think he was no, shudra no, no, because no, no. of the no 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 the fact is the fact is he no no the fact is no the fact is he is born shudra ha huh, yeah he yeah, is, he, he is was born, born shudra, shudra. he doesn't well. consider himself as a shudra even yeah yeah that's why because he he doesn't consider consider himself as above shudras though he knows about the scripture so this so he yeah. believes in the caste system that's why he, yeah. he was calling himself as a shudra though he was a learned so no problem with that um, yeah, he is uh, calling shudra because indeed he has born in the shudra family so why to hide that so then shudra. this entire thing where it said that you know you on your own choice can switch on and off you can either you know if you ha if you are learned people say if you are learned then you can you can become you can be treated as you know as brahmin etc then that doesn't hold true because he supposedly knew about the scriptures and yet he is still designated that same position of shudra in spite of whatever little knowledge he has by birth he is shudra but by karma he is brahmin So by birth, how can he have that? He is not Shudra by birth because his parents are Shudra and his grandparents. He never said. The, the, he never said Shudra. this thing. No, he he never yeah. said. He never said this thing. No, brother. No. He never said this he thing. Did, yeah, he didn't say that. I am by birth Shudra and he never called himself as Brahmin. Yeah. 
uh, it was his fault i will if i uh, uh, if i were to say so anyways uh, 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 brother hari yeah yeah please go ahead bro yeah brother hari uh, i think i think i i think i think we have yeah i think we have to we have have uh, we have uh, spoken enough with you brother uh, first of all like uh, you came here and you have accepted everything what i have put it and suddenly you switched when your when your fellow teammate or a brother come no one thing uh, i don't know but, why this uh, behavior uh, are you getting me yeah we are getting you okay okay because i am not getting brother same like that's why i said uh, um that's why i said i was just saying that uh, only one thing i just want to say Uh, because i think that uh, uh, all of you are getting late it is 152 in india so uh, when you said that uh, how the verses of manish smriti can be rejected uh, so we know that uh, uh, we have the uh, as i told that last time we have the but parameters you, that means but you don't reject anything but you don't uh, reject I anything reject. my dear brother you have not rejected I a mean. single verse which i have quoted uh listen to me uh, i have not rejected but uh, uh, um, because i am not as well learned as the uh, great um, people of hindu are but i know uh, whatever that uh, there are then parameters how, then how do you consider yourself as a brahmin brother then how do you consider yourself as a brahmin when you are not calling yourself as a learner uh, i am not saying that i am not learned i am saying that i am not well learned i am learned not well learned and i am in the process of learning i am in the process of learning so that so why. without without um, having the knowledge you can still be brahmin that means that sh- that 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 proves to chaos that of course you do believe in it by birth but that proves to the other you know brothers who come here that it is actually yeah. by birth because in spite of you not having the complete knowledge you still are brahmin and in spite of him whatever having little knowledge he is still shudra so that means it it's it's purely based on the birth and it's not about you know what you are gaining or losing in terms of the knowledge no uh, you are right but half um, you know if you have, if you have read the vajra suchi upanishad it also clears that it is based upon the um, realization submission like that so scripture says that one become a brahmin by karma so so the thing But, is so, so the thing is hari om my friend that if it is based on realization if it is based on submission you know if all those parameters are there then why this fixed rigidity of of a person ascribing to a particular varna then let it be loose why the entire notion of even classifying them let there be no classifications at all a uh, classification cannot be denied sister but uh only one thing can be done that cl- classification because then, you know because birth. if you're saying if you're saying that it's ever evolving thing you know it's mm. free it's it's it has lot of flexibility and everything so let just let it loose then what's the point of having such classifications then let anybody be you know be it into knowledge or whatever it be but i think you would answer that by saying that it has to be that rigidity because again it is tied up with your previous birth action the previous birth karma and the punishment which you have to get is how you get it here in this birth and of course garur puran also mentions about the hell and heavens which are there so it's like you suffer here also and then you suffer there also and the entire problem is that you are suffering for something you don't even know what is the what is the cause of it what did you do for which you are suffering that's the irony if because you don't remember the past karma of the previous life if somebody would remember so this is th- that's why it's a flawed system of justice because if you would remember then you would know this is what i did i need to correct it and i you move ahead you evolve here the entire the entire philosophy is based on for, on not rem- of of not remembering of ignorance which is within that um this is you know somewhat question like that hmm No uh, sorry guys i just step out for another more grip thank you and i know issues better how is everything okay yeah, yeah. everything is okay chaos i think dropped oh, out no. and uh, hari bhai still here hari bhai still here yeah. yeah okay 
and he uh, still at least it's a good thing trying to convince holds, us he holds <laughs> but he holds ground he still believes that yeah it's the scriptures and it's even if it's discriminatory it's okay and it's like a punishment which is there so certain things are inconsistent which was spoken but it's okay the entire religion is inconsistent what can be done i, I realized that when um, he also was here he changed his tune from what he was saying earlier <laughs> no, it was saying he was giving the uh, reference of 9335 so from that i said uh, one can become 91335 that he can attend that position yeah so i am not so saying let me, let me ask you this he was not can, one. can someone who is a shudra can they can they teach a brahmin uh, as i know that uh, there was a sutra sutra and uh, rishi sut something and he used to give the lectures to the brahmins and rishi So but I the scripture that, doesn't allow it. But the, the if you read the manuscript, uh, sorry, yeah. uh, the, the manuscript, is a shudra is yeah. unfit of receiving education, and the upper varna should not impart education or give advice to a shudra. It is not it necessary is that the shudra should know the laws and codes, and hence need not be taught. And the violators will go to as amrita hell. This is manuscript number four, verse number seventy-eight to eighty-one. Yes, and there are there is almost heinous punishment which is given. And, and yeah, the other guy is also from Valmiki Rama, na? From yeah. yeah. Because the other guy said ninety-five yeah, percent of the manuscript is true. From Valmiki Rama, na? That Ram has killed Shudra. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even the Ram, the God, has killed Shud, could kill Shudra, Shambhu ka, yeah. Because he was trying to learn learn Vedas and uh, trying to yeah, teach him yeah, some lessons. That so, what do you make of that? Are you getting me? Yes, yes. Are you are you getting me? Yeah. Yes. At first, many people says that many scholars says that uh, this portion is uh, you know uh, what prakshit. It is just interpolation. But I, what do I think? Where does this all this interpolation many, come from? No, you know, you know no, the question no. is. No. Uh, Uh, um, uh, let me answer. Uh, no, brother, I, because I this this portion is this portion is this portion is a uh, this portion is mentioned by Gita Prasad Gorakhpur. Yeah. Um, that does not mean that uh, anything is uh, uh, which is against uh, is, um, Vedas cannot be said that true. But even even if it is uh, true, even if. Majority, so of the the Hindus, that... majority of the Hindus, majority of the Hindus, majority of the Hindus considered Gita Press Gorakhpur to be the authentic publication. They rely upon Gita Press Gorakhpur only. The majority of the right. Hindus of India. Right. Yeah. Right. So why would Ram kill? Why would Ram kill Shambuka, being the Shudra, when he was trying to acquire knowledge? that in itself uh, was, shows that they are not they are not allowed to at first he was in the kingdom of uh, 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 in the hindu kingdom i mean so and he was worshiping uh, uh, against the laws of his scripture the way uh, we worship is that the straight way uh, that we do in padmasan position like that but he was doing just reverse He But was the just thing uh, is, hanging from hanging from uh, 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 trees uh, that which is against the scripture. That's But my friend Hari Om, if somebody is doing that, you don't kill somebody for that mistake. You can guide them, you can tell them, you can advise them, you can suggest them. You don't start killing people like that. Uh, exactly. There, uh, there. Uh, um, the fact is that all thing is not mentioned there. They, they might have went and. Uh, I told him that uh, uh, you should not this uh, you, you should not do like this there must have been some people who must have informed him that this type of worshiping is not good but that's just a speculation which you are making do you do you And believe he, in ram brother brother yeah. do you believe in ram yes 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 i Where believe is in ram? ram then when when so when uh, 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 kyos was about was teaching you when when kyos was teaching you you would have killed him and uh, followed the footsteps of ram according to valmiki ramayana but he was not <laughs> speaking against the structure uh, uh, scripture he was teaching me or he was informing me even the even the shambuka was not speak 
even the shambuka was even the shambuka was not doing that yeah and also and uh, also did no, you ever shambuka think was that? doing that it is mentioned that you should not follow the vamachar and uh, no? he was following the path of vamachar you you don't kill i mean imagine no no imagine. he was he was trying to he was he was trying to gain the he was trying to gain he was trying to go to heaven and he was trying to gain a uh, good knowledge that was only his mistake yeah that was the only mistake that he was trying to he was trying to go to heaven and and imagine yeah, god go god should in, imagine god should aspire people to go towards heaven god should not kill somebody who's trying to seek knowledge what kind of god or avatar of god is it then no uh, that's why he killed him so that he can go to heaven so then we should kill everybody and then send everybody heaven like that <laughs> should that be the criteria brother you know let's now let's tomorrow go ahead and kill everybody and send them all to heaven can we do that would the country's law permit uh, no. that to us no uh, uh, these sudras do not demand that i want to go to heaven with this body with this whole body uh, uh, he, he wanted to go to heaven uh, with the uh, uh, sthul sharira that we have right now that's why he killed and the rest of the sudras do not demand that i just want to go to heaven with this uh, gross sharira gross, gross body oh okay, you you, so you uh, what about the yudhishthira did he went did, did he went to heaven with uh, his body or just with the soul i think we are going away from the topic shall we yeah, any, anybody anybody yeah 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 once a chhatriya once a son of manu also tried to go to heaven uh, uh, sasarira and even he was also killed because it is against the scripture like uh, i think that uh, in even uh, the incident of uh, islam also uh, rumi or student of rumi mansur or like that i do not remember properly he was also killed so why was that's not killed? islam that's not islam that's not islam that's, that's not, not also, islam uh, and bring also, something from the quran or hadith and then we'll yeah. take it seriously you bring something also, from a poet then that's poetry and also okay. hari om of uh, our friend hari om this entire thing you know i mean i'm still curious that how come brahma who's 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 the creator of this entire universe and who's given his manas putra manu the manu smriti to be created as laws for hindus and this and when manu had requested the boon for a wife you know and he granted him that he he said that okay with please please with the devotion he gave the boon and he said that okay you would have a very loyal and faithful wife to you and then the same creator brahma it's mentioned how the same creator brahma then he created the beautiful woman named shatrupa and then he himself you know got enamored by shatrupa's beauty and he fell in love with her and then manu had got so angry that he cursed the creator brahma and said that he would not be worshiped by anybody on earth so so do you find it amusing that the creator the god himself gets cursed how would the god prevent us from any kind of curse when the god himself gets cursed <laughs> Did you get the question? Yeah, I think he did. He did. Uh, wait yeah. a while. Uh, my uh, I have weak internet connection. Okay. Okay. Are you getting me? Anyway. Uh, I have weak internet connection. Are you getting me? Yeah, yeah, we are we able to listen you, yeah. to you. We are able to listen. Did you hear the question Swati asked you? Am I audible to you? Yes. Yeah, you are audible. How is my audio? Yes, Swati? yes, we can hear you, Baba. This. This is good, and this time, Brother Hashim, this is like loud enough. Yes, like okay. Yeah. I, so, uh, how do you? I you... am rejoining. I am rejoining uh, because. Okay. I did think... you hear the question Swati asked you, or, or you did not? I don't know whether he was able to because Just of repeat, his internet. Repeat the question, Swati. 
I am not sure. Is he here also, or is his internet gone? Yeah, I don't know. Let me bring somebody in while he's fixing his internet. Okay. Okay. Uh, Brother Furkan, are you there? Yes. Salam okay. alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? I'm I think good, brother. We lost Hari here. Things. Yeah. How are you doing? You okay? I am. Ah uh, yes, Alhamdulillah. I'm from the same place as Brother Sam Stallone. I'm from Hyderabad. Oh, Okay. When are you coming back, brother? <laughs> <laughs> What's your? Do you, have you have you listened to the stream today? Uh yes. Uh, I've been listening uh, for for the past one hour. Okay. I was just. Uh, what yeah. are your views so, so far? Uh, I I was just wondering why are why are these ex-Muslims so disturbingly obsessed with Islam? They say they left Islam, but they never left talking about it. Their whole career is based yeah. on what they were. Rather than what they no. are now, they no. have yeah, nothing no. to offer from brother. their present life. Yeah, brother, the, brother, bro, brother, brother, the stream is about the stream is about Hinduism. Sorry. Oh uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes, well, sir. So they can. We are not saying about the caste system, Hinduism, or the colors yeah. which we which we have spoken with. Ah uh, yes, sir. The last brother was say, the Hindu brother was saying there is there is no caste system in Vedas, but there is a. There is caste system in whether it talks about the head being Brahman and the feet being uh, Shudras and all that, but they are all lying that there is no caste system in Vedas. Yeah, of course there is. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh, the that was it. Yeah. Even in yeah. Upanishad. Yeah. Is there only yeah. you got something oh, else to add? No. Why do they reject Manu Smriti and uh, and all those scripture? I don't understand. They're all part of Hinduism, right? Yeah, of course. Shrutis and Smritis, they are all in totality. It's what like uh, it's yes. like what most of these guys say that uh, if they if something goes against them, they reject the scripture. Yeah. So uh, yes. in in Islam, the scriptures are the ones that we have to abide by. The we don't have like it's people don't abide by our own desires, by their own desires and their own wishes. Yeah, yes. the scripture has a higher authority than our whims and desires. But in Hinduism, yeah. like three of them actually came. Chaos. Who was that guy? Yeah. Bunty. Bunty. Yeah. All of them are saying that if it goes against humanity or it goes against us, we reject it. Only Hari uh, yeah. had stuck to scriptures, no matter how discriminating. At least he he stuck to it. Yeah, but even he started changing his tune when chaos came in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, he was uh, he was talking about uh, if the there is contradiction between Vedas and Manu Smriti, he would reject uh, Manu Smriti. But there are contradictions in Vedas itself. What about that? There are hundreds of reject, contradictions in Vedas. They can reject Vedas also. Then they say that we'll you will not follow it. We'll believe in it. Yes. That's what he was saying. That we'll believe in it, but we'll not do according to that. I don't know what does that mean. <laughs> They'll fall into agnosticism, but there there is hell for them in uh, when they follow agnosticism. They they are just going in circles. Right. The scriptures itself does not allow them to go against it, but then they pick and choose from that to suit their yeah. whims and fancies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got anything else to add, or is uh, that all? Uh, no, sir. Uh, that's about it. Uh, thank okay. You. Thank you very much. Allah is welcome. Right. So we got this. Uh, Faisal and King Rawan in the back. Can you guys please switch on your camera so we can verify if you want to come on the panel? No, then I'll have to remove. You. Oh yeah, King Rawan is there. All right. Uh, do you want to you want to keep your camera on, King Rawan? It's entirely up to you. King Rawan, what a name! Oh, I guess he wants to call himself King Rawan. Hello there. You all right? It's yeah, quite far. Many people who respect and worship Brahman. Yeah, that's also there. We saw you already now. That's why I asked you to keep your camera on, and he okay. did not respond. So, uh, hello there. How are you? Hello, <laughs> Raman Bhai. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. And you, Hashim, are you okay? I'm good. I'm good. What did he? Hello. We can Hello. we can barely hear you. You need to come closer to the microphone. Okay, okay. I'm coming closer to the microphone. I know you're very comfortable on your yeah. bed, but you need to, you know, come closer to the microphone. 
Right. Sorry to disturb you or <laughs> your sleep or whatever it is. <laughs> I, I, I'm from Maharashtra and we are also from a Brahman caste. And we don't okay. uh, worship Krishna and we don't believe in Gita okay. and Ramayana because it's all lies against uh, Brahman caste. Don't tell me you worship Ravan. Because uh, Ravan was a, was a Brahman. Yeah, but do you we worship Ravan? Uh, we, we worship hmm. Ravan and it's make you Do you worship Ram or Ravan? Whom? Uh, no, no, we don't worship Ram. So whom he's do you worship, Ravan? Yeah, yeah, he is a Brahman Hatyara. Okay. It means uh, he was a Brahman killer. Wow. So a Brahman became a Kshatriya. Wow. No, no, Ravan mm -hmm. killed, wow. Ravan killed wow. a Brahman. So how could we follow Should, someone who killed a Brahman? Kshatriya killed a Brahman. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the, the demon king was also a Brahman from a Brahman caste. Oh, yeah, that's so a good point. Actually, that. Only for a woman. So how could... So Someone let me let me ask you this. You you are a you are a Brahmin. I have not heard any Brahmins who consider Ravan to be a Bhagwan. Uh, Do you consider Ravan yeah, to be a Bhagwan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you come to Maharashtra, we have uh, our own uh, temples, and you can uh, visit us. It's now oh, interesting. I thought they were only in yes. Sri Lanka because I think yes. in Sri Lanka they yes. consider yes. Ravan yes, to be. Is there? Yeah. We are from the Gon tribe. We 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 worship Ravan. In Meghna. Okay, okay, interesting. So, do you think? Do you do you think that Ram and Krishna these are all avatars of God, or are they not? Uh, these were actually the conspires uh, that uh, conspires by by King Indra, the, the 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 king of paradise. You know, the king of the swarg. So they mm -hmm. conspire against against the the the, the pure caste against the Ra uh, Brahman caste. Uh, because uh, Ravan was uh, take over the heaven in Yamlok, and the Indra Indra conspired against uh, our king, our demon king, our uh, Deathraj, and they took the kingdom of earth and the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom. And of also, okay, Yamlok. so do you so do you believe in Vedas? Do you prescribe to Vedas because Vedas uh, does not mention about Ravan at all. Yeah, because we know that uh, the our the, the the name of our king was removed by these uh, Hari Krishna Bhakti and other uh, bhaktis. So we, which we particular scripture? Which scripture do you? Oh, okay. So which scripture would would do you prescribe to? Actually, our all uh, scriptures were removed by these uh, other people, like other uh, Nietzsche, uh, other lower caste. They call them Brahman, they call them other castes, but they are not. Actually, today we don't have a real caste in India, not a pure pure one. As in? Because like, of conspiracy. I mean, so then, you know, so the thing is, okay, if, if you're saying it's all conspiracy, then from which, what is the text from which you get the authority of this Varnashram? That, you know, the, you say that you are Brahmin. So on, on the basis of which scripture do you say that you are Brahmin? Where is it, you know, or who's who, which is who's your god? Yeah, we have our own uh, gods, uh, god mutra, god uh, kunlis, and the, the, according to that, that that we we get from our own ancestors, from that we can prove our own god, gotra. Uh, I, I mean, ancestry, okay. ancestry. So it's all oral ancestry tradition that you follow, N none of the so, scriptures as such. No, no, it's also written, written ancestry and oral. Both. Okay, written and oral both. So, wh wh what is the written one? Which is the written scripture that you believe in? Uh, we believe also in Vedas, but not in these Vedas that now these people believe. Okay. They're all corrupt. So, which are yours? Have uh, you? Is it preserved? And how old are they? Uh, or I'm, is it all? I'm not, yeah. I'm not hundred percent certain that uh, whether they are all preserved. But some okay. part of those Vedas are preserved by our own uh, gurus. So, you what is your like, what is your sect called? Kamyaki. What is it? Kamyak. Kamyakini. 
Kamiaki. Never heard of that before. Yeah. So you must be pretty like you 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 must be quite a small group. Yes, yes. We are waiting for our own uh, demon king that will return, incarnate, and will take revenge of and will purify all Bharat uh, India. You're India. waiting. You're waiting for Ravan to come back. We are waiting for his uh, return. Yes. Oh, Okay, interesting. By the way, do you, is that story about Ravan kidnapping the wife of Ram? Is that true? Actually, that's true. But because he was at that time king, ruler, he was allowed to do everything. No, Even kidnap. He was also a Brahman. Do you do you not believe in good and evil? Actually, good and evil. It's only a concept that we. Assume something good. No, something no, no, no. Come on, come on, come on. Come there on, is come not, on. Uh, not uh, an objective. How can how can you not believe in good and evil? Everyone does. Even the yeah, e even the atheists who don't believe in God believe in good and evil. Yeah, but good and evil is it's it's uh, it's, an, 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 uh, it's uh, different from one society to other society. So something okay. could be. Let me let me ask you: you do, do you consider? Do you consider rape to be good in any context? Uh, rape? Yeah. I mean, it's also different <laughs> according to societies. Any so, society, I'm asking you, is rape okay? In... Ravana, the king, demon king, when, yeah. he, when he talked Sita, he didn't touch Sita. He talked with his, uh, with his power. He, ki he kidnapped her. No, I'm because, asking you. Because, I'm um, asking you if, uh, if in any society, rape is considered to be good. In any society. Yeah, even in the demon society, the good, the good demon society, is rape considered to be good? In demon society, no. It's not considered to be good. No. What about the human society? Any human it's society which considers you know, rape to be good? Everyone has power to to defend themselves. There is no, uh, no, what do you call it? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, asking you if, if, because for you, there's no good and evil. Because rape, you know, where it's, where you're forcing someone. Okay. How can yes, that yes, be? I know, I know, that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know you know what rape means, but I'm asking yeah, yeah, you, know, why do you not consider that to be evil? Sexually. But actually in our, in our um, society, yeah, if you can rape, so do it. If you will, you will get killed. Then it's your problem. No, but I'm asking you: if it is not evil, then what is it? Do you consider it to be good rape? Seriously? No, actually, yeah, said, we don't consider he's... something good or evil. It's like yeah. if you That's... will want to do something, go and do it. But you will have the consequences. No, no, but hold on. What are the consequences of something that is good? Is it good or is it bad? Have you heard of Iblis? Have you heard of Iblis, King Ravan? <coughs> it's very similar to that. You know what you're talking about? You know, that do anything that you want to and you just, uh, you have the consequences and just there's no, it's like, no, it's totally moral relativism that you're talking about. And also, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious about this fact. Uh, I, I think you may not have heard about Iblis, uh, but you may be a follower. Uh, I'm just, I'm just curious about this very fact that, uh, you know, you call yourself Brahmin. So on what, like, what is the basis of it? Because you said even raping is okay. Anything that you like is okay. So what is like, what is, what is all about Brahmin then? Why hold on to that? Leave that, you know, why would, why would you not leave that also? I mean, what's so, what's so special about Brahmin then? Who are they? What are their characteristics? Yes, Brahmin are those that whatever they have in their hearts, they will tell in your face. So they will not afraid of anything. That's, so uh, as as that's for the, you, the as for you, okay. whoever is blunt is a Brahmin. Not everyone. Everyone not born in you know in a special caste. So where are you getting these definitions from? I'm quite intrigued, honestly. Yeah, it looks like you're making things up. No, no. Um, it's, it's, uh, where did you get this definition of Brahmin from? Meet Adana or Maharashtra. I will can I can show you my gutra from my ancestors. Okay. okay, yeah, but where did your ancestor get it from? I mean, any particular scripture 
that you, you know your ancestors had referred to uh yes my ancestor get it from their ancestors yeah but you know the entire thing the entire trail where did they the original one what is the scripture that they referred to the entire chain of ancestry which has been going on is it the all like chain, it's, yeah. this is from the from the original vedas which we don't have today we don't have the original vedas you don't have it's the original all, vedas it started, it started vedas so now the so right by, now so right now what is how do you get your like what is where do you get your uh, like okay you don't even believe in morality you said you said that anything you want you can do so so what is the purpose of your life then it is waiting for the demon king to return and to take his revenge and we will be follow we will follow his all yeah but who how will he take the revenge ram is no more where is ram he's yeah, gone but, right uh, but who is he going to take the revenge empire, against those who conspire against uh, against uh, the demon king like they they are, they are all dead no no but their their ancestors are still there it's, it's still here they, like their ancestors are dead i'm telling you i mean their ancestors they are they are they they call themselves hari bakt vishnu bakt okay they oh, are, so they, these are these are the descendants not the ancestors the ancestors yes. are dead oh, yeah but every offering that they make for Krishna, that is that's actually an insult to us how because uh, they are praising someone that is a brahman killer so that's an insult but you you yourself admitted that ravan kidnapped the wife of uh, sorry the wife of ram who is sita yes. so do you not consider that to be wrong uh, it, it it was for the revenge and it's okay because oh, okay okay uh, why did okay. what was the revenge for what was the revenge for Yeah, because Lakshman cut the nose of uh, the sister. Shoot Nakha, shoot Nakha. Okay. Yeah. Also, so also, why don't why did he not kidnap Lakshman? Yeah. Yeah, and, but because a, a woman for a woman. Okay, a woman for a woman. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering, Ravan, that you said that rape is okay. You face the consequence. Why would not the murder also be okay then? You know, because you said that you can do just anything. Yeah, so his, yeah, but face the consequences. If you want to do it, you you should be prepared to face the consequences because the other part but, will not. But hold on, hold on. According to you, the consequence is eye for an eye, right? Like you said, a woman for a woman. Okay. Yes. But the consequence. So, Ram, so, Ram, so you're saying the consequence of bad has to be bad, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Um, not only bad, but you you should uh, you should uh, destroy the roots. Okay, you know, you know, in Islam, you. in Islam, we have a principle, which says that you have to follow an evil deed with a good deed or forgiveness. Even, do you know that? I but you're saying, it. but you're saying the consequence of of uh, uh, what do you say? A bad has to be bad, right? Always. I mean, not bad. I mean, it should be worse. Should be it worse. Should be okay. Worse. So if somebody, I don't know. taking revenge for you is is mandatory isn't it uh, it's it's actually a kind of worship if you yeah that's what i'm saying is mandatory yeah yeah so it, it is it is fard on you to take revenge what about forgiveness do you consider forgiveness to be a virtue forgiveness is like uh, like 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 being a hypocrite if you why like some hypocrisy why because uh, as 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 a as as a as a demon king devotee he never forgive anyone he always take the revenge okay so have you have you ever forgiven anyone in your life or you always took revenge <laughs> um, um i mean you can forgive your relatives your brother your family members but not if they are from the other castes castes so you should take revenge and it should the revenge should be worse Okay why wait wait i've just noticed something uh you do consider good and evil then yeah <laughs> have you just correct. realized that you're yeah. saying you have to do good and forgiveness only within your own community or within your own family but anyone yeah, who's but outside that family you have to take revenge so you do identify good and bad good and evil but it's like it's you know forgiveness is good taking revenge depends on the situation i guess but 
forgiveness is a virtue in itself. <laughs> but it's it's a, like a duty. I don't do it from my own heart. It's like a duty. I forgive my brother because it's my duty. Yeah, but duty it's itself, duty duty itself is based on the dharma, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. It's like my dharma. Okay, so if your dharma I, is I, to forgive your relatives, but then take revenge on anyone outside your family, then what does it say? You you are do you not realize that you are identifying good and evil, even though you have a what do you say a criteria for that? Because forgiving itself is good. Do you not agree with that? I, I it can never forgiveness can never be evil. It stems from the mercy of someone, someone who does not deserve um, mercy, but you forgive them anyway. Yes, it's it's out of your goodness. It's a virtue in itself. It can never be evil to forgive someone. <laughs> yes, I know. So You're you right. are you. Doesn't matter how you live your life as a demon or not. You. Identify good and bad, good and evil. You do that. Because you had just said that your own family members cast, you would you would have mercy, you would forgive them, but not the others. So that means you do have a parameter of of that forgiveness for some and for and not for other. And also, uh, King Ravan, have you heard of have you heard this term the jal? Are you aware of that by any chance? <laughs> the jal, it's like like a, like someone very bad person in, in Islam. Yeah, he's okay. he's, a, he's the greatest yeah. deceiver after the shaitan, I think. Yeah. Have you so heard about it? He's an Would evil you? person who's going to I deceive. Have heard, I have yeah. heard. I have heard about him. And Yajuj and Majuj, have you heard about them? No, that's new. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Okay, so anyway, Hari Om is very quiet. Hari Bhai, you want to say something to uh, Ravan? King Bhai? Ravan. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I Honestly, this is completely him. new to me, probably to you as well. I don't know how much you know about the Ravan. Yeah, we have learned something uh, new from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's. Harika, I think it's you, know, you know the the Ravan Hatiara, Brahman Hatiara. Brother Ravan, I I I invite you to come on my stream. Yeah, you can go on Sam's stream also, King Ravan, every Wednesdays. This is a new thing. And also, yes, for sure, there is a lot of, um, there has been a lot of issues with uh, with Krishna, with Ram. It's not that they have all yes. been, uh, yeah. yeah. We, we, we yeah. call this Krishna a conspire, or a, a child kapat conspire, yeah. which yeah. conspire with the, with, this, with the the king of uh, heaven against against our, against our uh, ancestors. Mm. Against our... By the way, one thing, one thing I have, uh, I don't know, maybe Hari can answer this. Yeah. Hari, you, you believe Ram was a Brahmin, right? Ram was Kshatriya. Oh yes, he's a Kshatriya. Yeah. Just, uh, so do you, do you agree with what Ram did in Lanka when he set the entire island on fire? Mm. It was not done by Ram, it was done by Hanumanji. Hanuman. Yeah, but yeah. was it with the because Ram was in charge, was he not? Yeah. He was He was the one, uh, he was the leader. He did not stop Hanuman. He could have if he wanted to. So, uh, he was not there with Hanuman. He was in... Uh, uh, when Hanuman was in Sri Lanka, so uh, Lord Rama was in India. So how he could guide him? And, well, he's, supposed uh, be, he's supposed to be a god, is he not? Avatar of God. But, uh, it, but, uh, but it was in human form. He said that in human form, he will uh, uh, perform like a human, not to okay. use the yeah, yeah, but, god, but godly Hanuman. power. Okay, what but about Hanuman? Hanuman? Do you think Hanuman was a, was a god? I do not believe that uh, these are gods. Uh, I believe that these are the great personalities. These are the yeah, but Hanuman had special powers, so he cannot just be a normal, a normal. I don't know whether it's offensive to call him a monkey, but he's not a normal human and not a normal monkey. He could fly. Yeah. He could carry mountains. He's eat definitely sun. not normal. Yeah, and yeah eat sun eat as sun. well. I don't know how true that is, but yeah. it's I'm mentioned in you, the scriptures because many people worship. You know, they worship Hanuman. Yeah. He yeah, said that, uh, that Hanuman opened his chest and he showed the, uh, the, the, the image of Ram and Sita in his heart. Yeah. That means he 
was always with him. Yes. In his heart. Yeah, that's a good yes. point, Robin. Yeah. I mean, the, the question, um, the reason I'm asking this question is because it it is about morality. You know, we are talking about yeah. this dream is about uh, the caste system. And every time you read about the Brahmins, they are supposed to be moral, upright priests, you know, who, are, who have got a lot of knowledge and they are teachers and so on. So because Hanuman was the Bhakt of Ram, yeah, he was yeah. a devotee of Ram. Should yeah. he should he have set fire to Lanka and uh, killed a lot of people, including women and children? It it yeah, is like the Americans because, saying that it is okay to nuke Hiroshima and Nagasaki because some of those people they did not agree with. So nuke the entire region. Do you think that is morally I upright think, someone like Hanuman? Uh, morally upright, in my view, it was morally upright. Uh, no to problem. To kill women and children mercilessly like that, really? To burn them alive? Uh, How is that morally upright? I think he was burning the building. No, he burned the entire Lanka, <coughs> according to your epics, Ramayana. And Hari, you should know that, that Ravan was a Brahman caste, you know? In Brahman, killing yeah, a Brahman, Ra Ravan was a Brahman the caste. Greatest sin. In whole distorted Vedas Brother, today, today. You you yeah, are you are like absolutely Brahma right. He was, uh, that was done. Yeah. The Avtar did the Brahma Hatya. Yeah, he was a Brahmin, you're right. Uh, so Hari, he was a Brahmin and he was a devotee of Shiva. Mm -hmm. Is that right? There yeah, is no other yeah, sin bigger than the killing a killing a Brahmin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he reason, had King Ravan is saying, for that. King Ravan, what, what title did you give him? The um, the Shannon King. Uh, no, no. You Raman. gave a title. You gave a title to um, uh, to Krishna, to Krishna, to Ram. Uh, yeah, it's called Brahman to, Hatyara. To Ram, to Ram Hatyara, what? Bra Brahman Hatyara. Brahman, Brahman Hatyara. Yes. That's the one. Yeah. So the like... the slayer of uh, of uh, a Brahman. Brahman. What, Brahman. What do you Hatyara. what do you make of this? Do you think do you think Ram Ram and Hanuman did a good thing? Uh, the Ram and Hanuman did a good thing because when we read Ramayana, we find that uh, he knew Veda, but he was uh, performing against Vedas. He was uh, his deeds was against the Vedas. That's why it was good. As uh, you can say in your term, he was just like the Brahman, but you can say manafik type. You know that he was the he said that Ra Ravan was Kapati. Kapti means that who the man with double standards and uh, in knowing Vedas, yet he's no, not. But, uh, uh, but yeah. according to according to King Ravan, the reason he he kidnapped Sita was because of what Lakshman did to who was that his woman again? Shulkna. His sister. <laughs> yeah. What Lakshman did to his sister? He cut his he cut her nose off. So not only Ram uh, and Hanuman, but also Lakshman is now involved in this. Um, I mean, this is evil, isn't it? Cutting somebody's nose off. I mean, yeah. How can you just cut the nose like that? Still, I am thinking that when he cut his nose off, how he was alive. She was alive. The sister. No, no. You can be alive by cutting the nose off. The nose is not a, a major organ. Yeah. You can just bleed, like, but yes. you, it doesn't mean you'll die. Like losing any limb, hand or leg. Yeah. No, if you if you if you injure any non-major organ you can still survive yeah but it's not not an ordinary human it, uh, it was a brahmani yeah Her it was, again was a brahmani. brahmani yeah that's a good no so, yeah, some yeah, of them seem Brahm. to be agreeing with king ravan here it, it looks <laughs> like the good and the bad have exchanged places but so far you know i was thinking ram lakshman hanuman these were the good guys now they have become the <laughs> what do you say? The, the, the evil people because they instigated it. Uh, yeah. Brother, let me read two, two references very quick. 
Okay. Sorry, before Sam, before you read it, uh, guys in the background, Rushi and Rahul Singh, can you please switch on your video, your, sorry, your camera, so we can verify you? If you want to come on the panel, you need to verify. It doesn't matter whether you're Muslim, Hindu, Christian, whatever religion, no religion, everyone has the same rule. Need to verify in the background. Okay, carry on, Rusam. Yeah, here though, no discrimination is base, made on the basis of... Yeah, yeah no caste, creed, nothing. no <laughs> yeah. religion. Yeah, go on, Sam. So the, the, the references are from Manu Smithy, chapter 8, verse number 380. It says, Verily, he shall not kill a Brahmana, even though he is steep in all crimes. So you are not allowed to hurt even a Brahmin if he steeps in all crimes. Whatever crime a Brahman does, he is free from all crime. He should not be killed. Next verse says, uh, Manusmiti, chapter number 8, verse number 381. It says, there is no greater crime on earth than slaying a Brahmana. Uh, Manusmiti, chapter 8, verse number 380 and 381. So that means King Ravan is right? By saying that this was the biggest crime, you know, biggest thing which was done of, of Brahma Hatya, which is there on 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 avatar of God Himself. How would right. you respond to that? How would you respond to that, our friend Hari? Yeah. Yes. There is one more verse in, uh, if suddenly anyone come to, if, whether it is Brahman or it is your guru or it is your friend, come to kill you, you can kill him. In, uh, in uh, uh, retaliation, you can kill him. It but is also mentioned in Manusmiti. No? Uh, one more sudden. thing, sister. Yeah. One more thing. It is said that those who have committed crime, it was not done. It, it is uh, mentioned there. Are you getting me? Yeah, we can am hear I, you. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, I can, yes, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. I can, we can hear you. I think my, my, my voice uh, is yeah. lacking. I, I was saying. Just a little bit of it. Few seconds. Yeah, carry on, carry on. Yeah. We can hear you now. Yeah, there is one, one more. Uh, there is one more verse in the same chapter, uh, in the chapter 8. Um, if you go through that. There is a verse, it is said that wh whoever commits crime, whoever commits crime, uh, he should do penance and he should kill himself. So it means that uh, uh, when Brahmanas are doing so, so he should uh, not the Brahmin. kill himself or he should... Not the Brahmin, not the Brahmin. No, not the Brahmin. <laughs> I think Hari is saying the Brahmin as well. Hari, you know that our, our yeah. demon king, Tachanan, Tachanan means no, the... not the Brahmin. Head. Ten heads, you know, in Ram, uh, beheaded all ten. It's not only one hatya, it's not only one kill, it's ten kill, you know. He killed him ten times because the demon king had ten heads. Dashanan. What about that, our friend Hari? Ravan King is saying that all ten heads were, you know, sort of scraped off. I mean, I think that's something which is very common in the entire Hinduism. You know, just cutting off, chopping off the heads seems to be something which is Sar like... Sartan se juda. Right, because that's something which has Sartan also se been juda. done by... Exactly. That, that was done by even uh, Shiv for Ganesha own son. And then here again, Ram is, uh, you know, he's been guilty of Brahma Hatya and not just one head, all ten heads of Ravan. So I like, think I think that can be questionable. So it's ten heads, but one neck, right? Yeah, the neck is one. The <laughs> heads are ten. So, <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, look honestly, you know, Hari. Look, you need to you need to understand um, that any Brahmin who commits a crime, what he, what is his punishment? Um, he, uh, as his uh, same brothers told that he must be banished from the uh, society. Is that it? So if so, if a Brahmin murders someone, all they will face is banishment. That's it. Yeah. 
you can't kill a brahmin banishment and uh, yeah there is no killing of brahmin uh, is right because brahmin um, uh, is, is is said to be knowledgeable that's why so then so then so yeah, then but if he is knowledgeable and he is able to commit a crime like murder yeah. Yeah. Then why should why does a Brahmin get special treatment, but a Shudra gets killed? A Brahmin never gets killed. So what if he's knowledgeable? The fact that he, with the knowledge, makes him even more guilty. I would say, because maybe the Shudra that. doesn't have the knowledge to identify between uh, you know, good or evil as much as a Brahmin does. Someone who's knowledgeable should be double careful uh, not to commit crimes. Right. Uh, no, uh, because in here after he will get uh, more punishment, severe punishment. But you don't have a year after. You have because of no. A Brahmin, a Brahmin in the year after. What what happens? Uh, Hari, we, are, we are living in samsara. You know, you just birth, rebirth, yeah. die, birth, rebirth, die. What are you what are you talking about? I don't know. Here after, we are living in that? samsara. Do would you believe in Garud Puran, which yeah. talks about which talks about the notion of hell and heaven? King Ravan and and Hari. Uh, I I don't believe in heaven and hell. I believe only in birth and rebirth and dying. Okay, so that's the entire. That's why we are waiting for the reincarnation of the demon king, uh, the death Raj Ravan again. Okay, so Ravan is going to reincarnate again, and would he then kill Ram? No, he's going to kill the devotees of Ram. The Bharat works from these uh, hypocrites, you know, because they they are conspired with the Turks and then with the Mughals and then with the British Empire to hide their lies, to hide their hypocrisy. They distorted all books and they write the 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 the, the, the wrong the wrong history. Where are you calling from, King Raman? You you got a like a <laughs> Caribbean accent or something. Yeah. <coughs> uh, uh, no, I'm I'm very sick. I have uh, lung uh, cancer, so I cannot speak that much. Okay, okay. No problem. Uh, if you can't say it, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm just telling from your accent. You're probably from Fiji or some Caribbean island or something. No, okay. anyway, uh, so, Hariom, what do you think? Wh what do you think about what King Ravan said in terms of? Because he doesn't believe in good and evil, but even though I think he does, he just doesn't probably know it. Um, and his his Ravan is going to come back, reincarnate, and going to kill all the devotees of Ram and Krishna. And I think Hariom, our friend, is one of the devotees. Yeah. Are you? Mm. It is said. Uh, he doesn't want to admit now Ravana in case Ravan is not good at all. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, I think case Ravana, are... it is. Uh... Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Go ahead. Yes, you are. Uh, uh, what was the question? Please repeat that. Question is that Ravan is thinking. Ravan is saying that Ravan is going to reincarnate. Their demon head, Ravan, is going to reincarnate and take the revenge from all the Ram and Krishna devotees because Ram is is guilty of committing a Brahma hatya, and not just one head. He is basically scraped off all ten heads. So it's like almost ten Brahma hatya, which is now incurred on Ram. So, so because now Ram is not here, so whatever, or he in in case if he's reincarnated, or all, all the bhaks, the devotees of Ram are going to face the consequence of that by demon Ravan. So, what would you have to say to that? So, uh, at first, I will say that those Brahmo. Uh, who has just transgressed from the scriptures? So there are some verses against them also, against Brahmin also, who has uh, transgressed from scripture. So he was just uh, uh, against the, um, our scripture. So killing him, um, by killing him, Lord Rama uh, went for the you know prayaschit. I don't know it's English uh, for the prayaschit also. Repentance. So he has just uh, yeah for repentance also. So whatever the process he had gone through, because he had killed the Brahmin, Ravana, Ravana Brahmin. So, uh, so there is no problem. And uh, after uh, performing the uh, repentance, 
uh, Lord Rama was liberated from this type of sin. So there is no problem at all. So what repentance did he perform? Uh, I do not properly remember that uh, because uh, I'm in fact, not in he had taken Jal Samadhi, I think. You know, he's got he's taken in fact he was also guilty of sending his wife Sita in the ashram when she was pregnant, you know, when she when she had conceived his child. So that was also, I think, that so how many how many how much of repentance would the avatar of God do? I mean, don't you think it's very, it's it's so fascinating that the avatar had come here to teach us some lessons and now he's repenting so much. Mm. So what are we, normal humans learning? The avatar himself is committing mistake after mistake. Yeah, what's the morality of all that? What's the moral lesson you get from that? Um, uh, I would like to... Actually, what uh, I would, I would like to read a verse. I would like to read a verse yeah, uh, from ahead. Manish Mithi. Groom ya bal vridhao va brahmanam va brahma srutam ati tai namayantam hanya deva vicharayam. If a guru, balak, uh, a student, uh, uh, the old man or the scholar, brahmin, if he is a uh, zalim, if he is, uh, you know, uh, atrocious, so without a uh, thing, means. Uh, uh, so you can kill him. You are a, uh, it is even, even, if he's, him. even if he's a Brahmin. Even if he's a scholar Brahmin. Okay. It's clear. Which uh, what is the reference for that? Uh, uh, eight three forty nine. Sorry, no. Which book? Manusmriti. Uh, Manusmriti. Okay. So all of a sudden, everyone is now okay with Manusmriti because, <laughs> yeah. you know, until recently, they were all just rejecting it because there was a lot of uh, discrimination against uh, the lower caste and women as well. Right. But you, Harry, you, you know, you kill, okay first with a Brahman, you kill first a Brahmin and then you write a distorted books like Gita and Ramayana to make that Brahmin as as a, as a as a villain, you know, so that's that's a, that's the biggest crime. And you people read all this time these books. So how could we forgive you for that? You you're still not correcting your books about our demon king. You're still See? reading those verses. So See? that's the hypocrisy. We when he will come back, he will uh, correct those mistakes and rewrite those books that you read all the time. The shlokas, all the shlokas. What do you have to say to that, Hadiyo? Um, brother, I would just say you that since he was the Zalim, he was the very, you know, uh, I don't, I have no terms. What can I say of Zalim? I don't know the Zalim. Zalim. If, if he was Zalim, God did not give him the power to conquer the heaven, to conquer the Yamlok. To conquer the earth and he was the absolute ruler an absolute ruler ruler is allowed to do anything that he wants or he chooses. but he was not told to cross the sapta mariyada mentioned by the vedas so why did Sapta-mariyada. he cross the sapta mariyada yeah among them who, it is said that the the is listen, to me, man, listen to me brother listen to me listen to me no, why Lakshman did so? Because she was pressurizing him. The uh, she was pressurizing him, and and Lakshman no, was you know that in the can... jungle and, and, and then cut the nose of a of, of, of a sister of a king. What do you expect? So so yeah. what so what what, do you what she was doing? Why and she also, came alone? And also, also, Brother Hari, he could have just explained it to her that, you know, see, I'm not interested in marrying you and just sort of push off. But cutting the nose is like, you know, going going too far, far-fetched, you know, because he's avatar. After all, he's avatar of God. So he should have that compassion. Le- he should have that patience. He could have just explained, you know, like the way King Ravan is saying, why would you just cut off the nose like that? He could just have so explained. What, what was the fault? Why, why was her nose cut off? Because she wants, she wanted to marry Ram, and then Ram, uh, she wanted to marry Lakshman. Both of them refused. In fact, she went to Ram, she went to Lakshman. Both of them refused and said that we can't marry you. Was she a demon? Was she a demon herself? She was the she was the sister of Ravan. 
Yeah, but Raman was, was a demon, right? So yeah. was his sister obviously was a demon as well, right? Yeah. Both, yeah. Uh, there, there, the there is a verse. There is a verse uh, when you will read this. So when uh, Ram rejects, so Lakshman also rejects. What happened? Uh, Lakshman, uh, she tried to kill um, uh, Sita. She tried to kill Sita. So they, they, they run, there is a, wrong a, an expression. It is mentioned that brother, please go and read that portion. That the face that she was making yeah, like that's, that's she was no uh, right. about to kill Sita. How could we, we she was on about you, right? to kill Sita. Like, that's so why, brother. She was about to kill Sita. If you see, read that portion. You will see there. But the thing that, is, uh, you know, even uh, if, even mm. if she was, I would say, even if she was trying to kill, uh, like he was, who, who was it? Okay, even, even if she was trying to kill it, towards the end, what we see is Ram himself had abandoned Sita when she needed him the most by sending her to the forest alone. Uh, you know, when she, when she needed exactly. the utmost care. So what is he, what, what moral high grounds is he claiming that, you know, you were trying to kill and therefore I have cut the nose. You yourself later just left your wife like that when she needed you the most. So, so, so what would you say to that then? Hurry home, brother. Uh, the fact is that uh, um, see uh, uh, when somebody uh, you know uh, it was the rule that the wife of uh, king and kings were wives of kings were just uh, going to the ashram because you know then when they were pregnant they give birth to their child in the uh, in the ashram where the guru mata uh, lived there so in their care um, it was so it, I think that there is no problem. And first and second thing that it was the uh, it was that time, and all the people of that area was just uh, was just uh, blaming that how can we uh, how can we believe that Sita is uh, um, pure? Uh, so for this reason also we just how can you not trust to... your own wife? How can you not trust your own wife then? You know what, I mean, what is, did you see what is this message that is being given to the masses at large? You can't even trust your own wife. Just send her to abandon her, you know, when she needs you the most, especially when she's pregnant. And then, and also then, you know, like, so, so th the question is, if he leaves her, then what is this entire thing about cutting the nose of of of, Ra of uh, Ravan's of Ravan's sister, <coughs> just to show off that, you know, he was trying to, she was trying to kill him. Yeah, to save her life, uh, he just. Uh, but cut he, off her towards nose. the end, he just left her on her own. Did he then care about her life? That he exiled would she be in the to, forest. Yeah, would she be, uh, would she exactly. be able to survive? Exiled would she be able in the to forest, survive? Yes. No, after he rescuing her, ask, after, ask, after, after rescuing her, what did, what did Ram say? What did Ram say to Sita? That go away from me, please do not come near me. I'm not. I, I would. I would not be touching you. You can go to my brother Subir or anywhere. I will not take you back now, because you have. Uh, you have been uh, uh, spent almost one year at Ravan's place. So I don't trust you now anymore. Wasn't that the reason for the Agni Pariksha as well, the fire right. test? Right. Yes. Yes. Exactly. And he has given example of a dog that uh, it's like uh, you been uh, it's been like uh, uh, God ha uh, a dog has uh, leaked the butter from a plate, and that butter is being served to me. How can I eat that same butter? Imagine comparing to a dog. <laughs> No wonder King Ravan is saying that, you know, they are waiting for their uh, Ravan to reincarnate and take the revenge. Because if those kinds of things are mentioned, anybody would get ragged about it. And especially if the avatar of God is behaving in such a manner, then what can we expect from normal human beings? What would you say to that, Hari Om Tatsat? I will say that uh, some of the portions are, you know, it is said that uh, uh, it is fabrications as per the scripture. So we have to remove that. 
we should not but the question is who would fabricate do. it's all written in sanskrit it's who not fabrication ha uh, it yeah. uh, 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 brahmins brahmins uh, will uh, fabricate sanskrit also so yeah. yeah. so so brahmins themselves fabricate <laughs> things how can brahmin themselves uh, yeah, fabricate yeah some brahmins so that means there is a major uh, problem can... with the entire religion you know you can't trust anybody you can't even trust the scriptures because anybody any time can fabricate anything and then what is god doing in all of this allowing anybody to fabricate it all why is god not preserving it and letting people be misguided and be lost <coughs> and be you know in total utter ignorance no the um, god also um, god has also said that if there is any a uh, contradiction you should uh, um, uh, remove the which is inhuman you should remove that portion you should not but believe the, that but remove the thing that, is 10 yeah. people would find 10 contradiction and what if eventually the entire text get removed and ban- and you know totally erased off what did you say i said if 10 people find 10 contradictions or maybe 100 people find 100 contradictions in the text and they start removing that like and they start removing those verses like that towards the end you you may not even have anything in your hand the entire text can can start getting vanished like that and eventually the entire religion and religion itself then and it can become no, a religion uh, without not- any scripture then no not everyone has the right to remove it is already mentioned that who are uh, who, uh, who have command over four vedas vedangas and the smriti shastra and every scriptures but so the in the, the brahma sansad there is, but the thing but the thing is uh, but the first, thing is hari let me complete the same, i i get it but um, you know my question is erupting from what swati, you are saying swati let me complete okay swati let me complete i was Go saying ahead. that ahead. in brahma sansar where the all brahmins or all the learned people seated and in their uh, um, what uh, uh, in the in their kya bolte samuh mein unke company gathering so what they will do uh, in, uh, yeah, in, their, in their gathering so they will discuss about the all the verses so uh, and all those people must be have the a good command over Uh, all vedas vedangas and everything and from there they will uh, remove such uh, uh, such parts which are contradicting and which are not contradicting they should accept that and okay, which are now, ambiguous they should let, it, let, let they should let it uh, uh, live for the god that we do not know we are uh, unable to understand this okay so, so this, this particular the- practice this practice which you have told about i am i am wondering you had said just a minute back that same brahmins can have may have fabricated the text so how can you then trust this particular class or caste where from the same caste people can fabricate how would i trust that the, this gathering will now rectify it or properly or maybe further fabricate it you know to their vested interest How, what is the guarantee here because after all it's all human beings and human beings you know it's it's to be human is to err so we can always make mistakes it so the infallibility the infallibility of text is not something which is guaranteed at all and imagine this is the text which is determining your entire life um <laughs> uh, it is said that vedas are the paramount authority and uh, uh, and it is also said that they are there are the six uh, uh, characters of bhagwan so as we know that bhagwan ram ram was a bhagwan and he was above six characters and if it is contradicting with his six characters it means that that is against the scripture six characters or 14 kala sampurni would say the way they would say that okay. ram was 14 um, kala sampurni i think we are going away from the actual right. topic let's okay. uh, So Hari do you have anything else to add with regards to the yeah. topic on off system And what would be your last words to King Ram because you know they are going to just sort of you know have waiting for the demon Ravan to come back and give you back you know give all the devotees back Because of distortion uh, no of their vision right no problem no matter whoever will come brother uh, King Ravan no matter whoever will come 
it is already said that even if the sanatan dharma is declining god said that he is the ritasya gopa the protector of the sanatan dharma he is the shashvat dharma gopta the protector of the sanatan dharma no matter whoever will come it is not the ones it has happened many times that more 90% or 85% or 95% people of the world became the malecha yet still uh, we are surviving and believe me that uh, uh, you uh, uh, the ravan when he will again come he will again be killed no, uh, without any doubt so again, again the mahatya yeah two times i mean no repentance at all same crime being committed again and again same sin no, but they don't but consider it to be evil news, they don't consider it to be about bad about other things spreading fake news in a in, in a book called ramayan in a book called <laughs> because sita was queen he chose ravan but instead of ram he went to his uh, palace she went to live there but it was ram that was jealous okay i think i think let's uh, let's discuss this ram and ram in some other stream right now our stream is about um it's about caste system isn't it and karma so hari om do you believe that uh, because we are discussing karma as well i want to know do you think ram was a god or he was just a human for me for my understanding that mm -hmm. he was uh, avatar uh, he was avatar and he was uh, sent from the uh, which you can say mm, but hari om tatsa i remember he was the, not god the, he was not god in, yeah in the he previous stream you had okay. said you he so had said in the previous stream what about krishna he is avatar in my is view krishna? in my understanding in what my view in my understanding yes. uh, do you hear me brother hasim Yes. Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I said that in my view, in my understanding, uh, that uh, Lord Krishna and Lord Rama was uh, not the God. In my view, I may be okay. wrong. I cannot say. But in because I have read that in Vedas, Shuddham, Apap, Vidham, and the Akayam, the God has not body and he is pure and he is sinless. So, so who is and, who is God according to you then? according to you who is god according to me according to my understanding that god is the creator of the universe and he can never take shape and form because he is said to be ekras he is said to be sthir so how can he change his body never okay so so that means he cannot change his body so that yeah. means that means everyone who says that god took an avatar they are wrong right uh, uh, what did you say everyone who claims that god took an avatar many of the hindu say ram and krishna are the avatars of god are they wrong avatar uh, in amar kosh also it is said that avatar so uh, one who is mahatma one who is uh, chosen by lord so no, in no. the when you see that uh, i'm talking about those who claim that ram and krishna are the avatars of god are they wrong avatar of god means uh, you can say like uh, when we say you just, you just said god, god doesn't change form you just said that when yeah. you become an avatar you change form that when you i am not saying I, i am saying that when you say prophet of god like that we say avatar no, no, no. of god prophet is different no, no, no. prophet yeah. is not an avatar that rishi is uh, prophet is a creation of god i am not comparing i am not prophet saying that rishi the, the, Uh, I am not saying that Ram was prophet. Sir, Ram was prophet. I am not saying that. He avatar was Bhagwan. He was avatar because he has crossed six six guna six character. Avatar he has. Is, he was. Avatar he, he, is incarnation. No incarnation. Isn't that? He knows. He knows what avatar is. Yeah, he knows it. So once again, Hari, did yeah. you understand the question? Does God I have avatars or not? Simple question. Does the Hindu God do you... not? god uh, in my view in my understanding god never come to the earth in my understanding i will okay. i am saying so what is I the name what is the name of your god if i were to ask you name of the god, god god the, his main name is om and he has so many names like uh, brahma vishnu mahesh ram all these okay. are name uh, he has got from the 
So what about but, uh, you, you, just, you just said Ram no. is not a god. Now you're saying that's the name of God. Make up your mind. What about Ravana? What about Ravan? Uh, Was he also an avatar? Uh, uh, no, you, Ram. You just Ram, said Ram, Ram, Ram is not a god. Now you're saying it's God. Make up your mind, please. I uh, I have uh, listened to me. Uh, I am saying I'm that listening. Ram is not God. That Ram who was the king. No, but you said one of the names of God is Ram. Ah, it. yeah, it is one of the attributes. You, you can his, his full name is Ram Chandra, not Ram who came to the earth. Uh, so he was Ram Ram Chandra uh, is one of the attributes of God. Is what you saying? Are uh, only Ram is the attribute of the God. Ram means uh, in Vishnu Sahasra uh, we see the name Ram. That. He wants to say Ram. that Adi Ram. So he's saying Adi Ram is uh, attribute of God. Yeah, and Ram ah, yeah, is the yeah. name of the person. Yeah. Okay. So okay. when you say Adi Ram, so the Ram that actually killed Ravan, you're not talking about that. You're talking about somebody else. Uh, yeah. When I said uh, Adi Ram, uh, Ram uh, here only for Adi Ram for the Lord. When I say Ram Chandra, it is for the King Ram who uh, just. Uh, okay. So are their identities different or they are the same identity? Mm. Of Ram Chandra and uh, King Ram, uh, God yeah. Ram. Yeah, Adi Ram and yeah, Ram Chandra. Mind, do they have the same identity mind, or they are different? Uh, they are different because God Ram is the creator of the universe, okay. and this Ram is the uh, das, the you know das. I mean the servant of the God. So one is a creation, the other is a creator. Yeah, one is a creator and the uh, other is a creation. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so Adi Ram is the creator, and yeah. Ram Chandran is the creation. Creation. Yeah. So yeah. why temples are built up for the creation? Uh, what do you think about that, Hariyom? All these temples which are there for Ram, Krishna. Why would there be so many temples for somebody who's not even God? In fact, such uh, a fuss yeah. and such a facade over you know building of Ram. Temple things like that, which takes place. Why would that be there? In, in fact, the Hindus they destroyed a mosque just for that. Yeah. Yeah. Why would they go through all that if Ram is not even a god? Um, you are right. The people in uh, Hindu community, yes. so some um, most of them believe that maker and matter both are god. The maker, the creator of the universe, and the matter what we see are the god. So, we, so they just create in the name of that. They say that we are just using the idols to concentrate our mind, and we no, are it's using. Not, it's not about that. What what I'm saying yeah. is the whole this whole problem about the Ram Janmabhumi, okay, is because they yeah. actually believe Ram is God. Yeah. Okay. So are they wrong? Because you don't believe Ram is God, do you? I don't believe that Ram is God. But in later period, my belief can change that maybe Ram is God. But right now, my I believe that Ram is not God. And my friend, for many you, years, you I believe can't that. change your gods based on your whims and desires. You see, that is that is the difference between Islam and the other religions. Because if God is able to communicate with you directly through revelation, through messengers, then you will not be in this confusion where you are. Now claiming that maybe in the future I might change my mind and change my God. Yeah. Uh, I am not saying that. Uh, uh, why I will say I am saying that if somebody convinces me that Ram is God, in that case I will change my mind. If somebody convinces me that Ram yeah. is not God, then I will uh, change that position. That is God. Yeah, the reason you are in this situation where you so, somebody so has to convince are you, are you, you is because are you convinced today? Are you? <laughs> No, I I am not convinced today because yes, I uh, I am not convinced at all uh, because you know my uh, my way is not like that. I just believe in the you know uh, peace, uh, not just attacking on others. So that's why uh, I do not like this type of thing. So whenever such type of thing happen, I just go against that. Okay, so if the reason you're in this situation so is according because, to scripture, do you agree that Ram is not considered as God? Yeah, as per my understanding Sorry. of the scripture, I believe that as per my understanding of the scripture, I believe that Ram, Lord Ram was not the God of uh, our God. He was just avatar. He was chosen by the God. Uh, okay. I can say he had, he had some devi shakti. We can say. 
but he was not the creator of the universe in my view in my understanding so all those people who say that ram is the avatar of vishnu they are wrong according to your opinion uh, as per my opinion uh, they are wrong as per my opinion they should and not so be that because then god is said Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, as per my opinion, as per my opinion, that Krishna was not Lord, not the Creator of universe. He was uh, just the avatar that who um, will come again and again to protect us. So then, the what God. would you say about this entire Bhagavad Gita and Ra- Mahabharat? You know, would you believe in those scriptures? Ah, uh, yeah, I believe in those scriptures. but that's but that is the sermon which is given by by krishna saying that you know follow me come come in my refuge i am that supreme brahma he says all uh, that yeah, and yeah when that. when lord, sister when it is said that uh, lord krishna uh, was in uh, samadhi he was in, he was brahma so when he was speaking it was not that he was speaking about himself he was speaking about the words of god so he is saying to uh, when 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 i was speaking to you i was in samadhi so he was getting you know like that he was just giving the revelation like something so and he was just uh, he, um, answering to the krishna in that uh, sorry uh, answering to the arjuna but so it Hari, was the revelation okay yeah go ahead you have read you have read also in ramayana about uh, about ram about ram avatar and uh, they call him prashottam prashottam means that he was a complete an infallible man even god in our belief could make mistakes but he was infallible so he was bigger than god how could you how could you not see that i don't think he believes ram was infallible uh, as per lord sri ram said that i must have committed some crime in my previous birth so i am facing sir, so and so uh, um but so that Papa. means yes, as per the scriptures that. yeah he did say that so that means as per the scriptures then a a thing which came out of this discussion is ram and krishna they are just like you know like great men maybe for some people but they are no gods as such so all these temples etc which have been there uh, and all the fuss over it that we need to build this temple because this is our god that they need to be those people need to be enlightened about it by hari om tat sat i mean hanuman hanuman himself worship ram he literally worshiped him did he not uh, yeah he said i am the biggest devotee of ram okay anyway ravan yeah. singh are you there yes yes i am okay yes. how are you doing you right yes i'm audible Yes, yes. Where are you joining from? I'm joining from New Delhi. Okay. What time is it there now? <laughs> It's three in the morning. Three. <laughs> you guys are pretty committed, mashallah. That's good. So I don't Actually, know how I long. Actually, I was doing work, so I oh, just. I okay. How long have you been much. listening to the stream? Have you listened to all of it or part of I it? I was listening to Hari Om like for thirty minutes. Uh, um, okay. That's all. Tell tell us a bit about your background. Which which uh, jati, which varna you belong to? Because that's what we are discussing today. So I uh, I am a shatri myself. Okay. So but uh, uh, I have a point of view on this. I will discuss it uh, with you later. Uh, there are certain things that I want to like. Uh, if you allow me, I want to say. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. so the sister i don't know uh, swati right yeah. so she like mentioned like uh, uh, the about the recognition of uh, ravan and so if you uh, m- maybe hari don't know about this but ravan and kumkaran both were reincarnated again and they was hinakashyap and hinyash in their previous life so three times they took birth and then three times they were killed and then liberated by god himself and yeah, that's, uh, that's another story right, which yeah. is there in the scriptures yeah no no right, i didn't right. say anything it was king ravan who was saying that this uh, you know that he's going yeah. to reincarnate and take the revenge no no he was reincarnated as kans and killed by krishna and kumkaran was reincarnated as shishupal and was killed by krishna again and they were liberated uh, they were liberated because they were 
Vijaya and Vijaya, uh, the the very servant of Lord Vishnu, who committed crime and was cursed. Uh, let's let's to, not yeah. let's park that topic because that's yeah. not really our topic today. Uh, maybe yeah. next time yeah. we actually discuss that. So Rahul Singh, have you have you actually faced or I don't know seen somebody uh, oppress somebody from a lower caste? No, not Never. really. But there is a no no there is but there is a kind of mentality for like very low caste. Like uh, the uh, workers who like clean sewers and all do this kind of stuff, but uh, for generic, I have not seen anything like this to uh, be happening. Do you think? Do you think okay. there's any any discrimination in your in your scriptures? I think there's a discrimination. There's no discrimination in scriptures, but there is a uh, lack of understanding. A lot of lack of understanding. So, okay, so give me an example well? of yeah. of any discrimination you think there is in the scripture. Right, uh, if I I'm not saying that there is discrimination. I'm saying there is a lack of understanding about the concept of like all the varna in the system, caste system that you're talking about. So, like the Brahman is the the definition of Brahman is like the one who is closest to the God. So it's all mm -hmm. uh, like all caste. Uh, are defined from the quality and the work the people do, and it is pre-decided by the uh, previous life that what you are going to do as per your previous karma. It's not like if you are, like if you are birth, uh, birth, uh, taking birth on a Shatriya family that you will be a Shatriya. Unless and until you are working like a Shatriya, you are not doing a karma of Shatriya. You will not be a Shatriya. So you have to fight for your people. Okay, brother. I have a quick question. I have a quick question for you, brother. So, have right. you ever went on war? You being a Shatriya, have you ever fought? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. So then, what, so what makes you a Shatriya? Shatriya? You no no. I'm not laughing. I mean that was. So I'm not. A, I'm, not to I'm not a Shatriya. But you I'm not a Shatriya. That's what. But you said in the beginning you are a Shatriya. Yeah. And brother has. No no. He's asking. He's asking. He's asking. Rhetoric. Bro, no no no. That's that. <laughs> like that's why that's in the Shatriya family I was born. That's not how it is. It's not like I will be a Shatriya so uh, because I'm. So what do you write? You know, like for like example, what what do you write if somebody if you have to write somewhere your varna? What do you write? Not There is no it? no no document that you have to write your varna. If somebody asks, there is no such do document. Do you, like this. No, what makes you no what makes you a Shatriya? Is it your yeah. birth or is it your deeds? What what makes you a Shatriya? It's your yeah. deeds. That define if you are Shatriya or not. But what uh, goes in India mostly like uh, they are like uh, Shatriya. They are like pandits because it's okay. Like, so what this is what I what deeds, what are you what what do you consider what deeds have you done? Yeah, yeah. What, what deeds have you done? Currently, I'm in a, so currently I'm in a business. So I can say I'm a Vaishya. <laughs> okay. So you don't believe That's you right. don't believe in a caste system based on birth. No. You will be born with the quality of a particular caste because of your previous karma. But okay, okay it okay, is okay. not. One second, one second, Rahul. My question is: If you are born with that guna and that quality, wouldn't it wouldn't it actually manifest in all your conduct, behavior, attributes? So how can it be that you are born with the Shatriya quality and you say that I am not inclined towards? Uh, yeah, or my question. deeds are not, not Shatriya. I'm not born with the Shatriya quality. You just because said no, that because doing, of the previous. No, word. no, please. Yeah. Like, like because of your previous karma, you will be born with the quality of certain varna. Yeah, so that's what I'm but asking. Krishna, Krishna is the... Krishna is clearly saying to Arjuna that you are not a Shatriya because you are born from Shatriya. You are Shatriya because you have to fight for your people. So I'm asking. So that's what I'm just. Shatriya. I'm just asking. I'm just asking a simple it's question. You had said. Yeah, you had said mm -hmm. that you because of the previous birth, you are born with mm -hmm. that guna. Okay, that gun which is there. So you are born with the right. Shatriya gun in a Shatriya family. So now that you have got that quality, that attribute, that gun, you are not just from the previous birth Shatriya. You also because of your gun a Shatriya. So when you have that gun, why would that gun not culminate into the action? Why would that gun not come into karm? That's my question to you. And I think uh, you again misunderstood. I'm saying that I'm Shatriya because of my ancestor, but 
I am a Vaishya by profession. I am born is, in a business is, family. I am yeah, doing yeah, business. Which is, which is that means I much. was. I, that's what I'm saying. That in my previous life, I've committed some kind of action that I was born with a Vaishya quality. That and in actual, I am a Vaishya. No, no, not Vaishya quality. You are born but in a Shatriya family. The, because you're not getting you're not getting you you're born in a kshatriya family because of those qualities those gunas which have been there in the previous birth so those gunas are there within you but my family right? is not a kshatriya right because they are into the business of uh, they are into business of real estates so which is they are not fighting the everyone so, that's a fighting that everyone that's fighting for what, our what country she, right now brother 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 what she is brother what she is asking is like you have born as a as a as a boy Later, you turn out to be a girl. Is that possible? You <laughs> have a qualities of boy. Then think later, after more... growing up, you become a girl. So she is asking the same question. When you, when you, yeah. yeah. They are called trans. I don't think she is asking that. I don't think she is asking that. I'm, I'm, I'm asking it's similar... precisely that. I'm asking precisely yeah. that. That if you have the gunas, if you have the gunas from the previous birth of a shatriya, because of which you are born in a shatriya family, then wouldn't that guna culminate into your action and deeds? Wouldn't that guna culminate into your activities? Why would you say that my activities are something else, but my gunas are something else? That's what I'm asking you. I've I've never said that my gunas are something else and my activities are something else. I'm but saying that say, in my you said previous no that, life, you said no. You said no that your activity you want to please, venture into wealth based. Yeah, go ahead. Because I, you are confused. Listen, please. Because I am currently doing a work of a Vaishya, that means I've committed to some kind of karma in my previous life, which give it, which have given me the guna of a Vaishya. That's why I'm actually a Russian. The people who are fighting for a country, who are passionate to fight for a country, who are fighting a war currently to protect her, they have done a karma in their previous life, which because of that they have got a guna to be a Shatriya. That's what it is. It's not like you, I'm born yeah. in a Shatriya family. My family is not a Shatriya because they are born from a Shatriya father and Shatriya mother. Okay, okay, but your they have to. Is... They also have to carry on. The but duty. your family, but your family is a Shatriya family, right? Your family is a Shatriya family. That's what is somebody by name, by the, name. Okay, by name itself, if very plain, simple, right. not to make it complicated. Anybody asks right. you by name, it's a Shatriya family, and we understand that you get the birth in a particular family because of the previous karmas which have been there, and you are born yeah. with that particular guna. So I am just saying that gun, that quality of Shatriya, which is there within you, because of which you got a family, which is a Shatriya family. Why is that quality not getting translated into the action? Why, why is it that your action want you want the action to be of Vaishya, of mercantile, mm. but the quality which is there within you is that of a Shatriya? How can you say that the quality I have is of a Shatriya? Because, because that's what you claim. That's what you claim. Because because you don't claim that. Want He's it's it's just the thing that's going on from a family's name because like like, like let's understand like this. You Would you call a Muslim a Muslim just because a I'm a, no 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 just a second please let me listen. clear it out. Let me clear it out. You had this confusion. I am not saying you're making a claim. In fact, I don't you're not even making. Yeah yeah okay fine. Uh, let me just clear it out. It's not even a claim that you're making. The very precise act of you being born in a Shatriya family is in itself loud and clear right. that you had the Shatriya quality, the Shatriya gun from the previous birth because of which you got a Shatriya family. My question to you is mm -hmm. that if you have those qualities within yourself, why doesn't that quality culminate into action? Just the way Krishna had said to Arjun that you have that quality and it not it's not based on your whims mm -hmm. and fam fancies. You have to act as per that quality. So I'm asking you, why don't you? In fact, Krishna, because Arjuna, Krishna said it is your dharma. Arjuna was. exactly, exactly. So right, because he me. was a warrior. Because he Be was a warrior. He was passionate about fighting. He was because passionate he was, about protecting. Be because he was born in a warrior That's what family. his quality is gonna was. So no, he's, he was. he's born in a Shatriya family, no, and his no. actions are also that of a Shatriya. Yeah, and you are born in a Shatriya. In your case, is it, in your case, you mix That's two different. That's something you're forcing. Yeah, yeah. In your case, like, you mix two different like, uh, vadnas. No, 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 no. That's not That's like. Not if you're born you, from a Muslim family, would you call a boy a Muslim? No, no. We are talking I mean, about until unless he practices Islam. 
But the thing is, until that, unless you know, he practices Islam, no, no, would he be a Muslim? Actually, yeah, Muslim. yes, yes. But he no. will identify. But he will identify himself as a Muslim. No, as okay. long as Not, you're born in a Muslim family, you are a Muslim. Yeah. yeah. In fact, everyone is a. Everyone is born upon fitrah. Even he's not practicing Islam. Hear me out. Hear me out. According to the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, everyone is born upon fitrah. Yes, and by that it means a Muslim. And it is only later on when they grow up, their parents either make them a, a, a Muslim or a fire worshipper or a Christian or a yeah. Jew. Yeah. So <laughs> what you're saying is perfectly in line well, with like Islam. It's nothing against Islam. But in your case, what you have done is you, you claim you were born in a Shatriya family, but then you're doing the deeds of Asia. So you have demoted one step down from your higher It's class. not about demotion. It's not about promotion. It's about the soul is on a journey. The Brahman are closest to the God. We really so all are not, inclined so to be Rahul, closer to them. Rahul, you're not fulfilling that. And also, I'm not interested on. in like saying anything against Muslim. I'm just giving an example. No, but okay. if the Brahman so, is closer to God, that means the Shatriya is the next step closer to God. Yeah. But you have gone even right. one step below that. You have gone to the third step. You're going far from God instead of going near God. And that's that's precisely right. what we're so saying. I, that why why that is negative not... that's not progress that's demotion actually but anyway let me like, ask you this question Ra Ra let me ask you this question do you believe in the hindu scriptures yes to an extent and to an extent they are fabricated so there are like Ra manusmriti there is also vishuddha Manus manusmriti which has been like the fabrication part has been eliminated by the uh, scholars itself, which Sam Stavon usually quote, and most of them are also false quotations. So, so which, which scriptures are not? Which, which scriptures are not um, um, falsified or, or sorry, they haven't been uh, corrupted? Which are not corrupted? Corrupted. So, I think Bhagavad Gita is good enough. So, because this is Kalyug, so Bhagavad Gita is but uh, Bhagavad Gita is part of like, Mahabharata. Well, Right. Yes, yes. So, so, so it is. It is still Shruti, you know. Sorry, it's it's, it's Smriti. And it is Itihasas, in fact. I'm saying about what makes you I think the Gita is not corrupted? Because Hari, but, 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 Hari but, 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 earlier, if you ask Hari, he said the story of uh, of Ram is something that is corrupted. So, is the story of Krishna not corrupted? No, I, I don't agree with Hari. You don't, anything, don't I don't agree with Hari it. that. The Ramayana has been corrupted? Yes. I No, no, no. Because there has been many Ramayans. The Vidya itself has wrote like more than 40, 50 Ramayans. Yeah. And uh, the... Uh, Which means like, they all can't be true, can it? No, no, no. Because they are come from different Kalpas. That's a different concept. No, uh, no, hold, hold on. If you have different versions of the same story, then surely right. it is corrupted. No, it's not corrupted. It's from this front kalpa, the Sanatan Dharma. Okay. Let, let me ask you this. Eternal Dharma, there are let, different kalpas. Let me ask you this. Did Ram exile his pregnant wife to the forest? Uh, I think that Kant was also being like, debunked by scholars. That is not, it's also been debunked. It is corrupted, right? Hold on, hold on. No, so no, it's corrupted, no. right? According to yeah. you. No, no, no. You no. just said it's not it's corrupted. Not, now you're saying it's corrupted. Make up it, your mind. It's it's not corrupted unless until unless it's been corrupted. <laughs> it's not corrupted unless it's until it's corrupted. <laughs> right. You right. you really want to save your backside, don't you? Yeah. It's basically <laughs> no no you you no. It's not about saving our backside. It's about you trying to okay. push something. That is Rahul, not Rahul, I'm not pushing anything. This is something right. which we. This is something we presented to Hari Om, and Hari Om said it is something which is interpolated, which means it's corrupted. No, no, no. Now you're saying, look, look, you're look, saying look, look, wait a minute, look, look. I don't know what you're saying. Once again, let me ask you the question. Did Ram exile his pregnant wife to the forest by herself or not? I don't think, I don't think, no. You don't think or you don't because, know? Which one is no, it? No, no, because, because after Ayodhya Khan, the verses are like this, that... Uh, the, the Ram Raj happened for um, years and years ago and everything happened happily. But after that, even Ravindar Tagore himself has debunked the Khan itself. So I don't think it's much relevant. My friend, once again, if Rabindranath 
debunked something that it must be false then right many others have many others have because it so doesn't me, match so tell me is it, is it true or is it false which one is it make up your mind you still haven't told me whether it's corrupted or not it's not about making up my mind because it's not necessary for me to make up my mind no but you it. you made the claim that it is not corrupted but then you say rabindranath tagore refuted not, that if it is not corrupted right. why does he need to refute it because he was a scholar he was being studied Okay, so, so he, you are saying it's something. A simple brother, it's corrupted. Exactly. It's very when simple, it, brother. It's, it's corrupted. It, you only it, need to refute not, something it, that is corrupted. Not. Otherwise, there's no need it's for refutation. Make up your it's mind. Not. Otherwise, that. It's okay, not. Now you, now you are just, you know, you're just saying it's not because you can't make up your mind. Because he's saying he is. If, because he's saying it is. That's no, how it is. I'm saying you are saying you are saying that Rabbi Nath Tagore refuted the corrupt version. You are it's saying, not Garam Bhajan. I mean, it's not Khan because the Ramayan was not uh, the Ravindranath Tagore said after Ayodhya Khan, the Ramayan ended. Rahul, there is no extended version. Yes, yes, it is interpolated. Then I want to ask one, one simple question. If you extend, if one right, like thousand more pages of Quran, no, Quran be corrupted. Now, Rahul, Rahul, one simple Quran question I'll ask you: How many, how many types of, how many types no, of, how many, how many versions are are there of uh, Ramayana? There are many versions, forty different versions. <laughs> many, many versions. So, what do you, what do you, so what do you think about it? Is it corrupted or all forty are correct? Uh, may... It's simple, simple. So, major four, different. major four Ramayans of Vedas were considered as main Raman. Then Tulsi Das Ramcharitra Manas was correct. Uh, Considered as the eternal, uh, like guidance for brother. everyone. It's corruption. They are more than. They are more than three hundred. They are more than three hundred. Because they are more. Because they are more than. Because they are more than three hundred kalpas. You don't understand the concept of kalpas. Yeah, and in and in one and in one Rama, na the Sita is considered as the sister of Ram. Right, because the right the, good. Right. Now, you, was now you agree, right? Was so this is the this everyone is the corruption. This is the corruption. This is the corruption. We because do not. Timeline was we do not. Timeline was brother, 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 calm down, calm down, please, please. We do no, not no, know the authenticity. Of, no need to shout. Calm let down. me. Calm down. It's calm down. We can have a civil discussion. I'm, I'm so about Krishna, I'm not, there is there is no there is no authenticity of Ramayana, brother. We don't find any manuscripts. Nobody is sure which Ramayana is authentic. There is no authenticity of the authenticity of anything, right? Not even Quran. Ramayana, Ramayana. I'm talking about Ramayana. It's corrupted. So I'm talking Many about people say that there is no, there is no authenticity. Yeah. So, you, so you you consider it as a corruption, right? I don't consider you, it as corruption sure. because our concepts are different. Your view of seeing things are different. Your template okay. are different. So you want to think that corrupted, uncorrupted, brother, everything brother, because brother, we work brother, on a brother. concept of. Brother, sorry, sorry to sorry to ask you. Are you a teenager? I'm sure you are a teenager, right? Uh, I'm thirty plus. You're thirty plus, but behaving like a uh, school guy. Come on, brother. <laughs> uh, can I speak? Yes, brother. Yes, King Rahul. Let King Rahul speak. Yeah. Uh, Rahul, you you spoke about Ram. You know, he was a Brahman Hatyara. You know, and you read the Ramayana all the day. He likes that title. How could you? How could you read a book? That goes against your data. How could you do? Yeah. That? Who was the father of Ram? What about the Brahma Hatya, which was done by Ram? Ram Who was the father of Ram? Read a book of such a big sinner. Who was the father of Ram? All right, guys, guys, let's let's we're getting diverted again. How could you? Uh, how could you praise Krishna uh, for uh, going against the Vedas? Uh, he said, "Hey, there is no caste system. You can do everything what you want." How could you do that? He never said that. He never said that. <laughs> okay, let's let's not divert from the topic. So, let me ask you this, Rahul. You you mentioned you you believe in the scriptures. What do you think of the Upanishads? I haven't read Upanishads, so I don't know much. But I don't. Do you do you know whether they are something you can trust, or would you reject them? I won't reject anything until unless I read them, interpret them correct correctly, and understand the reason behind them. Do you read Sanskrit? Yeah, some you do. Uh, mostly, mostly. Mostly, okay. That's how I know. What do you think? What do you think of this passage? This is 
Chendogia Upanishad. It says, now people here whose behavior is good can expect to enter a pleasant womb, like the Brahmin, the Kshatriya, or the Vaishya caste. But evil people can expect to enter the evil womb, like that of a dog, a pig, or an untouchable caste, the Chandala. What do you make of this? Yes, because it's based on karma what's wrong with this. Okay, so karma decides that everyone who's born to a Chandala is an evil person in the past life. No, no. That's what, what? it says. Read again. Evil womb and a good womb. There's a difference. Right, right? evil right, right. Evil womb means uh, like you will be born in an evil by uh, an evil mother or evil family. That's how it is. It's not like uh, uh, no, but here, will, here it says here it says the three different costs, Brahmin, Kshatriya, and Vaisya are the good womb, and the Shudra yeah. and the Chandalas, everyone below that are evil, according to this. And in fact, they are not, think, e not only evil, but they are at the I, level I, I, of pigs and dogs, I, animals, you know. What do you make of that? No, no, I, I, I think I have to verify that. I don't, I don't think that's relevant. Do you want do you want the Sanskrit? I can give you that as well, no problem. Here it is. Read it for yourself. Maybe Swati can help you read it if you do, if you can't read Sanskrit. Most Hindus can't read Sanskrit. Can you read Sanskrit, Rahul? What happened? Can you please close it? I'm verifying it by myself only. No, but it's, it's here, it's on the screen. You can help it's yourself. There, and it's written in Sanskrit with the meaning which is word by word explanation of the meaning which is there. Yeah. Well, if he wants to verify himself, he can do that as well. No problem. Uh, any other Hindus here? Rushi, I don't know if you're a Hindu or not. Rushi, are you there? Yeah, but I'm not Hindu, so. That's why I asked you if you're a Hindu. <laughs> okay. I didn't, sorry, I didn't assume uh, you were you Hindu. Can kick me out, it's fine. What, is, what is your religion, if you don't mind asking? Uh, I'm, mine is uh, Jain Darshan. Say again? Jain Darshan. Jainism. Oh, you're a Jain. Okay, interesting. What brings you to this stream? <laughs> no, because you mentioned karma, right? So I thought... Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Now, I also like, because I have gone through Hinduism, like right. studying, understanding, practicing. Are you, are you so, a practicing Jain? Yeah. Oh man, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so tell us, I don't know how long you've been listening to the stream. No, I've been listening for like like an hour or so more okay. than that. What's, so, what's, but I, uh, what's on your like mind it, today? It feels a bit contradictory because I think what you guys have not done is to look through the prism of logic. Because okay. sometimes you feel like that Hari Om person was saying you might be, he's contradicting what he said before. For example, he said that if he's righteous, then, and he choice the, the latest person, he said he's a Vaish, uh, Kshatriya, but he become Vaishya. Now that's yeah. very logical, even in the standpoint from like the Dharmic uh, scriptures, because it all, it's all about karma, okay? Of course, I have a guna, you know, I also born in a family where they were uh, businessmen. But I'm, a, I'm making job. Just no, because the, I'm born there, the, it's choice. Choice is important. No, and no, whether it is logical or not. The question, Rishi, there's a difference the between says, being, born, yeah. being born in a family and you're then labeled as, for example, as an untouchable just because you're born in a particular family. It's nothing to do with your deeds in your current life. It's to do with your deeds in your previous life. And that's where this Upanishad, which I just mentioned to yeah. Rahul Singh, is checking the translation if it's correct or not and which is a good habit actually uh, I think everyone should do that you should always verify and especially if somebody is not from your religion because it can be biased uh, so always verify for truth and this is something that we learn in Islam yes uh, we always ask people to verify things we don't just take take it at face value all the time right so you know this uh, Upanishad which I just showed to Rahul Singh what do you make of that do you think this is logical? Uh, sorry, so, sorry about that. Sorry, can you please repeat the what exactly it said? Because uh, okay, it's on the screen. Can you see it? Sorry, it's um, on the mobile. Let me see. Okay, I'll read it's it for not, you. It's not me. okay. It's from Chandogya Upanishad five point ten point seven. It says, "Now people here, 
whose behavior is good can expect to enter a pleasant womb, like the Brahmin, Kshatriya, and the Vaishya caste. But evil people can expect to enter an evil womb, like that of a dog, a pig, or an untouchable caste, like the Chandala. Is that logical? Logic. If you say logically, yes, from the like socio con context, like in India, that would be seen in differently. No, no. How is so it logical? Say, so how is bat, how is a, how is someone who is a human being, first and foremost, considered to be an untouchable just because the society has labeled it as such? See, see, see. You are just repeating my point now. What I am saying, whether it is logical or from societal point. So, which one you are concentrating now? So logical. I'm talking about logic, obviously. Would you consider any human being to be untouchable? So, see, when it says untouchable, what you are saying, you read is Chandala, right? Yes. So, Chandala, see, that was considered untouchable. So, you are going to societal. Now, let's stick to the logic first. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I'm not going societal. I'm, I'm whether you live in a society or whether you live alone by yourself. Would you consider? Anyone to be untouchable, any human being. Unt I don't think untouch asprush. I think what it says that then. You should go and look the definition of a chandala. No, ch see, chandala is a person who is a bad person. Now, if you put it as a blanket person? statement on a people, no, 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 no. See, people, let me tell you. I'm go I'm going to tell you the real event. Okay, even my like my grandmother sometimes when she gets angry, she used to call me chanda. Does that mean I belong to that caste? No, I'm from no, the no. same family. There's a difference. Wait a minute. There's a difference between somebody labeling you based on your deeds, and there's some. There's a difference between somebody labeling you based on which family you took birth in. Yeah. Do you understand? See, that's, what, see, that, that's what I'm saying now, because that means it's a uh, you're moving into societal construct. No, now. I'm talking about the birth, my friend. Your womb, the womb of a woman, is where the birth takes place. There's a, how can a, a womb be evil or good? You tell me. A mother's womb, how can it be good or evil? In any context. No, evil. If, uh, if you're talking about dharma uh, context, it means uh, with respect to the its deeds. So yeah, if, but if, deeds, for example, so, deeds based on your previous, previous uh, life, previous birth, <laughs> not your current. You know when when uh, when when your mother uh, was pregnant with you, yes, she she just called it my baby. It doesn't matter whether you're a Shudra, you're a Chandal, you're a Brahmin. Every mother will love their child. Okay? No woman, sorry, no mother will ever say what is in my womb is evil. No so, Hashem, there is no such evil. thing as womb mentioned here. So, Shudra Yonam means birth of Shudra. Yonam and Yoni is different. I've verified it. Yonam means birth. Yoni means that here it is. Fourth, uh, so okay. I have so a birth, birth, wait, wait. How is a birth different from yeah. from the womb? A birth has to be based so, on the womb, right? You cannot you cannot divorce a, a womb yeah, from a birth. A birth, a birth. It's it's basically used for it's birth. Very, no, see you you see. Is is it my turn to speak or someone speaking? Yeah, so Rushi, once again, the question the question to you is this. If you're going to use logic, would any woman consider what's in their in their womb to be evil? No. I mean, no, like you're saying no, she, you're I mean, you're see, now you're going into opinion, like what he considers, she considers. My if friend, mother, is always, no, everything we discuss here is an opinion. Nobody says it's a law. The question, the question is, if it is in your scripture, then it becomes law for you, okay? But for us, it'll still remain an opinion, and and vice versa. What is in the Quran is a law for us, but for you, whatever you interpret is a, is an opinion. So everything we discuss no, discussing no, here a, is an opinion. That's a mischaracterization mis of what the way you're interpreting it. So let me ask you this: If I if I take a quote from the Quran, would it would it be an opinion for you when you interpret it, or would it be a law for you? See, you in your mean? understanding, it's a verbatim word and it has to be followed. So I gave you the respect that's why that's I, what your that's understanding why I said, is. That's why I said, do you believe in the Upanishads? My first question to you. And you agreed you will believe it unless it goes against the logic. 
but isn't that a good thing is that the right thing to do how is it a good thing for a woman's womb to be labeled as evil from it's day not, one it's from not, day it's one not it's not woman's womb it's not the woman's womb 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 Rishi, Rishi, you're not understanding. The child, I'm not basing it on deed. I'm say, my focus here is on birth. Yes, from birth, what from if, birth. That means what even that's before the child has been delivered, it's already considered as an evil womb, an evil it's birth. Because that person, that mother, that might be evil herself. <laughs> what, uh, uh, in which ground, morally or ethically? How is the child evil? I don't understand. Do you not see the logic? Even I, if the mother is evil, no, let's say I, she's the worst very, person in the world. Evil. How is a it, child from day one evil? Even the word, even the word evil is not there. Okay, so it, what is what word is that? It's just like saying in good, uh, good birth and bad birth. That's all. Okay, so why? No, evil, okay, let me ask you. Rahul Singh, Rahul Singh, let I me can, ask you. I can. I no, can. Why no, are I the three? Prove. Why are the three three different class classifications? The Brahmin. The Shatriya and the Vaishyas, uh, why are they considered to be the good birth, and everyone else considered to be the evil birth? Why? Because they are the closest to the God, and others are like because of their karma, they have to like work more to be closer to the God to attain moksha. That's you, all there is. Do you not no realize, Rahul Singh? Do you not realize this is since inception before you have committed any deeds at all? You have already been labeled. We as have committed evil. deeds. You don't understand the concepts of Sanatan. That's the problem. This is a mischaracterization. Okay, which part did I because not understand? I have said previous life the determines the karma determines your rebirth and the your previous life. How how did I mischaracterize deed, anything? The deeds, the karma happen eternally until you attain moksha. Yeah. So I have, every, how did I yes, how did right. I actually I, I don't know, mischaracterize any of that. I did not even mention that. So how did I mischaracterize it? It's a mischaracterization if you're saying, right. Okay, let me, let me ask you, be frank, Rahul, be frank. What did you understand from this Upanishad passage which I just quoted and which you double check? What, what is your understanding of that passage? Go on, explain it to me in your own words. It means that a person born will be a less spiritual. That's all. No, 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 no. That's not. That's right. Not that's, 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 that's that is the, that is called the only white version given by Swami Lokesh Lokeshwar Ananda. That's the interpretation given by. What, what did he say? Give me, give me his exact words. What did he say? Go there on. are two types of there are two types of birth: natural birth and spiritual birth. You will be born a natural birth into a particular lower varna and will be given a guna as per your previous karma. But you will not be spiritual. You have to take. A certain again, birth again to be a closer to a god, then you will attain a moksha. Let me ask you this: Did you see the mention of a dog and a pig in the same sentence as the chandala? Let me check. <laughs> I thought you already verified it. Okay. No, anyway, no, so, I, I'm I'm verifying it by word by word. No, but so, you 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 know before you gave your understanding of the passage. What is written? You 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 just admitted you haven't even read the mistake the start now. I found you a mistake in the start. start. You didn't even read the full thing, and you already given. Because conclusion. there is a mistake in the starting interpretation only. What what mistake? You said the bad. You said the evil womb. There is no such thing. Yeah, that is at the end. Womb. That's not the yeah. start. That's at the end. You are not even reading it. No properly. no 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 no. You you said no, no, no. interpretation, read the whole thing and then give a conclusion. So let me, Rushi, while you are finding the conclusion, let me ask you this. You are <laughs> you are saying false Rushi, things. Rushi, hey Rahul, go and verify it, man. Stop disturbing us, Rushi. Let me ask you this: Would you consider a woman's womb or birth of a child equal or at the same level as a pig and a dog? No, no. It says in the so no. Okay, sorry. What, what what is the actual verse? What is you, the actual verse? I just thing? showed you. I just showed you the passage already. I gave you the reference. I gave you the passage. I gave you even the Sanskrit of it. What more do you want? Look Wait, at this last. Look at this last line. Uh, Rishi, okay, like that of a dog, a pig, and a chandala. How could it be false? Okay, huh? tell me how is this logical to compare the birth of a child 
to that of a birth of a dog or a pig see so what you are doing and let me explain you yeah, what you are fundamentally saying is that if a person does in action in his previous life they should not be there should not be any accountability that's what you are basically saying which is like completely goes fundamentally against your own understanding of your own religion no so i'm asking you, saying you the person is not the accountable for his deeds rahul is that what you're i'm saying? asking you what is the relation with animals and the birth of a child where is the relationship why there has this no passage why i i, I bet rahul singh will say there's no dog and pig either in this passage no no there is a dog and pig but there is, there is no uh, why compare why compare the birth of an animal to a human why there is no comparison the verse is saying that you will be take birth as a, uh, as a dog as a pig for a casteless person it's not like your a woman womb is uh, uh, comparable to a dog's womb or pig or something like that it's okay. a misinterpretation so, yeah, and mischaracterization okay so now now that you have said do you at least acknowledge there is a good there is a good birth sorry uh, birth to a good individual like that of a brahmin kshatriya and vaishya and a bad individual the words, the at words least do you acknowledge saying, that or you don't acknowledge that either the bad words happen because of your karma you will be born as you, a dog no, or a i do not ask you why it happens all i'm asking is do you acknowledge there is a good womb and a, and an evil womb or or a good womb and a bad womb good. good birth or bad birth yes okay what is good what is good birth explain that you are predestined to do bad things because of your previous karma and you will uh, uh, if you are not spiritual you will repent do bad things and if you like be if you become spiritual or if you are inclined to a god you will like uh, you will like uh, do all the bad uh, things in this life only then you will attain god in uh, th- that's the concept of karma and that's the concept of birth only bad birth there is okay. no such thing at like a child is born evil we will like do something in the as a infant no but that's, hold on like hold on when you say you're destined to do bad okay are right. you saying that every chandala out there which are millions i think probably are they all bad not bad but they will suffer because of their previous one you will suffer as well even as a kshatriya i will why not exactly so what's the difference between you why are you so, good and they are bad why i will i will, so why, myself, why are you a good bird will, and they are a bad bird i will incline myself to a god then i will maybe not in this life and then in next life i, I will attain you, you see once once again you have made the mistake of going based on the deeds in this birth i'm saying before even you are born you have already been labeled as a bad uh, uh, as as a bad womb it's not labeling no, this womb is already been labeled as bad brother it's uh, not labeling brother it's you not understand from birth you have been labeled as bad already no 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 it's not labeling okay, it's so understanding that in the human what? life you have to do good things and devote your life to your god until unless you no. do that you no. will Achandala. suffer these consequences You know, a chandala. If he touches a Brahmin, the Brahmin takes a shower. Do you know that? That that's like you are putting some. Why are you laughing? That's that serious. By the way, that is serious. That's Because thing, you have you, you again. You yeah, are answer. putting verses again. Then I have to verify it again. Please be on a certain topic. No? It is the same topic. Oh, it's about it's about no, 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 no. it's about cost system. It's 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 all the no, same no. topic, my friend. Okay, what's your definition of a chandala? Uh, what's your definition of a chandala? Let's see if you, yeah, if you can find that out from your Google. Go on, go Google chandala and tell no, no. me what's the definition. I have a hard book. I don't Google. Mm-hmm. Sorry, hurry on. You you got a lot of disturbance in your. Rahul, I have I have a question for you. When Krishna died, where did he went? Did he went to hell or to Vishnu Lok? Whom is that question What? for? For Rahul. Rahul. Okay. Uh, because according to Jain scripture, he went to to hell, and he was put in three hell. hell. He was put in hell, and he was put in four hell. But he Rahul is actually Rahul is not Jain. Rushi is Jain actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I know that Rushi is Jain, yeah. but Rushi knows that according to their scripture, Krishna is in hell. What about Krishna? He is God. 
listen, listen, listen. In, as per Shrimad Bhagavatam, as per Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is God. So the Hari was saying that he was not God. So scripture doesn't agree with that. He was God in What's the wrong? entire Bhagavatam. What makes, he was what makes Ram Bhagavatam. God? What makes Ram God? I'm I'm not sure about Ram because I haven't read the entire scripture. Only so you you time. already concluded his God and you still you know you have de- you have done this second time now. Before because, reading it, you already you, make your conclusions. I don't know. I don't know. You're 30 years old. It's not about it's not about conclusion. Conclusions are something that you're making right now. You just said because he's God. The, when I asked you what makes him God, you said I haven't read it. I have yeah, probably not read it. You that's don't even know what a conclusion is. Okay, anyway, listen. Nowhere, nowhere, go... nowhere in the Hindu scriptures it says that he was went well. Okay, so Hari... read, your, read your own scripture. It's, it's written there clearly. I have spoke also. If you are talking to Rishi then... about their Jain scripture, then you can talk to him. But in the Sanatan yeah. scripture, in Mahabharat, in but Bhagavad Gita, also there, nowhere there. In he is, uh, he, According to the to the Jain, he is also a, 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 a Swami Deva. Yeah. Rishi, you can say something. I don't know about. No, so Rishi, Rishi, have you have you understood uh, what I'm trying to convey with regards to the Upanishad passage? What is your understanding sh- so far from that passage? The, what I'm getting from you is that that if a person commits something wrong or good, he should not be held accountable. For no, no, example, no. that's not what I said at all. <laughs> no, no. Fun, see, fundamental pre- premise is important, right? No, if everyone. You think, oh, why did you put me in the jail? Oh well, because you robbed. Listen, or everyone. What did I put you in jail? Accountable for their deeds. I have no issues with that. What yeah. I'm saying, what I'm saying is that when you label someone as a criminal from the from the very inception, yes, even before they are born, they have already been uh, like like Rahul Singh said, they have already been destined to do bad. Okay. It's to me, that is fundamentally something. illogical and flawed, and it's unjust. See, if a, no, see, no, 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 it's not bad, it's not unjust, because it's purely logical and also just. Because okay, how is I'm it logical bad... to call someone before they have committed any deeds to be labeled as or destined to be uh, doing something evil or bad? See, how is it logical? He already, he already explained, it is based on your karma. If I do something bad thing, do you expect no, no. me to born in a good place? Okay. That, that's not let logical. Me give you, not let me give you an example from Islam. Do you know Shaitan or Iblis in Islam? Yeah, you all know Shaitan, right? Let me ask you, do you know whether Shaitan was born evil or was he not was he born good? Uh no, I I don't want to speak about Islam at all. So I just um, want I'm to just asking focused. you, give your opinion. Nobody's going to hold you accountable, don't worry. Give me your opinion. If you don't know, say I don't know. No, so, no, so you said he was born. Yeah, was Shaitan since birth evil or he became evil later on? He chose to be evil. No? Absolutely. See, that's the difference. No, but no there, one, is, no, no, there is no even difference. the Shaitan who is the is biggest wrong. enemy of mankind, even for it's him, false. we do not say that he was born or created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be evil from the very beginning. Because then it would be unjust because if he's already created evil, then there's no option for him to do any good. Just like the Chandala, according to you guys, he's born evil, he's born bad. No, no, no. There is no reincarnation. It's a false analogy because uh, Iblis was or the Shaitan was not reborn. We are talking about a person or a soul reborn. That means there is an accountability for what he did previously. So this the is a false analogy. Is, after being reborn, do you even remember what wrong, what what sin did you commit? No one remembers the previous life. Nobody knows. Nobody knows about it. That what wrong did you commit in the previous birth? So how are you going to repent about it? How are you going to correct correct that thing? That did you ever think ignorance? About that? You have to understand. Ignorance is not defense when it comes to justice system. No, it's not about ignorance. It's about due justice which needs to be given. If you're giving punishment to somebody. If- Who's no. been born as Chandal or who's born no, as no, no. Rudra and he has no, to it's... suffer. He should at least know what wrong did he do in the previous life that he's got it's... this one so yeah, that he could make it's... a correction. By and the way, this is, not, this is not, there's a difference between if a, not if a knowing person... at all and ignorance, okay? Ignorance is where you have an option to at least learn. For example, we live in an era of information age. Today, ignorance no, is a choice. 
Okay, but for those people, there is no option at all to know what they did in the past life. In fact, even for you, they, they have you, believe, you believe in karma, you believe in rebirth as a Jain. Okay, do you remember anything in your previous life? It's not do about you believing. Know why are you born? Okay, do you know? Anything? Do you know what you did in a previous life? Yeah, nobody knows. Okay, so it don't tell me it's ignorance. It's got nothing to do with ignorance. Ignorance is where you have ignorance. an option to know something, but then you deliberately ignore uh, that particular uh, option. Who is deliberately okay. ignoring anything? You, it's you are saying, you are saying there is no harm done here. There is, there is justice in the karma system. I'm saying there is no justice. It is, it is the most because logical if you, system. If you don't even know what you are being punished for, how is it justice? Yeah, what is so, the logic? So in, in 1960s, okay, okay. I will, let me answer. In 1960s or 50s, there was not enough information, or people didn't know whether the smoking causes cancer. So if a person smokes a cigarette, an action. And if he gets a cancer, is it an unjust system? That's nothing to do with justice. That's nothing to do with the system of justice. You know, you there is a then why did we get cancer? No, no, hold why did on. We get when, cancer? You, when you don't why know, why did we get cancer? Rushi, hold on, calm down, calm down. I know you're getting excited. Okay, I'm asking you a simple question. Can you please answer this? Do you know what you did in your past life? Uh, at this moment, no. At any moment, do you know? From here, I can, from the day you were born until the day you die, would you ever know what you did in a past life? Yeah, if I if I move towards the spiritual path, then I will of course know. Which spiritual path? The Jain path, no. What is the Jain path? The Jain path is the uh, is path to the salvation towards moksha. What do you so need to one, do? What do you need to do as a Jain to attain moksha? You have to first understand the scriptures and start following. Then you start uh, progressing through your spiritual path. Okay. Do you, you think, do, do you think you will ever achieve that in your life? I have to keep on working on it, right? And, but and, uh, but the thing is, would you ever know about your past? Did any yeah, of your Jain yes, did yes. any of your Jain priests know what they did in the past life? No, see, th that means uh, to be because you, when you say knowing about the past, what you're talking about an enlightened being. Past life. So if I reach that position, and yes. Not, and mind you, it's not one life. It's been so many yes. lives which has been carrying on and on and on. So each life, not knowing what wrong did you do and just suffering like that, how can you call that system of justice to be logical? Not knowing, but, uh, I don't does that justify not doing? Are you saying not knowing means I have not done it? No, no. Not knowing means not you knowing. will never ever know in this case what you did in your past life for which you are being punished. I know right now because in our script is clearly mentioned everything that happens is because of karma. So the question of knowing does not come across. Question so is, this uh, is objection is nullified. Is so the karma, Rush, the karma system. Uh, Rush, I have a question for you. Can yeah, I yeah. ask a question? Uh, yes. Where is Lord Krishna according to Jain scripture? Where, uh, is, yeah. he? where is he? Where he, is Krishna? He's in hell, yeah? He he's one of the Narayans and he's going yeah, to become the in hell. Huh? according to Jain scripture. He is also in hell. Yeah, same like uh, Bhagwan Mahavir also was in hell. So yeah. the, I don't so see the objection. Still now, still today, he is still in hell. By the so way, Krishna is Krishna from and a, and he's in hell. How Krishna is from a Kshatriya family as well, or is he a yeah. different? Okay. No, yeah, because of that. his violence, according to Jainism, he is yeah, exactly. Forever. That's what that's the connection I was also making. So, Rushi, that's he actually a very good point from King Raman. Raman. What do you make of that? Yeah. Are, no. Kshatriyas, are Kshatriyas like Rahul Singh going to hell or heaven? Yeah, it depends upon their karma. If they, well, as a Kshatriya, as a Kshatriya, are, are you allowed to kill? Well, let's go to hell forever. Huh? You know what? According that's to Arjuna, point. sorry, according to Krishna, it is Arjuna's dharma to kill his own cousins. So that doesn't fall under the Sankalpi Hinsa. So is that so someone that, who's is that someone who's going to attain salvation, Arjuna and Krishna? Uh, but over how the will life he get salvation when Krishna himself is in hell? How will somebody who's already in hell give salvation to somebody else? My humble <laughs> submission. You, you don't understand trying to understand the dharmic perspective at all. You're trying to just impose your worldview. No, no, no. I'm just asking about I'm it. saying with all due respect. 
No, I think you you you're not you're I'm, not respecting. I'm, I'm understanding completely yeah. everything. I understand everything. Okay, so I let me ask you. Yeah. Let me ask you uh, once again, Rushi. Uh, you are yeah. you as a Jain, you believe in non-violence, right? Mm -hmm. Can I speak? For a Shatriya, uh? his his dharma is violence. Yeah. When needed, when needed, yeah, when required. Like in so the case you, of Arjuna killing his own cousin brothers. For him, according to Krishna, that is his dharma. So it is in complete conflict to your Jainism, and no, you somehow not. are trying to defend. No, it's not. You're trying to. Okay, let me ask you this: Can a Jain be a shat, uh, Can a Jain be a warrior? Yes. Okay, so he follows violence or non-violence. So okay, let me explain. What when you mentioned what ahinsa? Ahinsa, it's a, it's a. I don't have time to explain everything. Which are you pulling back from a scripture, or it's still your own subjective opinion? No, I'm talking about if scripture. I understand scripture, everything. Again, if you say, yeah, man says, okay, can, is is him, can, I, can I speak? Can I speak? Let uh, let, Jane, Ra let Rishi. But, I do not speak my opinion. But Rishi is not displaying non-violence. You're not no, no, he's, non he's saying he's you saying you do not understand. Be... Thank you for confirming. You do not understand non-violence. Thank you. Okay, yeah, most welcome. There's there's Thank no you. need to be condescending, Rushi. Okay. No, see, he's we, been we condescending here. We don't disrespect here. you. We are just asking you questions. So we are trying to I'm get. Jain, I'm asking about ahimsa. I will explain to you. Yeah, so go on explaining that without the condes condescension. Okay. And without yeah, but, this. Don't Goodness. don't impose because if Nobody you impose, impose you're asking you know, question. Who is asking question? Imposing. Yeah, plain simple. Because, no, no. It is. When I, see, when I say impose, imposing your understanding. Please understand nobody what. Nobody When we ask you questions, nobody is imposing. Right. It's a okay, question. Let, let me. Is okay, let me explain. Okay. Let me explain. Okay. Let, me explain let me explain. Ahinsa. Yeah, go on. Hurry, you are. Oh. You need to mute yourself, man. Okay. Can I please explain? Yeah. Go ahead. Ahinsa or hinsa. Ahinsa means non-violence. So first we have to understand what violence is. Violence is any anger, hate, lust, greed, all these passions. Which when you demonstrated they... a, a minute back. Yeah, sister. So okay. 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 That's fine, guys. guys. Thank you again. You are confirming the ignorance of Jainism. Stop. Stop being condescending. Act Please like stop her as well. Stop interjecting. These are yeah, very. I, I did. These are very, I did already say. Don't interject. You just complete your statement. Go on. Yes, please. Because these are very profound and uh, principles. Okay, these are understood very clearly. It's yeah, fine. It you can reject it. No worries. Please reject it. But please understand. Then reject it. That I cannot say. Point, I just get to the point, man. Come on. Okay. Yeah. So first, I gave you the technical definition. Now, the absolute no-no when it comes to violence is called sankalpi hinsa. It means attempted murder, attempted violence. Now, what does that mean? Now, Hashim has not done anything to me. If I go and plan against him, that's a complete no-no. But what if uh, Hashim uh, attacks me? That does not mean I have to kill him, but can I defend myself? Yes. Now, is there anger, hatred, lust, or any vengeance in me? No, I'm just defending myself. So it is all about your parinam. What is parinam? The way your soul reacts. Is it anger, lust, greed? The same thing. It's very clear cut. So if okay. I'm a if I'm a soul yeah, here, because you are for Kshatriya. No, no, Kshatriya, because you the context of Kshatriya. If I'm a soldier, I don't hate the enemy. I'm defending my country. But if it's not always defense. It's most of the. It's a lot of time. It's also attack. It's not always defense. Yeah. So what would you? So say if you that? are a soldier, Rushi, that's the reason I asked you earlier. If you are a soldier, but, you're you're bound to listen to your commander and obey your commander. If they want to attack a neighboring country for their own gains, they can do that. So you would not be a good soldier if you are going to disobey your commander. Just like a Shatriya, according to Arjuna, it was his dharma. Yes, to kill and attack his own relatives, his own cousin brothers. The what do they what what do they call the? Yeah, his the, own yeah, cousins. The Korvas, yeah, the Korvas. Yeah, Korvas. Yeah, the Pandvas and the Korvas. So, Rishi, once again, if you are a soldier, will you obey the command from your commander, or would you disobey based on your understanding of what ahimsa is and what self defense is? If I join the army, then I will be following the rules of the commander. 
Okay, so, so if the commander says to attack the neighboring country yeah. because it will be advantageous for them, um, it is not self-defense, it's going to be an offensive uh, war. Would you be okay with that? No, uh, you are really ask a good question because there are actually an incident which is explained on our scriptures because there are two brothers who are fighting for power and their commanders clearly said to them, just because of greed of your power, why should we die? And they said, if you are two kings contender for the throne, you fight yourself. So what so is the answer? Clear... For a Jain, when your commander says offensive war, let's go for it. Are you going to disobey your commander or are you going to obey him? No, that will... See, the scriptures will not uh, give any permission to do that. There you, go. So you, the, can't be, you can't be a soldier then. Drop yeah. it. Drop yes. it, Roshi. Mm -hmm. Okay, based on your earlier statement... You said, it's okay for a Jain to be a soldier. Now you're saying, I will follow my own rule. I'm not going to obey my commander. No, it's about choice, right? Or no, I just, like, you, 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 I you, you will be court-martialed if you disobey the commander. Do you know that in an army? Yeah, and what's Go wrong with learn that? the basics before you say I'm a soldier. Okay, so can Jane, I, let me ask you this. Can Anyone, I not be a conscious any, ob object? Listen, listen, listen to this next question. According to Jane, are you allowed to eat meat? No. Anyone who eats meat, are they going to be good or evil? No, good and evil is the Abrahamic concept. Okay, what do you call Everyone it? Will what, what do you call somebody who eats meat? Hmm? What do you what? as a Jain call someone who eats meat? No, there is certain karma, right, which will attract. Good and evil is Abraham concept. So what is this entire rebirth and, you know, karma theory all about? You are being, you suffered in a particular varna because of, because of the evil that you did in the previous birth. Exactly. So what are you no. talking about? That evil, no evil, evil and good is your interpretation. For example, we'll, ex it's we'll not understand. Interpretation. Somebody is getting born in a particular family and suffering for the whole life. And you are saying yeah. that it's my interpretation. They have, they, it's, it's, not, it's the, it's, it's not the evil my interpretation we yeah. understand our scriptures who follow that no but and you're our understanding born, you're is born spiritual in, a, in nature you're born why would as I untouchable? impose your into mine rushi your brain know. is an untouchable as a consequence of the bad you did if you want to call the bad as evil or bad it's up to you but there is clearly a distinction between good and bad or good and evil whether yeah. you like it or not. The whole, like like Sister Swati correctly said, your entire karma system is based on that. No, in Rushi, no you but, yeah, but where is it, where is it uh, illogical? Uh, uh, that's my question. Where is it's it not illogical. Wrong? You're the one denying good and bad, good and evil. Yeah. When no, entire I'm karma denying system your is based on good and evil. The I'm denying your interpretation. What's that? I'm denying your interpretation or Swati's interpretation because okay, so you, I tell you what, why don't you define karma first? Go on. Let's see if you can do without the good and bad. Even the terms good and bad. Let's see if you can define karma without that. Yeah, because karma the entire action. Varna system, Varna what system action? collapse. What do you mean action? Karma has karma no means consequence. Karma action. No, but does karma, karma has... Kar, kar means action. No, kar means the deed. Okay, your deed is a karma. Now the question is... Karma is deed. Kar means action. I'm without action, the how can there be a deed? I'm talking about the word. I'm talking about the system of karma. What is yes. the consequence of your deeds in a karma system? If you do good, you will get good. If you do bad, you use the term good. What is the next? Hello. Go on, continue, continue. Hello. If you do yeah. good. Yeah, but what you are saying is that. Well, uh, complete the sentence. If you do good, you will have good consequence. Complete the rest. No, that that is a statement. No, no, it's not the end. In karma, the the consequence of a good deed is good. But what is the consequence of a non-good deed? No, you will suffer for that. So, you, are you saying you so, should not suffer? Man, you're, you're in denial. You don't even realize yeah. that. Why would no, you, no, you, you guys good? are in denial. The only reason you suffer is because you're bad or evil. Come on, accept yeah. it. Yeah. Acknowledge it. Uh, no, bad you're, and you're evil no, is you're a, not you're, playing you're judging person. You know that. You're playing you semantics do, because you no, have no, you judging, yourself in the world. See, good, as soon as you say bad, you're not judging is Abrahamic concept. We don't judge. No, no, you, no problem. You, you you think you're judging. Judging. You're judging. You're judging. No. Karma is all about judgment. <laughs> it's not it's judging. Not there is not a person sitting who is judging. There is no person sitting who is person. judging. The system itself is judgment. So are you saying you, the person who smokes cigarettes should not get cancer? That's what you're saying? 
not necessarily no. not everyone yeah, you yeah, agree with me cancer. you know that not yeah, every individual me. not every individual who smokes gets cancer not everyone who takes drugs gets cancer not everyone who drinks alcohol gets cancer every yet, every person yet, who smokes cigarettes uh, enters the toxic chemicals in his body yes, now the body acts differently everyone doesn't get cancer do you agree exactly I, that's what the karma says okay so no. the karma is aligned with the you know, you, system and hold logical on, hold on. your entire definition of karma is within the boundary of good and evil <laughs> you not realize that good and evil is what you're judging in fact even with it. the example of cigarette smoking the uh, the consequence is what good is cancer good or is it is it bad cancer it's an, it's bad for the body but why are you treating it as a why are you saying there's a, no good and bad, good and bad. If you already are saying every example you gave is about good and bad or good and evil okay let me let What's me make it you? good okay let me let me prove it is subjective no, honestly, let me do that subjective no, I'm, i'm actually wasting my time with this yeah who oh, is yeah. she we just fighting for semantics yeah. so hurry where is he gone hurry you wanted to say something yeah, yeah i wanted to say you know i have a yeah. feeling it's not jane this guy was a hindu He was, a Hindu. Like a jain. he was not yeah exactly yeah he's definitely not a jain he was not a jain at all neither through his conduct nor through his uh, you know arguments hurry i'm gone what do you wanted to say yeah. man there's a lot of disturbance from your microphone now it is fine better yeah, yeah but thank you uh i want to say that the word chandal that uh, uh, the yoni yeah. means family there when we see the yoni then i can really hear what you're saying there's so much disturbance in your mind yeah Hurry. it's again coming okay okay is, uh, i think you got a fan is there a fan on somewhere in the background <laughs> rahul mute yourself man he's singing at 4:00 right in the morning is right now No, no, it's still no. bad. I think it's a uh, you. You probably got a fan working in the background somewhere. Fan is off, unfortunately. I don't know. So maybe something little... with. Why don't you leave and come back? Maybe rejoin. Uh, yeah, uh, I am yeah. rejoining. Yeah, just leave and rejoin, and then it should, it should probably fix itself. Uh, can I say something about hold Jain on Hindu? Rahul Singh hold, hold on ex Hindu Suleiman guys guys hold on let me introduce the new guys who are in there yeah. ex Hindu Suleiman are you there is there uh, yes i am there assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam how are you brother you right alhamdulillah pretty good how are you guys yes very good what's uh, what brings you to the stream today uh well i've been watching uh, this particular streams like this series that you have started on hinduism from okay. quite some time i've been watching it and uh, finally i managed to join it because you guys generally conduct the stream on thursdays right so it's a bit hard for me to join that time since okay, so saturday is good for you right? yeah okay no problem um uh, anything on your mind uh yeah okay so uh the word chandala actually uh, in certain contexts it can mean uh, uh, people who kind of remove the skins from carcasses and all of animals and but it is a so called lower caste the word chandala that is uh, it is not and, it is not only lower caste these are outcasts so they don't even yeah, belong exactly, in the four yeah. varnas they are outcasts yes. and uh, like when uh, the word yoni or something is mentioned like can you show me the exact word uh, mentioned in the verse that you showed from the upanishad okay do you read sanskrit uh, no actually but uh, so, because uh, if you look at uh, like in the bhagavad gita chapter 9 verse 32 the word over there used is papa yona yaha so uh, in certain context uh, it can mean family lineage also Okay. So, so the the word here is the chandala. What is it? Chandala chandala yoni. Chandal yoni. Basically, yeah. chandal birth. You know, it's basically the birth, hmm. the chandal birth, which is being yes. talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And even so, in but the, when it is said, the chapter nine verse thirty-two, uh, Krishna mentions that those who take shelter in me, that is in Krishna, uh, even though they may be of lower birth, and he Correct. mentions. Mentions women, uh, vaishyas, that is the business class, and the shudras. In right. that uh, particular verse, he puts them all three in one category. Yeah. Right, right. 
He puts them all. It clubs them all together. All of yeah. them in Papi only. You know, Vaishya and also Shudra and also women. Vaishya mm-hmm. Shudra stepe yani param gatim. That's what he says. Take refuge in yes. me. If you do that, then the Striya, the Vaishya star, the Shudra stepe yanti param gatim. You will get. You will be then. You know. You'll get the param gati, the supreme destination. So, okay, right. So I just want to introduce. Uh, we are going to close the stream soon. So I'm just taking this last few uh, uh, people in the I, background. Yeah, this is better now. Yeah. So, uh, China. So, what do you want to call yourself, Uncle? You can call. Assalamu alaikum, Hashim. I have salam. a different. Uh, I have been trying to. I'm living in China for the last 22 years. Oh, mashallah. And uh, there is some misconception about China. Some certain issues. So I want to take it up with you when you finish this for a few minutes, and then uh, I was trying to get into any of the streams because I am getting a lot of questions, pressure from China to rectify this. Okay. Um, why didn't you wait? That, why didn't you wait yeah, in the background? Sure. We'll we'll have sure. a chat I'll, after the stream, uh, inshallah. Uh, I wouldn't perfect. mind listening to you. You waited so long in the background. I thought you wanted to share something with regards to the topic. Have you got anything? I, 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 I am totally in, into your discussion. Listening in, I'm very... Okay, okay. I'll, it's very helpful for me. No I problem. can wait in the background, no problem. Inshallah. No problem, inshallah. Right. Uh, Zatos, are you there? Hello, uh, am I on it? Hello there. Yeah, we can hear you. How are you? You alright? Uh, yeah, alright. Okay. So, where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm from India. Okay. You you call yourself a theist? Uh, any specific yeah. theist? Uh, actually, uh, let me give uh, give you my uh, background. Uh, I was okay. actually born uh, into a Hindu family. All right. And uh, later on, I became an uh, somewhat of an agnostic. Uh-huh. So uh, recently, about I think so two weeks ago, I had a discussion with uh, Amirat. I think so. You know, we say yes, yes, uh, yeah. And uh, I was uh, a bit uh, interested on uh, Islam and uh, uh, Buddhism, and also, uh, are you aware of the Arya Samaj of yes. the Hindus? Yeah, yeah, I was a bit interested on them, and uh, after like uh, dis- having a discussion with them, after reading and uh, researching and stuff, I I became a priest uh, right now. Okay. So how how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I'm in my twenties. Okay, in your twenties, you're still young. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to discuss, maybe Sam Stallone might help you because, uh, inshallah, yeah, yeah. His, his streams are quite so, uh, knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every Wednesdays at nine thirty. Yeah, inshallah. Okay. Uh, inshallah. You have anything so, to share with us on this topic? Uh, yeah, actually, I just wanted to like uh, compare. The uh, some of the Islamic concepts with the uh, Hinduism with Hindus, uh, uh, Hinduism. So I hope that you can answer it. Has like, it got uh, anything to do with this topic at present? Uh, you can say. I think so. I'll ask the questions. If you think that it is related, then okay, you, go, we ahead. Can go ahead. So uh, I want to talk about the uh, justice system in uh, Hinduism and uh, in Islam. Okay. According to uh, Islam. The I believe the primary thing is that uh, you have to be a believer, right? Sorry, primary. You the primary thing. Just repeat what you said because I didn't quite catch it. Like uh, I, I'm speaking of the uh, justice system in Islam and Hinduism. Okay. I just want to compare stuff. So uh, I want to ask: Is that uh, the primary thing in Islam to go to heaven is? Oh, uh, I see. Believers to be believers, right? You mean the he- heaven and the hell concept? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like we we have that. Right? Yes, yes. So I just want to ask that, uh, that this thing you won't find in uh, Hinduism. So don't you think that the uh, uh, the Hindu side is a bit like more just than this? No, 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 no. I, mean, I like, think you they, would, they I have think... they have heaven and hell. It's not <laughs> eternal. That's the only yeah, difference. They, but, yeah, but that's not the uh, but not everyone believes in that, and uh, like you, you, I think the majority of the Hindus they, they have that. Narg and Swarg, yeah, which is heaven yeah. and hell for them. And but the only difference is they don't consider it to be eternal, they have this rebirth, and yeah, yeah. until they attain moksha, yeah. 
they keep suffering yeah. Yeah. So from eternity beginning they yeah. suffer yeah. until they get moksha yeah, yeah. yeah. eternity pass until moksha basically yeah. every yeah. birth every birth you suffer and then you have the inter- entire he- hell and heaven the punishments which are mentioned there in the garud puran so like you know you have no escape at all but even who, if you like, i told you uh, there's no heaven and hell in hinduism who told you this like uh, as i said i right? Uh, in Hinduism, I uh, I'm more inclined towards the Arya Samaj, and okay. uh, they they reject the heaven and but, hell. But the Arya Samaj is a a minority. They are only like what a million or That's something. That's true. It's yeah, it's true. A minority. Why would you has, Why would you reject the majority of the Hindus who interpret the scripture like Hari here, and uh, and go with the Arya Samajis who mis sorry misrepresent most of Hinduism. And I, I mean, I, 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 I they are revisionists, actually. Yeah. I, I mean, like I don't completely agree with them, but I agree with most of their views because I find uh, that's the most logical part. Of the so, like, okay, so is that your criteria? So, How do you establish someone is speaking the truth or someone is just trying to win you over based on your emotions? How do you identify the difference? Uh, like, I guess so. You know it's which is the truth? How would you know that? Uh, based on their arguments, like I have watched a couple of debates or uh, some videos of them, and uh, I, I felt it quite convincing that I think so. This may be the truth. Let Let me ask I you mean, this: I, Do you believe? Do you believe God is able to communicate with us? Yeah, I believe yes. Okay, so if God can communicate with you, is He able to tell you specifically what He expects of you? Yes, I believe you can. Okay. I mean, God, now, if now, he's there, this, then he knows everything. In this scenario, right. where does your understanding, your logic, your whims and desires come in? Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. I know exactly I mean, what you want to say. I'm trying to understand your criteria to establish whether this communication from God is something which is factual or something that is made up. Because if you agree um, God is able to communicate with you, then the next question would naturally be, say, for example, if you have the Torah, you had the Bhagavad Gita, and you had the Quran, what criteria would you employ to identify which communication is actually from God and which is just an allegation that is from God? I would say which makes uh, quite sense or quite logical. Okay, so does it make sense to you that somebody will be born um, to an untouchable woman because of their previous uh, deeds in the in the um, previous life? If, Is that logical? If you talk about un- untouchability, then uh, that exactly not, not only untouchability, everything. For example, the Brahm- the Brahmana are the highest caste, and the lowest are the Shudra, and the ones beyond that are the untouchables, like the Chandalas um, or the Dalits. Look, actually, how would uh, how would it be logical to to be born in a family and be be i don't know be condemned from the day you're born as a lower caste for example absolutely that's uh, not logical at all and uh, that's something which the arya samajis do not believe they do not believe in caste system so they don't they, believe in karma they, yeah they believe in karma okay. i i i guess I, i'm not sure of that but uh, if it's in the Vedas, that is the basis of Hinduism. Do you know that karma? Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously. Otherwise, you have no justice system at all. But uh, the karma, what what you are speaking of, can be different from what different uh, other Hindus believe. Okay, so what's your understanding of karma? Just uh, like uh, what a demon understands with karma. You do good, no. then uh, good, I think you have good. a very you have a very uh, sort of like cursory understanding of what karma is because karma has there there is pradab there is sanshad there is kriyamana so what you're talking about in the present no, 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 present I, karma that's just that's just a minuscule part of it there's there's no, a lot I am not that. much aware of that yeah. I actually I'm not much aware of that yeah but do you believe do you believe in rebirth do you believe in the in the consequence as uh, as rebirth, as good or evil in the next um, life, based on your deeds in this like, life. Like as, like as I said, I I believe in a higher power, but I'm not exactly inclined to any religion, so I can exactly uh, say something on that. 
Okay, so look, we I all believe in a higher power, but you see, yeah. the most one of the most important things, you know, many people say, especially the Christians, they say that, oh, you have to focus on love. But then, you know, in Islam, the focus has always been on justice, because love without justice is just meaningless. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Yes. Yeah. So the question, the question I'm asking, because you see, in Islam, everyone is accountable for their own deeds. Yes. And they only get one chance. There is no rebirth, rebirth. You don't get multiple chances. One chance, this is the test in your life, uh, regardless of whether you are, uh, whatever your background is. In this life, everyone is tested in different ways. And God Almighty is all wise. He gives a test to you, which is not beyond your scope. So for example, if you, for example, you, if you, if you're good in, um, I don't know, let's say you're a strong person. God is not going to give you uh, a task, uh, which is something which is beyond your means. You have certain strength, you'll be given that. So you won't be asked to carry a burden greater than you can actually carry. So the question is, I, because you have been given a test in this life, um, you, your, your akhira, your next life, will depend on how you perform in this life. So imagine you're going for an exam. Yeah, the teacher knows all the answers, but the teacher is not going to give you the answers. The teacher is telling you clearly that this is a test and you, depending on your hard work, uh, your or, or basically lack of hard work, uh, you will see the result of that after the test. Yeah, this is similar to our... Uh, if you know you wanted to inquire about the justice system in Islam, every individual will be uh, given a task based on the, whatever they can uh, carry. It won't be overburdening for them, but then they will have to go through the task in this life until they breathe their last. And after that, there is no more option to redo the test. See what I mean? Now, okay. when you see the consequence after in the next life, you know, on the day of judgment, then that will be based on what or how you did in this life. You did good, you yeah. get good consequence, but for the, mo the most important for this, you know, just like any test, for example, you go to give the test, the most important thing is your identification, um, your acknowledgement that you're going to sift the test and your acknowledgement that you're going to you know at least what test you're giving. So for us, the most important thing is that if you do not acknowledge God Almighty, then regardless of what you did in the test, you will get your reward in this world if you did good or evil. Um, maybe it's some of it is left in the next world for the evil doers as well. But if you reject God, then it doesn't matter what you did, everything is worthless for you in the next life. Okay. Yeah? But uh, now, if you compare it with the yeah. uh, Hinduism, over yeah. there, the first thing is that uh, blasphemy is not counted as sin, as far as I know. It was, yeah, but you know, for us, for us, even even worse than blasphemy, even worse than that is shirk. See, you know that so shirk is if you reject that. if you reject God Almighty, or you 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 consider somebody else as God besides the Almighty God, then that is shirk. So all these things like murder, rape, um, even blasphemy, all of this comes as secondary. The most important thing is the biggest sin is shirk. Maybe in your logic, you think that, oh, it's not a big deal. But when you in, in Akhirah, in the next life, it's going to be the biggest deal. <laughs> it's going but, to be a deal breaker uh, for you if you reject God. Okay, I agree. But uh, don't you think that uh, a person committing murder, rape, or such crimes is being mm. forgiven because oh, of his no, belief? No, who told you that? Who told you that? In Islam, I, you don't just... I, I, you don't just get forgiven. You ask for, <laughs> no, just if you ask for forgiveness, I, uh, no, no, no. I know that. I believe that if you ask for forgiveness, you will be forgiven. For no, that. no, that's not true. In yeah. Islam, there is two types of forgiveness. Okay? Or two types of sins you can commit. Two categories of sin. One is where you commit a sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, against God. So the, the, the vertical sin. And the other is a horizontal sin where you commit sin against uh, the creation of God. Do you understand the so, difference? So if you commit so if a, a sin against is... Allah, Allah is able to forgive you. Yes, if he wills. Okay. Allah is also able to punish you if he wills. 
Okay, but the sin against the creation, for example, um, if, if a Muslim brother commits a sin against his Muslim brother as well, yes, the unless and until the other person forgives him, yes, he will not be forgiven just like that. Allah will hold him accountable on the day of judgment. And on the day of judgment, the other person against whom, whose rights he might have taken or whom he might have backbited or done any sin against him, on the day of judgment, that person will, will be given the good deeds of this guy who wronged the other person. And if he runs okay. out of good deeds, his sins will be put up. The sins of the person whom he wronged will be put on him. So you, you can't just yeah. be forgiven like that. Allah is the most just. No individual and, uh, brother will be treated Hashim, unjustly like, uh, on that day. On the day yeah, of judgment. Brother, Allah. Hashim, you mentioned about the uh, day of judgment. And uh, yes. this is in addition to the already extensive penal code that the Quran and Sunnah give. For, Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, just for the, the, you already will yeah. have the consequences of that. I mean, obviously it's different in a non-Muslim country. But if you live in a Muslim country under the Sharia, for example, if one person murders another person, then it's life for life. Yeah, either that or the other person demands blood money, or they can even have the option to forgive. So the, these three options but, are given uh, to the to uh, the victim family. Okay, but uh, what for for now? But for what I have read, uh, I think that's applicable only for Muslims, right? I mean, like uh, I don't if, know what you have read. If, what did you read? I mean, like, uh, that's called the kisas, right? Blood for blood. Yeah, life for uh, life. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, what, what I have read, uh, what I've known for now is that uh, it's only applicable for Muslims. I mean, like, if a Muslim murders a non Muslim, then the non Muslim oh, will no, not no. like. For, Who so, told you that? Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> if, if a Muslim, a non -Muslim, no, if a Muslim if, murders uh, a non Muslim, then also he'll get the penal code, he'll get the penalty for that as well. Exactly. <laughs> He will get, but not uh, death sentence. I, I did. Why did you read that? Like, or, I, I read in uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia, come on, man. When, you, <laughs> when you're going to, you know, do research, do a serious research. Okay, good. When you're done, when you're going to do research on Islam, go to Islamic sources, which are credible, uh, rather than just going to Wikipedia. Wikipedia can be written by anyone. Uh, anyway. Uh, what is? I, I was. What, saying, what do you think of the Hindu justice system? Yeah, I was speaking that uh, even if you consider hell in Hinduism, it doesn't. Pun uh, it punishes you for only a particular amount of time, not for eternity. So, don't you think that that's a bit more logical? Sorry, say say that again. Hinduism yeah. does not. Uh, e even if you believe that hell exists in Hinduism, it yeah. does not punish you for eternity. It punishes yeah. you for a particular amount of time okay so let me let me ask you this do you do you know the uh, the soul in hinduism your atma yeah your atma is eternal right yeah okay by the way not according to the arya samajis so you probably have to read up that <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah it's, my, uh, my knowledge is actually quite superficial so yeah. i'm i'm sorry for so your, your, your Atma is eternal, which means you have been suffering from eternity past. Okay? Yeah. The difference between eternity past and eternity in the future is the only difference between Hinduism and Christianity when it comes to the justice system. So either way, one eternity, if you consider one eternity to be unfair, then you should consider the other eternity to be unfair as well. But once you get the Moksha, then there's no... Uh, rebirth and all the stuff. Yeah, but the thing is, I, you, you don't even know during the rebirth what you're being punished for. How is that just? At least in Islam, you know, during this but, life, whatever punishment you get, you know what you're getting it for. In the afterlife, you'll be told why you're being punished as well. There is no injustice here. In Hindu uh, karma system, number one, you don't know why you're being punished in this life because you remember nothing from the past life. Okay. Number two, there's yeah, no agree. option. There's no option of forgiveness. It's just mechanical. Good, good. Uh, good. Uh, you'll get a good reward. Bad, it's a bad reward, or or, or an evil uh, birth you'll get. But uh, there's, there's if no you option say, of forgiveness. Until, but unless, even even if I remember what I did, it does not change the fact. I mean, like I, I will have to suffer for what I am suffered. Even if I remember, 
what I did yeah. in my past life. But you Still, don't. Uh, it doesn't thing. teach. No, you, but if you at least you don't remember, that's the thing. You no, will never saying, remember. He's speculating. He's saying hypothetically, if he remembers, he's saying. Yes, I know he's saying that. Yeah. But I'm saying that you will not remember. That's the thing. So the option of if is not there. right and even and even if in the worst circumstance we say that if if you do you know if you do remember that's that's what we had, we'd been talking about that even if you do to to give somebody a birth of shudra and such a discrimination which goes against how yeah. just is that even if you do there is no forgiveness at all there's no second chance at all the way you're saying no that it's that there is it's for eternity where is the second chance here within hinduism in the system of justice there is no second so, chance uh, it's not necessary that you have to born in a uh, india or in a hindu family yeah, you can be born like anywhere in the world maybe in you can, africa and in fact, a... and you know what you can even be born as an animal a cockroach a rat anything you it, because it has you know so many yonis that you go through so many so many births that you go through it is said that the human birth is something which you get after going through so many births and imagine so so yeah, yeah. you know yeah so you're talking about country you would not even know what you would become imagine yeah. you imagine somebody becoming a pig and not even knowing why they have become a pig and what what compensation repentance would they do you know with that kind of birth so it's it's very haphazard in that ways and it's not very logical at all but uh, still i believe that it's better than being burned in the fire for eternity i mean like don't yeah, you yeah but why, why are you looking at only the burning in eternal hell fire what about the bliss in the heaven yeah what about that's that that's what i'm saying like uh, for you have, the, you have life, the option look in islam you have the option to go to hell or heaven or be forgiven and go to heaven in karma there is no forgiveness yeah so, at least in islam you, you could be no born as a cockroach yeah. and you don't know why in fact exactly. you don't remember anything islam, from your past you know what we are being punished for or yeah. Yeah. what is the best thing a cockroach but, needs to do to become a man again but uh, again if you look and uh, if, if you do good karma you can be born like in a like a really good family like you you can also look in that side as well I mean, I can dream of being a king or like all all those but stuff. But you know what? But what the thing is, these that it's not for eternity. You can be born in a good family, but then again, it depend depending on your uh, you know karma which you would be performing. You could again you know fall back. You can again maybe you know turn into some other family and suffer. Yeah. But yeah. here at least I... here at least paradise is for eternity. Once you're there, then there is no looking back. At least. And, but, and uh, don't. Uh, don't you think is, that for a no, life you, of you uh, keep saying eternity let me term. let me tell you something about that it's not unjust and i'll tell you why so allah in the quran says that even if uh, the people actually will ask allah give us a second chance so we go back in the world and do the good deeds and become god conscious and so on you know what allah will tell them that even if i'm i'm paraphrasing here that even if you are sent back you will you will re- you'll do the same thing again So Allah knows that even if they were given life of eternal life then they will continue doing the wrong things that their nature has uh, succumbed to because they have become disbelievers and they will continue to disbelieve and continue to do everything that Allah has uh, told them not to do they'll remain disobedient for eternity so it's not unjust unfair they're given the kind of punishment that they deserved um but yeah. by that logic don't you think that we should be put into heaven and hell from the like uh, beginning or what's where is the test why this where is the test my friend like uh, on the day of yeah, on the day yeah, of judgment yeah. the people who have been put directly into hell fire uh, will ask allah why are we in this place in the hell fire what have we done to deserve this what yeah. answer do you think yeah 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 we, I, 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 yeah so there's no logic but, in such a thing however what allah does like i said one of the things allah says in the quran is that he will not be unjust to anyone whether is muslim so, muslim uh, male female black white doesn't matter in hinduism yeah, yeah. this caste system is you know from the very birth you have been discriminated if you're born as a lower caste until you, you mean, die you are yeah. you will suffer and and if you're born as a brahmin even if you are the worst kind of brahmin you'll be given respect of exactly uh, brother hashim may i add yeah. something for 10 yeah seconds? sure go ahead yeah. 
in fact the ram charit manas which is written by goswami tulsi das it says that even if a shudra shows uh, like uh, desirable behavior or respectable behavior he does not deserve to be respected in society and like, even if a brahmin and even if a brahmin shows disgusting behavior you know uses swear words and all even then he deserves to be uh, worshiped yeah. and uh, uh, respected in that case so yeah okay i uh, i wanted to ask a question that uh, for, for example a person is there he he knows about islam but he's not much aware of it i mean he knows what a muslim is but he's not much uh, like depth he did not go uh, much uh, into the depth if uh, he dies as a disbeliever will he go to heaven or hell but so that's a somebody is a muslim or someone who has a choice yeah a non muslim like that, that's what i said a non muslim he uh, he knows about islam he knows about muslims but he's not much like uh, he never accepted it is he did not uh, research deep about it what if yeah. he dies as a disbeliever you know when you don't research deep if you understand the basics for example if i were to ask you do you believe god is one or multiple what would be your answer you haven't researched My answer deep, <laughs> what would be your answer i believe i would say that i i believe that god is one Like if he exists and yes he is one okay so you believe god is one did you need to do yeah. deep research for that um no i i would say no exactly yeah so allah allah is not expecting you to become a scholar in order to go to jannah okay but if you but want I'm to attain, saying, like, it, if you want to attain the highest uh, maqam in jannah like jannah al firdaus then obviously you have to be um in terms of scholar or in terms of your god consciousness no, it, i uh, you will be rewarded i'm saying own. that uh, i'm saying that uh, he rejected islam i mean like uh, he reject, he never felt like to uh, become a muslim uh, that's what i'm asking say again if he, he, he never like uh, for example uh, if you look in india itself people yeah. are aware who, who are muslims or what is islam people are aware of that but they do not know the uh, depth of that they do not understand the gravity of the religion so i'm saying that uh, what if that person dies as a disbeliever is he going to heaven or hell you know one thing is as muslims we do not judge anyone okay even if they die in the, unless allah tells us specifically like in the case of uh, abu jahal you know in in uh, surah al masr allah mentions him and his wife are going to be burning in hell fire okay so this is a clear explicit passage about two individuals in fact you know abu jahal is actually uh, one of the uncles of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even he yeah. will enter hell fire and allah has already destined him for that while he was still alive 10 years before he died okay even i think in the quran it mentions that the wife of prophet uh, lot actually is also yes. being punished in the afterlife in surah yeah. tahrim i think that's right yes so in in terms of the uh, um the people who have been explicitly mentioned to be in hellfire we can't know who is going to because we don't know what state they died in do you understand okay. even if it's a, a pious muslim okay we can assume the best for them yes there was a case where there was a sahabi and he stole something uh, during the uh, d- uh, d- during the war uh and he was considered to be a, a, a someone who's going to paradise as a martyr yes as a shaheed but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no he stole something and for that he will not go to paradise so you see we can't okay. judge only unless you have the knowledge uh or something like that like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did you can't know so we leave that judgment to allah subhanahu wa taala we don't okay. judge them but generally the rule is if you if you reject islam uh which is the only religion allah will accept and if you knowingly reject the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when you have studied him uh, and you know about him then yes your abode will be in hellfire but like i said this is general not specific every individual will be judged by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and allah will not be unjust to any one of them okay so okay. uh Could you give me a logical, or could you give me some like uh, proofs or some uh, like the reasons why I should believe in Islam? I've given you the reason. One is justice, which is quite paramount. Belief in the oneness of God, which you already do. Uh, I mean, like, uh, you can say this for the same for Christianity, uh, I guess. 
simple and unambiguity which is present in the text unlike yeah. so much of contradiction confusion which is there within hinduism not a clear cut idea agree. with regard to yeah. god for example they, the hindus are not even clear about who the supreme god is you know every different sect within hinduism they have their own supreme god where there's a god or a goddess even that they don't know yeah as well, far as i know the uh, clear cut you know it's the message is clear we got one book we don't have multiple books where you have to decide whether this is reliable this is unreliable uh in fact within the books itself you see a lot of contradictions you know one of the principles allah mentions in the quran is that if this book is from anyone other than allah you will have no contradictions in it so you, if you, if it's other than allah you'll have a lot of contradictions yeah. but if it's from allah then there's no contradictions in it yeah right. and this is a principle we apply across the board you know when we look at the bible when we look at the the hindu scriptures or even the jain scriptures all of them yes they will have internal contradictions as is clearly demonstrated today between two hindus you know hari om and the other guy who came um who was a shudra they were clearly at loggerheads they were disagreeing with each other in islam even within the different sects within islam they will all be unanim- unanimous uh in declaring allah has, allah as the supreme god almighty yeah yeah i agree yeah i agree the simplicity this. the clear cut you know when 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 somebody wants to save you when somebody wants you to pass in an examination they will give you the most clear uh instructions they will not confuse you because somebody who tries to confuse you in order to for you to uh go through the exam he doesn't have your welfare at heart yes he probably wants you to I fail agree. somebody wants you to pass they'll give you the straight path and that's why we call it the sirat al mustaqim yeah. you know islam is the straight path there is no shortcut but, uh, there is the shortest uh, in fact uh, brother we repeat straight this line path, uh, yeah this line we repeat around more than 20 times a day eh din sirat al mustaqim guide us to the straight path, path. Yeah. yes Certainty, which yeah. is there. So, in terms of the oneness of God, in terms of even the messengers, you know, like I was, I don't know if if it was you, yeah, I think it's probably you. I said, is God able to communicate with you if He's Almighty? Yeah. Yes, yeah. and we believe in the books, we believe in the messengers, and we believe in the angels who are also messengers who brought, uh, like Angel Gabriel, who brought these messages for us. So all these things, you know, are quite simple, quite straightforward, quite logical, unless you know, going in circles, you know. Hinduism uh, I don't know Hari might be able to correct me they have been here for thousands of years Islam is fell when I say Islam I mean from the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the 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 wider definition of the term Islam is anyone who submits to the will of one true god okay and we believe that from the first man Islam has ex- existed in fact even before that yes Islam has existed always So we don't say Islam is a new religion but from the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam today it's been 1444 years within this small period Islam has grown dramatically and is still growing is still the fastest growing religion do you know why because the message is so straightforward yes yeah, sister swati i mean is a prime example here she comes from a hindu background and she yeah, yeah, yeah. i agree through her own uh, so way you know, by the way brother hashim even i come yeah. from right you as well you i see is the new, new river mashallah uh, we, but we, we, uh, i just want to say that uh, i think so people are joining a religion people leaving a religion doesn't uh, define its authenticity like sorry you say that people, I mean, what joining a religion or people leaving a religion it doesn't define its authenticity i mean a time was there when shani was one of the like it was spread all over no, no, i'm not talking about the number i'm not talking about the number of people because the number of people today is still christianity is higher than islam i'm not saying is the uh, number of what, uh, people i'm talking about when you listen to the people who have reverted who have come to islam yes who have converted to islam ask them most of the time they'll not give you an emotional reason Correct. yeah if you have yeah, many people yeah. who have who have become christians or who have left who call themselves ex muslim almost i would guarantee almost all of them have yeah. some or the other emotional reason to leave islam it's yeah. never logical yeah, have, what, yeah most yeah, to be honest uh, 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 tend to say that i had a vision of jesus and he saved me and he came in my dream and all like many yeah, people exactly. who convert to hinduism Anecdotal. tend to say that we have more freedom over here so it's never a rational or well researched decision it's 
it's just based on emotional uh, reasons yeah yeah so, i agree so Zatos, let me let me ask you what stops you from accepting islam as your religion because you have done um, whatever whatever actually, you have done tell me tell me your best or, or i don't know objection uh, against accepting islam as your faith and your religion and to actually uh, to be honest i i, I am quite close to islam but uh, there are certain things which like uh, i think so which after i get the answers maybe i can carry on like uh, for example there are some of the uh, quranic verses some of the hadiths which uh, which i guess so give me your best uh, i don't have the time to deal with every single objection of yours give me your best objection um i'll say that i'm actually still researching and uh, <laughs> later on i can uh, okay. say no problem but do look 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 at the end of the day you know we all are going to die one day whether you are hindu christian muslim atheist whatever it is yeah the only yeah, certainty yeah, I, which all of us will agree upon is death yes and allah says in the quran kullu nafsin dha'ikat al maut every soul shall taste death now you think that you'll as a, as a hindu because you come from that background you'll be given a second chance now look at the worst case scenario yes if you are not given yeah. a second chance then you 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 really are taking a huge risk aren't you yeah yeah right actually uh, i just want to share one thing that uh, somewhere i read it uh, and it is uh, i think so you know shake up at that so sorry by the way i just want to make one correction i think i was discussing surah al masad and i said abu jahal it was abu lahab actually okay yeah abu lahab but yeah yeah ab ilah bi wa tab yeah okay carry on yes so yeah i was saying that uh, once an atheist uh, he asked sheikh ahmed did that uh, how do you realize or how do you feel after death when you realize that the uh, heaven or hell the after life was actually a lie so he replied that uh, not worse than when you realize that the after life was the truth So Absolutely. this thing, like it, it, it quite touched me, and uh, I actually felt it. And uh, from that time onwards, like I'm uh, researching and researching and researching. So yeah. I uh, right know, now, you, you as an I, individual, because we don't have, we only have a limited lifespan, isn't it? You can research yeah. all your life you want, and this is exactly what the Shaitan wants. He wants to you to procrastinate, to delay it as much as possible. Yeah. Exactly. Like even in my case, uh, uh, yeah. Even in my case, brother Hashim, what happened yeah. is I'm from a Hindu family. Uh, went to like uh, I pursued Orthodox Jewish conversion for a year and a half, and uh, it's because of Judaism I ended up getting softened to Islam. And sometimes these phases in my life would come up for three, four days that yeah, I want to accept Islam. I feel close to it but then again after a few days it would go out of my mind so uh, this cycle repeated itself multiple times but then i uh, decided okay i just uh, the next time this comes up in my mind i'm just going to accept it i'm not going to delay any further so yeah, absolutely. yeah. because look if everything makes sense to you and you're just procrastinating or delaying based on the you know the whispers of the shaitan or other people uh, who might influence you against islam it's it's something which will be detrimental to you at the end of the day you know like i said look in hinduism you're given a second chance but in, in islam you're given only one chance and if that was true and there's no more second chance then you're taking a huge risk at least you know like if we were wrong if the muslims were wrong then we have the second chance yes but we are you know we are prepared for the worst case scenario you're not you're you're putting everything in one basket and saying okay i'll have a second chance but what if you don't what if this is the yeah, you're right. what yeah. if multiple yeah, gods actually, are false yeah. you know if you look at everything in hinduism yes today is become more like a philosophy it's not even a religion because everyone has their own understanding of what true hinduism is even the term yeah. hinduism is not mentioned in In yeah that's what i was saying there's no name to it hinduism is not there and sanatan dharma is just an adjective yeah. which is there so it's no, there to be yeah, honest, yeah, like if you put it bluntly uh, amongst if you just look at the uh, so called hindutva or the social media hindus for them being a good hindu definition of being a good hindu is actually liking modi and hating muslims that's all they care about so yeah, yeah. 
So my like, friend, yeah, like, actually, to be honest, uh, yeah, you, yeah you, like, you, you really need to, like I said, you know, put your head uh, together in terms of look at the seriousness of what if this was the only chance you had, you know? Like yeah, even, yeah, actually, even to be look, honest, I, I am closer to Islam. I would say maybe soon I will accept it, but uh, like there are reasons, some of the reasons which, uh, like, <laughs> I, I, you do you the know, streams like uh, every week, right? Is taste. What should you what you should do is if the primary major concerns which you had had got resolved and rectified, then it's like an ever going process which takes place. You know, one can keep on researching, learning, figuring out more about it because it's like a never ending thing. But if the major concerns which are there, if those have got sorted out, then I think you should not delay further. I agree, I agree. Uh, you stream every week, right? Yes, we do that. You want to actually? Yeah, so, do why don't you get in touch with uh, Sam? Um, yeah. And maybe you know he might be able to help you as well. Um, inshallah, they have a stream every week as well. Inshallah. inshallah. Or, or you can take our email and get in touch. You know, it's at the bottom yeah. right corner. Uh, Sam Stallone as well. I don't know. Is he still awake or is he's going to sleep? I don't know. He must be. A, he <laughs> may have gone for pleasure. <laughs> Okay, all yeah, right. I think that we that reminds me when I have to, I have to go for the. Fight. We 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 have had the stream for more than seven hours now. Um, mm. Unlike Swati, I'm running out of energy. I'm not as young. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Samba is probably going to sleep already. I don't blame him. And so, inshallah, I think what what we can do is, uh, yeah, come come visit us in our next uh, stream. And yeah, sure. In the next yeah, stream, uh, bring your questions I can. Um, if yeah. you have, and inshallah, we can take it. And from in the there. next oh, stream, like said, who knows? Maybe you, you may accept, you know, you know, you can research more, and maybe you would like yeah. to accept Islam. Uh, uh, brother, yeah, right. uh, brother Thies, should I write down my email as well in the private chat so that you can contact me in case I can help you? With yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, guys, waiting in the in the back chat. Uh, sorry, I think Harvey Om. Let me. He said he wanted to have a last word before he goes. Yeah. Uh, Harvey Om, you want to have, you want to say something before we close the stream? Yes. Go on. Yes, yes, I want to say something. Yeah, go on, say it. So I was saying that uh, I just saw the verse five, ten, seven of Chandu Yupanishad. They are the word yoni. So in the context, the translation is wrong. The yoni means the family. And it is also said, you know, some things are uh, used for metaphor also. But I I won't say that it is metaphor or not. So the chandal who eats the meat of a uh, dog. So it is said that whenever, uh, if you do something wrong, so you will get, uh, uh, you will be born in a chandal family and you will have to eat what is uh, prohibited in the scripture, yeah. like the... So Family, meat of birth, uh, meat, meat of dogs, etc. Yeah, but that yeah, is yeah, that is from birth, right? From birth, yeah. you have been condemned how, to do from, that. Hi, uh, yeah, from birth, you will have to eat. Exactly. That. How that is, is that? Just, and that is that's, huh. that's the thing. How uh, is it just when you have been condemned since birth uh, as to being someone who is, you know, treated almost like an animal, untouched? Yeah. How is that justice? Tell me. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you, uh, uh, before that, I just want to uh, know mm -hmm. that what you had said, Hajim, what you have said is that, you know, you said it's a family, Yoni is family. Basically, you know, when it when it says that Brahma Yoni, Kshatriya Yoni, Vaishya Yoni, basically they want to say Brahm, Brahman birth, Vaishya birth. You know, Kshatriya birth. Yeah, uh, even uh, yeah, uh, even in the Bhagavad Gita, the word Papa Yonaya has been translated yeah, so into sinful is, birth. Right. So that's birth, basically birth, or you want to call it family. In that family, you would be born. So that's the kind of thing: birth or family or womb. You know, all of that. It's still it's still from birth. That's a main point. It's still exactly. from birth. You know, exactly. that's a key point which we have been dealing in this entire stream. Right. When right. you have been condemned since birth as to your right. position in a society. That is worse than racism, man. Yeah. Uh, because I in want terms to of racism, ask. you only certain people will be racist towards you. Right. This is like the entire society has decided to consider you as an untouchable, consider yeah. you as someone worthy only to pick up rags and eat this dirty food, you know? 
and in fact it's uh, this feature is unique to only hinduism that against its own followers uh, they give such a kind of a status to their own followers yeah right. uh, absolutely that way yeah. when judaism is highly racist but that's towards the people who are not jews who are not descendants of jacob peace be upon him but in case of hinduism such kind of racism is against their own core religionists that's right. the even bigger issue yeah absolutely uh, so, i uh, i wanted to ask uh, last thing that uh, do you believe that like uh, allah he can do everything allah does what befits his majesty Yeah. So, for example, like yeah, for, say, for example, if I say like uh, he can create I'll something out of nothing. I'll just quickly go and you know pray, and we'll come back in case if it's going on for another ten minutes or so. Yeah, insh- you inshallah. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Sister Swati. I'll go let. pray, pray, and come back, inshallah. Yeah, go on, like, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, he can uh, create uh, something out of nothing. Can he do that? If he wants yes. to, yeah. He's a creator. He's, yes. he's alcoholic, you know. He does, uh, he's actually, not subject uh, to the physical laws like we are, you know. Allah existed long before uh, space and time existed, you know. So it's not something actually, like was, he, he's dependent on uh, all these things, which are he's is is not subject to anything. Yeah, he's, he's someone who is self-sufficient, independent of any of these so-called things which you consider in your in in, in this life. Oh, actually, I was uh, watching a debate about the uh, like concept of God in. Arya Samaj did us. So over there, the guy uh, he claimed that uh, the Brahman or the God in Arya Samaj or the Vedic God he, he cannot create everything. Like uh, he he cannot create anything out of nothing. Like because he believed that it's uh, illogical. It's like it, it doesn't match with science. So do you think that it is like acceptable to you? Well, you are making. God subject to the laws of physics. He is the one who created the universe uh, and every law within it. You know, he's the one who in, uh, is is the one who originated all this. So how can he be subject? Actually, to that? Uh, yeah, actually, the artists much they do not believe in uh, miracles. They do not believe in any uh, sort of miracles. Like even God cannot do something which is illogical, which is uh, miraculous, think, since it's not the nature. I think the Arya Samajis should consider that they themselves are the miracle of God. Yes, the human body, in fact, your brain, your mind, is such a miracle, which even will take humans. I don't know, eons yeah, to I, even I, bring I, anything I, fraction I, to that. Your eye, for example, you know. It's such a magnificent creation. Uh, it's got thousands or thousands or hundreds of megapixels more than what you can imagine in your cameras today. Yes. I mean, and like uh, they agree that. Uh, look at everything, the... you know, from the micro to the macro. Everything is yeah, miraculous yeah. in the sense that you see the sign and the signature of the creator um, in everything. Actually, they believe that the God which exists. creates and destroys the things but it does not do something which is like a uh, miraculous or something like similar why not? to that why do you think that is impossible for god because yes uh, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why the god does not take uh, avatars according to the arya samaj because oh, it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with avatars when when like god does something... when god does a miracle it doesn't mean he needs to come down to earth to perform the miracle Uh, because it is something which limits God to its potential or its capabilities. How? Because how does that... how does a miracle, for example, you know nothing like God creating, God doing all this? Even the term miracle, to be honest, it doesn't do justice, because this is something that God can do. A miracle is something which, for us human beings, might be miracle, but for Him, it's His nature. He's a creator. He's alcoholic. He can create from nothing if He wishes to. Yeah, agree. Uh, I honestly yeah, don't that, see why it would be against the nature of God. That's what uh, I was like uh, a bit uh, confused regarding. That. That's what uh, even though Arya Samaj makes sense, but some of the stuff I cannot agree on. That's one of the reasons I find. Yeah, because you know I the Arya Samajis, they are trying, like I said, to compete with the Abrahamic faith, and that's the reason they had to make all these amendments in their understanding, their philosophies, their thoughts. they're trying they cannot they know that hinduism cannot compete with this abrahamic faith where is simplicity yes the oneness of god the revelation direct revelation from god and so on it's impossible for them to compete because when you have 
like multiple rishis whose names you don't know and they have been meditating on and they get all these vedas and uh, much of it has been lost uh, you don't have any manuscripts of the vedas you don't have any anything to back up uh, the claims that it is thousands of years old you know you have some anecdotal or some um so a few things like the names of the stars or the names of the rivers but even if that was true what do you know about the actual theology within these books nothing it tells us nothing about the theology about the god his nature and so on right okay whereas I... in islam all these things are pretty clear you know allah has mentioned the 99 names uh, and he's also mentioned many attributes and many names um it's we know from his description race in hinduism they make all these idols based on just speculation like did krishna look like this did ram look like this did uh, any of their bhagwans or their deities or even vishnu or shiva did they look like that they don't know this is all speculation yeah yeah yeah, yeah? so and uh, yeah. even i from the uh, arya samaj they are quite like skeptical about the existence of god itself like in some of the debates i've seen seen this thing like they themselves yeah. say that if god exists like they are quite skeptical uh, skeptical about this thing uh, in so, fact uh, brother theist this uh, skepticism uh, it i think to an extent you can say it originates from uh, a verse in the rigveda book number 10 hymn number 129 there is a verse that no one knows who created this world perhaps even god does not know yeah, yeah. god doesn't know then no one knows so yeah it's kind of Um, that's I, and I'm that's willing. exactly what brother hashim was talking about earlier that if someone gives you such a confusing and complex kind of an idea then they don't necessarily have your good in their interests whereas something like islam which is absolutely certain in fact the first verse that was revealed to prophet muhammad it's surah alaq chapter 6 chapter 96 verse 1 uh where uh, angel jibril says ikra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalaq which means uh, read that uh, you this uh, like allah has created you from a blood clot it's blood clot right brother hashim yeah yeah so ikra the very first word ikra means to recite or read and this is something that we all should do so what you're doing in your research is a good thing but the thing is you your i don't know you're casting your net to broad to wide uh stick to i think the samstel on uh, masjid is mashallah so uh, they got fajr there so let me put it let i uh, i believe that maybe you should call an arya samaj in your stream and have a discussion with them Uh, it will well, be they can like, they can come and have a discussion with us if you if they want. Uh, to be honest, I'm not really maybe they are not uh, aware of this. Yeah, who knows? Guess. You know, they 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 have their own <laughs> they they have their own understanding, and uh, yeah. it's important for us as Muslims to to you know use our time wisely. You know, I can I've been called on all these different streams, but. Alhamdulillah, you know you can't. You can only do so much. Um, we we do one stream a week, and I think that itself is challenging enough. It's already been seven and a half hours today. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yeah, actually, it's because yeah, we yeah. enjoy these discussions. You know, we we like to yeah. interact with people. And today, you know, Mashallah, we had um, lots of Hindus today. I was surprised. Uh, we had Hari Om today. He says he's been uh, quite patient. Uh, he's been um, on our stream for a long time. So thank you for that, Hari Om. Really appreciate your only time. only last question. I want the last question. I want to yeah, ask. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I to make understand. I am just asking like the rhetorical question. As we have promised to Allah in uh, Alame Arwa mm -hmm. that our souls promise that uh, you are my Rab, and uh, so why didn't we human beings remember these things that we have promised to Him? because my family member and many people i see that they are worshiping idol and they do not remember their lord yeah. because uh, uh, if they have promised then why do not remember this promise that they have promised to allah in the uh, previous life i mean that in alme arwa so, so uh, explain what, what, what we call that's a good question what we call the fitra is something that uh, is in it within us you know so for example if anybody commits something wrong either a crime or a sin 
or something that they consider to be bad, I think their heart, their inner self will tell them that this is wrong. Their inner voice will tell them this is wrong. And this is something that is built in every one of us. Yes, uh, they have done actually studies, you know, where they would, uh, I think since uh, these individuals were children, how they would naturally be uh, drawn to uh, belief in a God, in, in, in a super supreme power. And it is always one. It is not some, some uh, entity which is multiple, like in polytheism, like in Hinduism, for example. Um, so this is something, this fitra within us is clouded for many of us. The more you listen, the more you research, it gets unclouded. And you start seeing the reality. You start putting the puzzle together and you get, so right now you might just have the pixel. Yes, but gradually the more you research you do, you start seeing the picture very soon. So it's all the most important thing for every individual. Doesn't matter which background you're from. Be sincere, be honest. When you see the truth, recognize it. And this is where your fitra will kick in then. And it always draws to the oneness of God. You know, that's the reason even the Arya Samajis, they are trying to uh, come to the conclusion that God is one, that God shouldn't be worshipped as, uh, as an idol. Yes, and that God yeah. doesn't take avatars. Yeah, uh, I think you believe that as well, isn't it, Hari? So yeah, this, yeah, I think I this, believe. Yeah, this is your fitra kicking in, I would say. You're starting to remember the promise you made to Allah, you know. But why didn't my grandmother, why didn't my father, why didn't my mom? Look, my friend, everyone is as an individual, they will have their test in this world. How you live your life, how sincere you are, how honest you are, how God conscious you are, all this is determined based on this life. Allah will not be unjust to anyone. Okay, take Take the uh, parents of some of the um, prophets and messengers, yes, like that of Ibrahim alayhi salam, like that of Lut alayhi salam, his wife, for example, yes. These were Even prophets and messengers. Yeah, we are ordinary Muslim. people. Can you imagine a prophet and a messenger, <laughs> their own family members, like in the case of uh, the, the prophet's uncle as well, Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, Abu Talib. Yes, he was so close to him. He loved him. He protected him. But Allah did not give him hidayah. Hidayah is in the hands of Allah. The more you work towards um, God consciousness, the easier Allah makes it for you. Yes? What did Abu Talib say at the end, you know, even when the Prophet ﷺ was like encouraging him to, to recite the shahada, to accept Islam? He said, at the end, he just said, what will my tribe think? What will my people think? Yes? Mm. Because his, what was his main focus was the dunya yeah. yes <laughs> the usual thing that people will say <laughs> and this is something we see in our daily life isn't it what will people think how many every individual here try to think every step that you have taken in your life many of those you probably have done it because of what people will assume or think yes like many of the people here don't show their faces lokya kahenge lokya sochenge it's probably from that, you know, that might be the re reason. But you might have some genuine reasons as well. I'm not saying that's the only reason. So every step you take in your life, put God as the priority and keep the creation as secondary. And then inshallah, you will see the truth. Uh, I wanted to ask one more thing that is God uh, formless. Is like Allah, is he formless? Formless? No, Allah does have a form. Allah has a surah. This, yeah. Allah says this in the Quran, yeah. And this is something which we don't know how or what it is. And that's the reason you don't see Muslims speculating about the forms and start worshipping them like in Hinduism. Yeah, in fact, we have a clear cut. Uh, For us, it's not necessary to know yeah. in this world life what the form of Allah is. And this is going to be a surprise on the Day of Judgment for us. You know, would you like, do yeah, you like yeah. surprises? Yes, we all like surprises, especially good surprises. Yes. And, Obviously, you yes. know, in Jannah, in Jannah, you will have the best of everything. But even beyond that, in terms of your happiness, in terms of your delight, in terms of this beautiful surprise, would be seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala face to face. And this is only reserved for those who go to Jannah, for those who go to paradise. The most yeah, beautiful thing you okay. have is that. Yes, to, to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your own eyes. 
So yeah, pray that Allah gives uh, you and us all hidayah to remain firm on the deen uh, until we breathe our last. So yeah, Ariyom, I hope you we have answered your questions and we we, we treated you nicely. We were not offensive to you or anything. Yeah, we were one, very friendly last, this time. I think one <laughs> last one last that all, I <laughs> all that uh, conflict or, or 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 all that unpleasantness I think has been gone in this particular stream. Inshallah, I think. Inshallah. Yeah, Hari, Hari, go on. You you have to say something. Yeah, I want to, uh, but I didn't get one answer. That why we have forgotten that promise. Like I said, this is when you say it. forgotten. You know, it is, it is the fitra is still there. It is clouded. So every one of us, we have because if you did remember, then where would be the test? Yeah. You see what I mean? The whole idea is that this is a test. If we remembered exactly seeing Allah, or sorry, uh, taking the oath in front of Allah. Yes, then do you think anyone would commit any sins? They wouldn't. And then there wouldn't be any purpose of test. This dunya is a test, remember. But but the thing is the test paper is already out. It's up to you to work on it. Right. Yes. And, and Allah maybe, is going to ask you these three questions in, in, in your and in, fact, in your uh, grave. This is the, yeah? in fact, Manrabuka, this is the unique Madinuka, test. And yeah. Allah will ask you about the Prophet. In three fact, questions is... in the cover, you pass those three questions and you pass the test. But yeah. you will never be able to answer simple questions like that if you haven't worked for them in this dunya. Yeah. And not in believed fact, in uh, that wholeheartedly. Yeah. 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 And in fact, this is one of the unique tests where the question paper and the answer sheet have already been given to you. You just <laughs> need to accept the answer sheet as your own. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, right. But like I said, you. Now you think you might know the answer, but in yeah. the cover, when the when the angels come to you, uh, you will not be able to answer if you didn't work on them. You, you worked on the dunya, the dunya will come in front of you. You worked on the God consciousness, then it'll be easy. These questions will be quite easy for you. So yeah, I mean, it's everything. You know, the five pillars of Islam, they're pretty straightforward. Yes, to believe in Allah and the Rasul, to pray five times a day. Five times a day, can you believe it? Each prayer of ours, probably five to ten minutes. Yes, yeah. Sister Swati has just done her Fajr. Yes, yeah. it doesn't take that long. But this, you minutes. know, throughout the day, you keep the connection with your Lord. Right. That, yes, does it, you, you are allowed to do your daily life. You know, uh, work hard for your family, look after them, love them, look after your neighbors, be nice to people, all these things. Yes. What Actually, uh, to be honest, yeah. I feel that Islam is like the way of life, I would say. It's indeed a way of life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Sharia <laughs> itself, many people uh, use the Sharia negatively. When 3% of the Sharia is talking about the hudud, about the punishments, about the legal things, 96, sorry, 97% of the Sharia is telling you how to deal with your brothers and sisters, how to deal with your family, with your... And husband. even... Even All with the three yeah. percent who do, the, even with the three percent who do, that's in your hands to save yourself from all those punishments. Yeah. So even why the commit a crime been, which will? Yeah. Why commit a crime which would invite punishment? For you? Yes. Look yeah. at them. I mean, alcohol has been forbidden for you. Uh, adultery is forbidden. Fornication has been for, forbidden. Drug, any intoxicants, you know, murder, stealing, all these things, uh, lying. I mean, tell me which sane person would say that this shouldn't be forbidden. So the things which Allah has made haram for you are not a lot. Yes, you are still able to enjoy your daily life. In fact, you're allowed to have a lot of money, but without being a capitalist, where you make that your sole purpose. That is haram. Yes, overindulgence is haram. But, you know, Allah has told us to give zakat from our, main, from our money to make it pure. Yes, imagine every individual given 2.5% of their savings, poverty will be wiped out from the dunya. Yes. So whatever, however you look at it from any angle, Islam makes perfect sense. So brothers and sisters, if you're listening and you're not Muslims, uh, think about it, you know. In fact, every objection uh, you have, you probably be the, emotional. Yeah. yeah, go on brother. Excellent. Even the meat that is cut uh, during Bakri then all, even a significant percentage of that is given to people who are poor, who may not have access yeah, to yeah, food every yes. day. Yeah, it doesn't reach Allah, you know. Neither mm. the blood nor the flesh uh, reaches Allah. That's what the Quran says. It is yeah. your 
it, it, it is your God consciousness and your piety that reaches him. And that is exactly what you'll be judged on. Yes. And even the animal for that matter, you know, most of the time Hindus would have this issue that why cow, why, why this, you know, something which is so sacred to us. In fact, that's what is being taught to be detached from that and not start worshipping that which is not the creator. So in that sense, it's told to be detached from that. You know, people sometimes take it to be that this is done intentionally to hurt the sentiments of the Hindus. That's not the case. And and also I was thinking that maybe uh, our friend Hariom that said that, that the way you had said, no, that you had that initial conception of God as somebody who's 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 the Brahman and you said that you wouldn't believe in the avatars, etc. Maybe that's because of the fitra which is there within you which somewhere still reminds you that yeah that's that one creator who's there who doesn't have you know these idols which are there so maybe one can always think about it study research more about it and maybe if they In feel fact, inclined like, uh, they yeah, can come looking at uh, swami dayanand saraswati's uh, earlier stages of his life it was during mahashivratri that he realized that an idol cannot be god when he like yeah. waited whole night in front of the idol of shiva hoping that mm. the idol will pick up the food and eat it and all. And obviously the idol didn't do that. And then Swami Dayanand ended up concluding that, yeah, an idol cannot be God. So it was his fitra kicking in as a result of an experience that he had face to face. Yeah, which is there in all of us. Whether we, sometimes we acknowledge and we listen to it. And many times we sort of ignore it because of so many reasons which may be there. Emotional, one of the primary ones. Yeah. Exactly. Right, yeah, I also feel the same. Can I say something about Arya Samaj? Yeah, King like, Rowan, but I need are, to close very quickly, so please make it okay. quick, guys. Because, yeah. because the Arya Samaj are opposing to Brahman Samaj, and anyone that goes against the Brahman Samaj, they are the most sinful people. And how could someone follow a sinner sect that doesn't make any sense? Like right. the Arya Samaj yeah. or the, the Gnostic or the, the baddest sex of all because they are opposed to Brahman Samaj. They are opposed to a lot of things which are very in itself very a um, lot yeah. of issues which are there. Yeah, it's not a clear cut. It's not a clear cut philosophy as it is. Yeah. yeah, the most important tool that we all have is our intellect. Okay, so mm. let's use it and not abuse it. Um, yes. At the end of the day, if you are sincere, you'll find the 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 right path, the true path, and the straight path, uh, which will lead you to the Almighty, to the Supreme God, which we all desire to reach and attain that salvation, isn't it? So, inshallah, you know, we'll make dua, and I hope the brothers and sisters listening will make dua for the hidayah of everyone. And inshallah, work hard. Look, like I said, if you're lying, if you're being insincere, you're fooling yourself, nobody else. If you see a haq, if you see the truth, then walk towards it, isn't it? What's stopping you? Inshallah. Inshallah. Right, guys, we need Inshallah. to close now. Uh, Inshallah, we'll uh, continue next uh, time. Um, uh, so and, you, and you can join uh, at least, uh, you can join maybe in the next stream also. And who knows, maybe you would feel inclined to accept Islam. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm closer to Islam, just like a bit more time. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, but uh, brother, like I said, like, uh, uh, we have got our email in the bottom right corner, that, and you'll uh, yeah. yeah keep in touch. M my advice personally would be that don't delay too much. If like ninety percent of your issues are like sorted out, then you should consider yeah, converting. Yeah, yeah. Don't delay too much, brother. Yeah. All right. Take care, guys. Yes. Uh, Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks a lot. Waalaikum assalam. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah. Thank you, sir. Nashadul nairi. Nanta stafir ko hitu bilay. Right. So just going to remove you guys. So until next time. Salam alaikum. Waalaikum assalam. Waalaikum assalam. Waalaikum assalam. Didn't all these guys were still in the background. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm